The following program is a collection of students talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are a young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey! Why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pig! Damn it! <laughs> Your friend tell a friend something nice could change their life. We want that! We want that! Sport! 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 Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to our humble abode, the Thunderdome. On this Trenches Wednesday, October 25th, 2023, this sports program starts now! Football has not happened on the last couple evenings, but tonight I will tell you what the Jacksonville State University Gamecocks will be playing must watch television for the first time. They're seven and a half point favorites tonight. We will bet on them. What's going on around the sports world, though? Uh, I don't know. How about electricity everywhere? Yeah, last night there was MLB massive game. Congrats, the Arizona Diamondbacks. Yeah, yeah. that's right, beating our Phil. Beating our Philadelphia Phillies. Your. And I've been saying this whole time, don't let Arizona get hot. They might go into Philadelphia and win back-to-back what? nights to steal a series yeah. from the Philadelphia series uh, from Philadelphia Phillies and get themselves into the World Series starting on Friday. Not only was it a big-time MLB night last night, it was a massive NBA evening. Yeah. The NBA tipped off. There's some storylines coming out of there with fans being awesome mm-hmm. in Denver. Cannot wait to break that whole thing down. And then, obviously, the NHL debuted its frozen frenzy. Oh. With Bucci Gross and Kevin Weeksy on ESPN2 and ESPN+. Plus, It was like a historic evening for the NHL where every single team played. That is not normal. Normally, it's split up amongst the week. They had how many different goal scores? Like 93? 93, yep. 93 yeah. unique goal scores, which is the second most in the history of a one-day uh, for the NHL. 102 goals, 6.4 goals per game. I mean, it was electrifying. Congrats to ESPN, Bucci Gross, and Weeksy launching something that's beautiful. Let it go, boy. I think the hockey purists hated it uh, because you weren't able to keep up with one particular game. But I think a lot of the casual fans were introduced to a lot of teams and a lot of players very quickly. I enjoyed it. So applaud the hell out of them being innovative and trying to spread the game. Speaking of that, not only do we have Hockey is Awesome segment happening here in a little bit, we also have Austin Matthews of Toronto Maple Leafs, fresh off of a goal and an assist last night in a massive win over the Capitals. He'll be joining us at 1245. Now, maybe. We'll see. That has moved. Hopefully. They're, they just had a big game last night. They got meetings today. The NHL life is not an easy one. They're on the road. They're napping. They're not napping. They're sleeping. They're playing. They're grinding. They're right. hurting. They're back. They're right. on the ice. So we believe Austin Matthews will be around 1245. We're very excited to chat with him. We'll also have J.J. Watt today. What? Bobby Carpenter today. What? Amanda Serrano today. What? And the Toxic Table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. You're wearing a really cool shirt. Is that because Argo Land has been found? Well, Argo Land, I mean, that is groundbreaking. I'm, I'm glad you brought it up. The continent we've all been looking for for the last 155 million years. But no, I, this is not. This actually was just kind of like uh, haven't worn this one yet. Not an animal. It's the moon under the moon. It's kind of cool. No other thought around it. Well, there's not a lot of thought around a lot of things around here. Well, this Argo Land thing, though, really uh, game changing, man. Tish. Scientists have found the lost continent Argo Land. We've been looking for 155 million years for this thing. Yeah! Thank Found God. it! We did it! Found it! I'm happy the modern technology was able to figure out this thing that existed before Pangea, allegedly. You know, <laughs> None of us have ever heard of this, obviously, but the more we learn, the less we understand. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Argo Land doing its thing, though. Oh, Argo Land. Man, I bet it was tough times back then, Argo Land. They, oh. they didn't even have internet. You know? Yeah, that was a tough time. They didn't have electricity. I don't even think they had beds. I don't even know if somebody put leaves on a rock to make seats more comfortable at that time. Doubt it. So I'm excited to see how Argo Land really comes together and what type of structures they had. Yeah. Because, you know, there's these people with these new uh, lasers and stuff. They're just mm-hmm. walking around. They're like, this is where an entire civilization lived. If you were to dig down here, there'd be towns that have been covered up. It's like, how long are they living? 
well, 100, 200 million years. It's like, mm-hmm. okay, how do we know that? We're just uh, shot in the dark. Well, if you count the amount of rings in the tree that is carbon down there. Carbon dating. And then a carbon, oh. it's like, I don't believe anything. But I'm pumped that we found Argo Land. Just like Legoland, it's where dreams come true. Speaking of dreams coming true, one half of the hammer, Damn. Cowboys Tone Diggs is here. You've been fascinated by Argo Land since you heard about it. Yeah, I have questions. Um, how long has it been missing? 155 million years. I haven't heard about it. I would have been on a search party if you would have got me a little bit he, younger, but okay. now I'm not down at the point. We're not the best mathematists around. People have been around for like two million years, something like that. So who was looking <laughs> for it for the other 148 million years? Well, That's see, it is what you said right. You don't know. Yeah, because they they actually change bones. when the universe. Yeah, I was do created. know. Bones tell us how. Yeah, long. but every new dinosaur that gets dug up in some new place, we've <laughs> I'm learned. I'm not a lot. talking about dino bones. Well, if you talk about dinos, you're talking about cave people. Yeah. Because I don't want to be sexist. Because people have been sexist for a long time. They always say cave men. Yep. Oh, yep. well, how is that possible? I, Can't be. They don't nope. have to have. You I know saw what an I mean? article yesterday that actually it, they found that cave women also were hunters as well, not yeah. just gatherers. Yeah, absolutely. Of course. Yeah. What are we talking about? Some Back the in the best. cave people yep. days. Yep. Yeah, they used to do what they had to do to exactly. survive. Thank you. Old school, it's a blue-collar group. Yes. Those yeah. cave people. Rust Belt. I don't... I Anyways, don't like uh, sounds like you're out on the Argo yep. land. I'm not. Scientists said it. Bro Bible reported it. Obviously, it's real. <laughs> uh, man who played in the NFL for 12 years. Super Bowl champion, uh, player and coach. Looks really cool with the Henley today. Ladies yeah, and gentlemen, truly. AQ Shiflet. AQ. Big fashion guy. Yeah, you do. You look really good. Who's doing the shopping for you? Is this you? No. This is the oh, wife. Oh, you have it. Well, a little wife. Little Mistress? wife's friend. Oh. You got a, you have a stylist? Yep. Wow. Jeez. Whoa. Is that whoa, right? Whoa, this oh, guy's yeah. got a stylist. Oh, wow. yeah. yeah. Professional shopper. Wow. Yeah. Oh, professional shopper, yeah. Yeah, I heard you earlier, uh, a guy who has a professional shopper and is down 70 pounds from back when you used to be <laughs> a cave person and it? move other people and everything <laughs> That's like exactly that. That's exactly right. Um, you said something about the Arizona Diamondbacks. You live five minutes from that stadium. I've never heard him say the word Diamondback no, in that's my a lie. life. Nope. That's a lie. I've been talking about it for six months. Oh, shut up. Talking about oh, what? The Diamondbacks. You told us about Listen. Rattlesnake when Ow. we came Three out. Three months ago, they traded for SeaWorld. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the guy, right? Yeah, yeah. SeaWorld, yeah. Came in, he killed it last night. He was unbelievable. Yeah, he's a beast. He's, yeah. guy, he's really flipped the entire town over there. Unbelievable. It's become a baseball a community over what there. What a team. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Can't wait to go. Cheapest World Series ticket ever. 27 bucks was the ticket price that was available at one point. Now, <laughs> now they're in the World Series. We're not in the same timeline. Those prices have gone yeah. up, especially over there in Phoenix. Oh, yeah. yeah. Are you going to a game? Yeah, I'm going to go. I'm the biggest fan in Phoenix. I've been saying this for six months. What are we talking about? All right, way to go, Diamondbacks. Yeah, I'm I'm happy for your Diamondbacks. Yeah, me too. Now, your dad, massive Pirates fan, right? He's going to be mad about you saying what you're just saying right now? Oh. He's... Remember the scar I had last week on the head? That's what he's doing right now. He's banging his head against the wall. Yeah, his dad actually one of the only Pittsburgh Pirates fans in Pittsburgh. Whole life? Like, whole life. Forever. Oh. For how many games are in a season? 162. 162. So, Shit. you hang out with AQ just randomly during those 162 games, whenever they are, and he'll just get a text from his dad. It'll be like 2.30 in the afternoon and be like, uh, fly the flag or something. Or, uh, what's he say? No, I, I get the videos. Raise the Jolly Roger. There it is. Raise the Jolly Roger. <laughs> and he'll be like, oh, I guess they started at 11 today? How's that game already over? It's like, yeah, yeah I'm an afternoon game. I guess we yeah. uh, Pirates just won every single time. So, now he's heard that his seed has become a Diamondback fan. Not and ever. we have never heard that out of you. But no. we are incredibly pumped for them because – there was people that have followed the MLB for a long time that said, this team's got no shot. Yeah. Chris Mad Dog Russo, oh. he said, I'll retire. He I'll did. quit. Yeah. I will stop doing what I'm doing Whoa. if the Diamondbacks are able to go into Philadelphia and win back-to-back games, game six and game seven, to kind of clear this thing out. They did. Uh-huh. And Chris Mad Dog Russo was on Howard Stern this morning and said, I'm a liar. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> well, I, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I was being dramatic. But nobody was giving them hope against this Phillies team. And it makes sense after what I saw. I don't know much about baseball, but why was this Diamondbacks team, Diamondbacks team being talked about as if they had no shot against the Phillies? You team? just look at like the Phillies lineup and their pitching. It's just like the Diamondbacks just aren't as good. The Diamondbacks went, I think, 84 and like 78 in the regular seasons. So they're barely 500. Like the Phillies played in one of the toughest divisions in baseball and they've been really hot right now but I mean I said a couple weeks ago you know like the Phillies were the team of destiny I should have known like the Diamondbacks were kind of staring at us the entire time that was the team of destiny their payroll is like just a little over a hundred million dollars so comp can you give us some comparisons yeah so like uh, I don't know what the Phillies is but like the Mets this year like their payroll to start the season was like I think 355 million dollars like so like Hmm. they they basically have homegrown talent. They have young guys who are producing, and it's just very rarely does a team like that beat a team like the Phillies who can go and, and spend these massive amounts of money in free agency to get guys because, 
I mean, although Arizona's awesome, like they just have, have never been they haven't been good like that since like the early two thousands where like big free agent names would want to go sign with And them. who's SeaWorld? Yeah, he's the closer. Well, we could trade it from Seattle. Takate's closer. His name's SeaWorld? It's not yeah. SeaWorld. It's close. Close. It's what, close. What, what is it? He's SeaWorld to me. You, because you see the world big with this fan. guy. That's mm-hmm. exactly right. Yeah, because this guy's making you see the world. Him and Van Ginkle. Van Ginkle's the other, uh, the setup guy, right? Yeah. yeah. Ginkle was a dog. I Ginkle. saw him coming yeah. and do his he thing. Was. Miami last night. Dolphins. Yeah. Ginkle plays yeah. baseball yeah. too. Yeah. No, just Ginky. This is <laughs> yeah. just Ginky, oh, okay. not Van Ginky. I was gonna say this dude came in though in an interesting situation. There was a couple interesting situations that people were put into last oh, night. Oh yeah. There was a guy who had a two pitch inning or whatever. He got mm-hmm. something. Phillies had bases loaded. This guy comes in. It's like, okay, congratulations. Your whole season right now relies upon you being warm enough to come out of the dugout or whatever. And if they hit a bomb on you right now, yeah, you're done. You're done. Season's over. <laughs> you're done. Your entire season, your off season is going to be miserable. That's all you're going to be thinking about. This guy got out. I think he made somebody fly out or something like that. But it was a lot of. It was good baseball. It was. Mm-hmm. It was tough to pay attention to because the boys were getting killed. My team that we we're pulling for the Phillies. Mm-hmm. Also, we will not have Bryce Harper on today. Damn it! Because they lost. There was a chance he was yeah. going to come on. Yeah. I hope you're happy with SeaWorld. Uh, joining Damn. us, nine-year NFL vet, absolute stallion of a man, a stud, Darius J. Butler. Hey, but last night, a lot of sports. We had the NBA tip off, a lot of yep. games. We had the NHL Frozen Frenzy. I know everybody was checking that out, had to. Uh, there was a lot that popped off last night in the, uh, in the NHL. Damn. Cannot wait. To, they actually promoted that Austin Matthews is coming on show today. Yeah. Okay. And then there was a time where he was not coming on show today. No. Correct. So that was a very fascinating little beginning to a relationship. We're very excited that he is making his time on here. And then, obviously, the baseball took place. What did you do last night? What you watch? And what caught your eye, D-Bud? Watched some basketball, oh, caught yeah. some of the Lakers-Nuggets game, and then uh, the Suns-Warriors. And then also had to, obviously, catch well, Panthers get a dub last night, Obviously. 3-1. Yeah, I saw the Florida Panthers doing their thing. Yep. And you're, you're a big fan of the hockey. Huge fan. Always have been. Always. Love the Florida Panthers. Love them. You know, there's a couple good things happened with the Florida Panthers last night. I think they will be broadcasted on Hockey is Awesome just a little bit later with Kachuk being an absolute right. dog. Yep. His Swaggy. brother. Swaggy got yeah, a dog. Board. Bob yeah. was a dog in the net, obviously, but Swaggy got one. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a great team you have down there. Just can never win in the end. No, no. no. Yeah, isn't that kind of the – it feels like change. that's the Florida Panthers yeah. issue. Yeah. Miami in, general. in the end. What's that? Kind of get embarrassed in the end. We remember the, you know, game clinching. Yeah, you got – yeah. Yeah. we yeah. wagon. Gave up about seven goals. And nice word wagon. got laughed out of the – Toughest barn but, in the NHL. Hey, we did. We accomplished something. Yeah, we, put that, we put that in the rack. Yeah, you yeah. ruined the greatest regular season in the history of hockey, which is what the Boston Bruins were able to accomplish last year. That's why that pasta jersey's hanging because that guy right over there at the talk stand with yeah. the mullet was very loud all hockey mm-hmm. season because that Boston Bruins team did have the greatest mm-hmm. regular season. Now, there is a debate yep. because shootouts and overtimes, yep. teams mm-hmm. were forced to take ties instead of getting wins not too long ago. So, with the Detroit Red Wings, I believe was the team yep. end up with more wins than the Boston Bruins in a regular season if they want to shoot out definitely a maybe, chance yes maybe definitely For a sure. chance okay so we'll say the Red Wings era of hockey is one era and then the Bruins era is a different one okay and I think yours is like 13 years or something uh, no, like 2004, that 2004 2005 uh, whatever it is, 2008 I think maybe two, uh, 15 uh, years whatever it is I mean that was a long 2006, time 2006 after the lockout 2000, all right so in the middle we meet in the middle there classic <laughs> yeah. that is one of the most <laughs> classic yeah. our show yeah. thing yeah. There uh-huh. of well all done. time we well found done. the yeah. answer there Boom. well the answer is normally right there in the middle uh-huh. yep. you know if you listen long enough That's you will find it in there, but the Boston Bruins were supposed to be the greatest team, yeah. the team of destiny, the greatest regular season, and then the Florida Panthers said, get the hell out of here. Yeah. See you later. Yeah. That ain't it. And then we hung this uh, hung this jersey to commemorate the greatest regular season of all time up there in New England. Hell yeah. You guys were so good during the regular season. Yeah, we were. It was a hell of a year, and now we're 6-0 and now, one of the two undefeated teams with the Vegas Golden Knights, and you know, for D-Butt to come up here and say that his entire hockey fandom life he can just go back and say, at least we beat the Boston Bruins. That means a lot to me. Because that means, you know, teams still value and they get up for those games. But let's not just stop at hockey. I mean, the Miami Heat lost in the finals. Oh. Obviously, the Florida Panthers. Mm-hmm. Enter Miami with Methy. They uh, not can't even make, make it. the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. so Miami has kind of Miami taken Miami Hurricanes in the Final Four. Yeah, they lost as Not well. as tough as Philly, what Philly's run is, but close. That was in women's yeah. basketball too, right? Didn't well, the women's? Uh, I think the women's Hurricanes. Yeah, yeah they, they went far. Did Elite eight, oh. Elite eight, I think, maybe. Yeah, and they, they beat Indiana, right? FAU, What's happened? FAU, Miami can't close? FAU, What's... FAU lost in the Final Four. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Getting there, close. This year's you take the next close. step. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's talk about the NBA because it tipped off last night, and we happen to be a little bit a part mm. of one of the biggest yeah. stories of opening night. 
So if you got a chance to watch the Denver Nuggets fans last night, they put on a show. They did. They mm -hmm. put on a damn show. And I think this is something that we need more of in sports. We need fans buying into the storylines, understanding that they are a weapon, understanding that home court, home field advantage is a very real thing. Not just with sound affecting communication on the court or on the field, but with mental warfare. Letting people know how they should feel when they come into your house. And if you do recall, the Denver Nuggets and the Los Angeles Lakers got a little chirpy last year, didn't they? Ooh, a little bit. Oh, yeah. On our particular program, Michael Malone, the head coach of the Denver Nuggets, who oh, came yeah. on before the parade, but after the championship was won, had had this to say about how, you know, the Lakers potentially handled losing to the Nuggets. Speaking of the Lakers, I just want you guys to know this is breaking news. I'm thinking about retiring, so don't tell anybody. <laughs> yeah. You love your yeah. house, Coach. You love yes. it. Yes. Coach, let's take the conversation away from the championship. Let's talk about the coach retiring. Yes. If you do recall, after LeBron and the Lakers lost yeah. to the Nuggets, LeBron floated that he might think about retiring. Mm -hmm. So that there wasn't a conversation about the Nuggets beating yep. the Lakers. It was more so about, is LeBron James going to retire? And then you go to the Denver Nuggets parade. If you remember, the parade was something that Joker had no idea was going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Joker was informed of the parade after winning the championship, and he said, oh, no, who oh, tell – Go Somebody home. tell horse, I don't want to do parade. Okay. And then he gets to parade, and he do parade yep. good. Mm -hmm. Denver Nuggets do parade really good. <laughs> so good that Vic Lombardi, who I believe is one of the radio show hosts over there in Denver, and I assume the voice of the Denver Nuggets, in his bio on his Twitter, it says, started as a sweat mopper for the Denver Nuggets. So I assume he used to be an intern, equipment manager, long day, tied into the city. At the end of the parade, after the boys had had their fun, and Michael Malone certainly had digested a couple oh, things yeah. that made him feel a certain way. Sure. He was introduced by this man named Vic Lombardi this way. He came into this world as the son of a coach, but in these playoffs, he became the Lakers' daddy. Okay, so Vic Lombardi thought bars right there, yeah. and he yeah. can't spell Lombardi without bar, yeah, which works. is right there yeah. in the middle. And that guy with the hat on and sunglasses in the chain, that is the head coach of the Denver Nuggets. <laughs> that is the guy who was having a good old time behind all Vic Lombardi. So then you have to wonder yourself, Wow, they're chirping a lot. They're taking a little victory lap here. How's it being received on the other side? Well, shortly after that, LeBron James, who was over in France, I believe, waving a green flag at a race and everything, he put on his Instagram, he goes, in Europe for the past few weeks, mind my business. And I hear, I'm on your mind that much, huh? I mean, I guess I see why, shrug. But wave the flag on these lames. Oh. Please make being player cool again, because the lame machine is at an all-time high. Enjoy your life, but just know, um. The sun, <laughs> I stay on forever. Bar there as well. Yeah. Yeah. So then also, let's listen to what Anthony Davis had to say at the media day to start this particular season on why maybe they heard what the Nuggets were saying and how they're feeling about it. It was just a lot of, like, the talking and all the Lakers. That, like, it was just so much of that going on. Like, all right, we get it, y'all won. But, you know, I think, you know, me and Brian had some conversations like, we can't wait. You know, like, uh, and then LeBron said, like, yeah, in due time, we will address those wait. things. And we were looking forward to this opening night. Yeah. And let me tell you how this opening night ended. How's that? Vic Lombardi's bar yeah. was getting quoted from everybody at 5,200 feet above sea yeah. level. Listen to this last night as the time ticked away with another Nuggets win over the Lakers. Vincent on top. Also in the contest is Maxwell Lewis. Oh. Young players. The, the fan faithful, who's your daddy? This. To the Nuggets fans, we say bravo. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Bravo. Hell yeah. That is how fans are supposed to act yeah. in sports. Yeah. That is how arenas are supposed to be. All the way behind your boys. Definitely trying to, you know, baffle the other side mm -hmm. a little bit in understanding you can have an effect and also enjoy the hell out of what your team did for the first time in the franchise's history, which is win a championship. I loved watching that last night. And I love this little storyline that's brewing between yeah. these two. Love it. A little rivalry. You know, obviously, Braun been around a long time, 21 years. AD coming in talking about, oh, can't wait. And then for him to disappear, not mm. score a point in the second half, extremely disappointing. But Joker picking up right where he left off. Jamal Murray doing his thing. Uh, the team, they just look like they're primed to make another run. Uh, you know, now the Suns look good too, but the Nuggets look well in position to make another run. Yeah, Denver teams. Booker or Devin Booker had a hilarious yep. quote about, what do you have to say uh, to the naysayers after what you guys just did? I don't talk to them. 
So, yeah. oh, guys, like that's a great answer. Yeah, I've never heard that answer. I appreciate that answer. But when you're talking about the Nuggets, you're talking about the Lakers. You're talking about one of the greatest of all time. AQ, I know you believe this. LeBron James, greatest basketball player of all time. He's at 40, <laughs> 40 years old. He's going to have his team right back in this thing at the end. And I think we're going to see this Nuggets Lakers rivalry continue throughout the entire season. LeBron said um, after the game that a classic team quote. Right. It was, oh yeah. Uh, Big week. Well, I did. I did what I did in my 29 minutes. So I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of what we just saw last night. So what are you saying about LeBron James? I don't think uh, AQ. AQ. LeBron's no. We yeah, do you don't like LeBron. I'm a, what's I'm your a, deal? I'm, I think you're either a Jordan guy or a LeBron guy, right? Isn't that the way it works? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, two different sports. No. No, two different sports. Two different, two different sports. Two different sports. They were playing two, two different, different sports. Hey, Jordan dominated both. I agree with you though. They're. I don't know about that, but like yeah. what Zito said, right, but like, yeah, Diggs also a known hater, but like the <laughs> the entirety of it all for me is Jordan was playing a different sport than LeBron's playing. Completely different sport. I learned that whenever I watched The Last Dance and I saw some right. big six foot seven white dribbling like this and I saw somebody pick his pocket and they're like, wow, what a defensive play. It's like, <laughs> I could steal a ball from that guy in this era. Not Jordan's fault that that's where basketball was. Not their fault at all. It's just he's evolved. And I think Jordan would do great in this era. And I think LeBron would have done great in that era. Yeah. So I just think it's not a conversation of like if or if. It's more so like let's just appreciate greatness when it's there. He's put up 29. Come on. He reminded you he put up 29 last yeah, night. Yeah, he, he let us know. Yeah, he absolutely did. Yes, he did. You don't agree with the two different sports. Well, I think Bill Lambeer, um, you know, I don't think you're seeing Bill Lambeer come across the lane and clothesline in LeBron these days. You don't think six foot eight, two 270-pound LeBron James? All I see is him flopping. I think he'll be all right. You don't think he'd uh, – you see him flopping because that's the game flopping. now. You don't think he would have been able to go through high school in that era, go through college in that era, and then come into the NBA bigger than Lambeer and say, hey, who's your daddy? You don't <laughs> think that's happening? I don't. We can have a civilized conversation here. I don't. That's why I text you every time I see something. Yeah, anytime <laughs> he gets a meme that showcases that Jordan's better than Braun, it shows up in my phone. Mm, just to me. Awesome. He just sent me one, too. Oh, yeah, it was the same one. Oh, yeah, he just said now. <laughs> okay. He, you're probably, there's probably like 40 of us in our lives that are like, hey, you're allowed to respect both these guys. Jordan would have been great now. LeBron would have been great then. I think we can all yep. understand that with a brain. But the Lakers-Nuggets rivalry is a beautiful thing. Now, with that being said, Basketball doesn't start till the day after Christmas. That's right. Mm -hmm. Bingo. It, they used sure. to have Christmas. Mm -hmm. And then the NFL said, that's our holiday now. Uh -huh. yeah. So sorry about it. Yep. You guys are going to have to be the day after. But I think for the NBA, last night was a great start for them, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Pretty good start. And uh, we got uh, Victor uh, Wimbiyama mm -hmm. makes his debut tonight as well against uh, Luka, Kyrie, and the Mavericks. So that should be a good one as well. You need to know the guy's name. Good. I think I said it right. Yeah, 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 right. yeah. yeah but we, we know Wimby. Wimby. Yeah. Wimby. I just call him Wimby. Yeah. I just call him what? Uh, He's the next guy, right? Victor yeah. is the next yeah. one. And then the NHL. Nick, great night for the Frozen Frenzy, right? I mean, this is... This is a beautiful thing to have in the middle of a, you know, a football week, and obviously we got a great game tomorrow night. Huge, great game tomorrow Ooh. night to kick off the NFL Week Eight slate. It is going to be a big one. I think we're learning about some teams being uh, a little bit injuries. I think we're hearing about Dawson Knox. I believe is not playing tomorrow night for the Buffalo Bills, which is a big deal. Tampa Bay Buccaneers could have lost to the Falcons by like three scores, but yep. they kept that one real close. End up losing on a, a game-winning field goal from Young Way Koo. So they're obviously excited for a quick turnaround. Eight and a half point spreads a lot. God, okay. That's a lot of points, especially with how Buffalo has played. We like Buffalo, but they have played worse football at a higher rate than they have over the last three years to start a season. Are we losing our faith? Is Josh Allen losing his faith? Whoa. I saw a little narrative that maybe Josh Allen is starting to second-guess himself on oh. some things, which is making it all even worse. We don't know if that's real or not, but we do know you go out on a Thursday and dominate the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. All of a sudden, the conversation on Friday is, so the Buffalo Bills had a couple slow weeks, mm -hmm. had a couple bad weeks. Let's talk about one of them. Buffalo Bills lose to the New England Patriots. If the Buffalo Bills lose to the Bucks, okay, which possible at home, especially with that Bucks defense and what might the weapons that the Buccaneers have. The Buccaneers are a professional football team, mm -hmm. a professional outfit who can beat anybody. We have to remember that. Mm -hmm. If they beat the Bills, though, it's going to get real loud about this Buffalo Bills team and how we've gotten to this point. You've already kind of started it because the question was posed: Was the Niners' loss? 
a worse loss or the Bills loss a worse loss, which is what I was kind of asked on first take. And I thought it was the Niners loss because home field advantage is still on the line. I think we all agree that the Niners are going to be around at the end and still have a chance to win a Super Bowl. I feel like we've naturally just kind of stopped thinking that the Bills are going to win a Super Bowl for whatever reason. It just feels like that's where the conversation is. Started this season that way. We've always been Bills fans, but it feels like they're not going to be around in the for whatever reason at this exact moment. You said you thought that the Bills loss to the Patriots was a much bigger deal. Why is that and do you think the Bills are going to be a team that's going to be able to make a run in the end they got to go they got to go starting now and I think the reason that I think it was the biggest loss of the weekend was they went against a New England team who we all know is not very good right they look vastly different they they do and now they're playing a team with a great interior defensive line Todd Bowles is going to cover the middle three down he's going to run his bear and cub defense like he runs all the time and I think one thing we're not talking enough about. That's cute. About. Baron Cub, the mm-hmm. father. Oh, yeah. Father, father son. son. Pretty good, right? Yeah, or daughter, whatever. The, yeah. the one thing we're not talking about enough is Roger Saffold, who was a veteran. He was on in the trenches a lot mm-hmm. last year. He was a dog at left guard. Not in the league anymore. Out. Rookie in at left guard. The interior of their offensive line got manhandled oh, yeah. by New England's defensive line. Okay, so that's maybe a part of the problem. That's why we're seeing Josh Allen struggle so much. Maybe he's not as comfortable, as confident in the pocket as he has been in the past. I think so. Yeah, I mean, you're seeing that, and he's obviously second-guessing some decisions, and they just don't look the same for whatever reason. It might be running back. It might be some guys on the offensive line. But it's just it's not looking the same. What are you shaking your head for? Def- I mean, definitely not running back. This is the first time in so long that the Bills have, like, an actual dude that they can hand the ball off to. Now, do they always do it? Usually not. But yeah, James, James Cook. James Cook. Yeah. Right. What has That's been right. going on? You, you said something about pass protection last week. So, yeah, same, same as AQ saying. And that interior, and we talk about all the time with quarterbacks, getting them off that spot. If you can get them off that spot and make them second guess. It's too many times on film where you see Josh, like, he has to be, like, special to make something happen. Um, it's not a lot of things happen and really in flow. It was some plays where he'll do a play action roll out and it's like not even receivers really breaking into the area. So like things are just disjointed right now. Uh, he did play better late in that game. He made some throws, made some better decisions. But I feel like especially where Josh Allen is in his career, it's not enough like answers that he has like when he gets the ball in his hand, know where he goes. It's like, hey, it's almost backyard football. You can't, you can't make a living off that. You want to make a couple plays like Lamar Jackson against the Lions last week. Most of his plays were from the pocket in rhythm. But there were a couple that wanted Gus Edwards to scramble around the Nelson Aguilar. Like, those were like the two plays where he just had to be special, and you can. But outside of that, you want things in rhythm and flow. And um, He also not, had like, what, four in... or five seconds in the pocket a few different times. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was. They, they, they're probably huh? only in the trenches this week, but that, oh, yeah. that offensive line kicked, kicked ass. He was very yeah. – Lamar was very comfortable in the yeah. pocket. And it's like Aaron said yesterday, like, hey, I've been a fan of Lamar since college. I've been a fan for this whole thing. He kind of alluded to, like, the guy's been able to do this. It's like, does he get the opportunity to do it? It. And the opportunity is not only the play caller, and it feels like him and Munkin are certainly getting on the same page mm-hmm. as the season rolls on, but also the offensive line giving you a chance to like get through. People talk about pocket uh, quarterbacks being able to go through their progressions. and It's like, if you can't, then are you a pocket passer or are you just on the run scared for your life? Yeah. Yeah. It's a fascinating little dilemma that Lamar Jackson has kind of been battling over the last few years where he's such a weapon with his feet. If there isn't a pocket that's perfect, why wouldn't he utilize that to his advantage? Yeah. But now, through the negotiation process, he says, I want to get paid as a pocket passer. I want to play as a pocket passer. And they're reaping the benefits of it yeah. against one of the greatest defenses and football teams <laughs> in the entire NFL in the Detroit Lions and many others. And Steve Young said it, uh, it might have been years Year, maybe two years ago, he was like, Lamar needs, it's not that he can't pass, he just needs more of a sophisticated passing game in the system. And you, the last few years with Greg Roman, and Greg Roman has done some great things in this league, been to Super Bowl, but it was times like a third and eight, and he'll have, you know, two running backs and two tight ends, and if it one receiver, like, that's an 11 personnel, 10 personnel, three, four receivers typically on the field in the NFL. So it wasn't an offense that he could really grow and evolve in, and now we're seeing it. And you got you got to have talent, too. You got to be surrounded by good people that can create separation and make yeah. catches. Zay, they Aguilar, have, yeah. OBJ, Big Mark guy. Andrews is still doing yeah. his thing. Mm-hmm. Gussie's doing his – they're without J.K. Dobbins, who we assume is healing his Achilles faster Isaiah than the human. likely will be back at some yep. point. 80, that, mm-hmm. great, Stug. likely, yep. 80, yep. great jersey, mm-hmm. one of the best. Yep. of all time. <laughs> Let's pivot away from the boys that are uh, Lamar playing great and Josh kind of, hey Josh, come on. You got it, Josh. Hey, Josh, Josh come on. Come on. You, you put in the work. You did the laser thing. 
Trust yourself, bro. Yeah. Just go out there and play. I think that's what a lot of people are saying about Josh Allen. That might be the difference. All you got to do is have one big win, though. That's it. And everything changes. Boom. Speaking of one big win, the refs need a weekend where they're positive. Oh, man. You know, where they do good. Where they stay out of the way. Where they're able to call things how they're supposed to be called. And not just by a rule book and trying to ruin a game, but just do your job. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is the name of those documentaries coming out of New England? I believe do your job. What was the motto of the greatest team in the history of the NFL? Do your job. What do we need everybody to do? Their job. Bingo. And that's all we're asking for the refs. And nobody wants to be a ref. No. I've said this numerous times on this program, uh, in public, on the internet. We very much understand that the job of an official, especially in football, in the NFL, is not a desirable one. It takes a special personality to want to have that type of control, that type of power, and that potential hate coming to you if you do not do your job correctly. So we appreciate anybody that signs up to be a ref. But this isn't a participation league. No, it's Just not. because you sign up to do it doesn't mean we have to be nice to you. you got to do your job. We think the NFL needs to pay these refs more. We think we need to make them full-time jobs so they yep. don't have other jobs. We think it needs to be an all-year thing where they're going to seminars and classes and trust falls with each other. I think there should be a practice squad that you can pull from where if a guy stinks, we can elevate yep. him. I think that is an easily done thing if the NFL wanted to with the NFL Refs Association, their union. I think that is needed in in the sports gambling world because there's so many questionable calls and people are losing a lot of money. It's only going to get louder. It's scripted. It's scripted. That started because people started losing their money and they thought the sports books in the NFLs were working against them to screw them. The way the NFL would be working is with the refs. So every time this ref makes a bad call, it's not only affecting the game, the players, the coaches, the fans, what? it's also affecting people that are in different states, people that aren't fans of the team, and they're losing money because of it. It's only going to get louder louder if these mistakes continue to happen that seem obvious. Now, technology is also there to help. Although some olds hate the idea of utilizing technology, I don't think it's technology's fault that it takes so long to make a correction. I think it's the user of the technology that makes it take so long for the correction. I think we need another crew of people doing that. A younger crew, knows the rules, know how to work remote controls, mm -hmm. utilize a PlayStation or an Xbox yeah. control, have them zoom in, replay, go ahead and see if there was a mistake made. So before that flag is even picked up, there's somebody in their ear going, pick that flag up, that is not real and then boom we just move right along kenny pickett is clearly short guy up in the booth lady up in the booth with the thing short hey he's short that is not good let's turn this around has to take four seconds not even let's keep it moving let's use technology let's get the best officials and let's not have this fodder about the nfl trying to people yes. okay it's not good for our league it's not good for the shield we have an ally mm-hmm we are not just speaking into microphones. Okay. We are not just gamblers and fans that are pissed. Ladies and gentlemen, we have somebody in the one per club meeting uh -huh. who is fed up with it. Yeah. We have somebody who is willing to take a stand and not just stand on his own two feet. He'll stand on the table uh -huh. to make a change to make sure that his mm -hmm. team is not bamboozled ever again and anybody else's team isn't bamboozled again. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing our hero for saving the official situation. Jim Irsay tweeted last night, urgent NFL Colts news. He's breaking his own news. <laughs> Hell yeah. Urgent. Football emoji. Okay, Rappaport, he said, football emoji. Number five, QB Anthony Richardson's surgery today in L.A. was a success. It was a long procedure, and his shoulder injury has been repaired. No new surprises were found during the surgery. They just repaired what was expected. Anthony is doing well, and thanks, everyone, for the support. Parenthesis, there is presently no date for his return. Parenthesis. Okay. Okay, let's go breaking news. Good now, know. I would say, Jim, if we're going to get into the breaking news world, probably should have been two different tweets yep. because this bottom one also rather massive news. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure everybody got to the bottom football emoji mm -hmm. because they were so pumped for Anthony Richardson's surgery. Now, AR, we hope you're okay. He's out at Elitrosh, by the way. Okay. Good. Elitrosh really? won Donny Achilles yep. on Aaron and on JK. They have something in the water over there. People are healing quick. AR might be back by end of the season. Oh. Hey. there is presently no date for his return. So we'll just make one up. This guy's back four or five weeks. Yeah. Okay. Hey, we don't know. We have no idea. Nice. Week 12. Yeah, probably next season. Anyway, Anyways, the next one is what we need to talk about down here. Football emoji. The NFL admits and understands that they did not make the correct calls at the end of Sunday's Colts-Browns game. I believe we need to institute instant replay for all calls, including penalties, in the last two minutes of all games. Hell yeah, Jim Irsay. Let's go, pal. Thank you, Jim.
See, listen, final two minutes is when it matters, they say. Mm -hmm. So if we get this pass, which Jim is in the one per club meeting, Jim also oldest, longest tenured owner yep. in the NFL. The reason, the way he found that out is at the, one of the last owner's meetings, they have a list of pictures from the owner's meetings where they all kind of gather. And Jim was walking down the hallway, and he saw himself in the recent one, and he kept walking down, all the way down. And then all of a sudden, he was the only one that was in the building that was in a photo. And he said, shit, I'm the... I'm the most powerful guy. Yeah. I'm the most powerful guy here. I'm the guy. Okay, where are the microphones? Dan Snyder needs to get the hell out of here. Yeah. <laughs> That's literally what happened. Yeah. In that yeah. owner's meeting is when he started being like, wait a minute, I've mm -hmm. been here. Palace, is it? Jerry, you in this? No. Nope. Okay, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Robert Kraft, you in this? No. Okay. Pipe down. Shut up. It's my room. It, you guys are coming to my office. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've been here the longest. So whenever there's a little question mark on who needs to talk and needs to say, don't worry, boys, I will be the one saying it. And he just kind of take on that role. Yeah. He told us that on the show pretty much. Like, hey, this is our league. Mm -hmm. We need to take this back. It's not the agent's league. It's not the GM's league. This is not Roger Goodell's league. This is the owner's league. And he's like, I've been the longest owner here. So him talking about this, I think, has real traction. I know people think the way they think about Jim Mersey outside of Indianapolis. In Indianapolis, he is beloved. He's also getting a little bit more active on social media. He landed a helicopter the other day, hopped on his uh, aquatic quad, oh, and then he rode that thing into a lake and he said <laughs> see you later on his way out he what? is certainly an electrifying human being absolutely he sells out stadiums with playing music mm -hmm. with uh, john mellencamp mm -hmm. and the boys he's a rock star he has a museum literally just for fun that he travels around he is certainly a one-of-one -one human being but he is also somebody who's not scared to speak up and make changes in the nfl him being on board with the review of the final two minutes is great news and just like they're taking away the kickoff it's like what happens next like if they take away the kick off what's next once they institute this in the final two minutes it's like wasn't well, the final five minutes yeah it's good. Exactly. also important and then it's kind of like this is the slow roll yeah. the nfl has to take to make the change so i think we have an ally i think we have a good ally and i think we're not that far away from common sense officiating i do love that jim love he just speaks his mind you know as that owner i mean driving a four-wheeler in, yeah. into into the abyss is just i mean he, he's he's doing the billionaire thing right the right this way guy. but uh yeah but uh <laughs> Which goes in the I mean, water. Yeah. I'm going to head to that lake and drive in it dog. with this before dinner. And then we'll have fresh <laughs> dinner prepared of fried tofu, snap peas, Whoa. and special pudding. Jeez. That's all vegan, so we're very healthy. Mm -hmm. We're strong. We're athletic here. I bid you... So long, and then he just rolls into a lake. Yeah. Is that a stunt double at the end? The man. No! <laughs> you think Jim Irsen hey, is a stunt double? Was there was a weird cut. Like Jim like that. His hair is awesome, too. Let's not even. Yeah. He, yeah. Jim looks good. He's yeah, jacked what, up. What color is that? Well, just a couple months ago. This it's is not on news. the spectrum. Just a couple months ago, he couldn't, um, <laughs> he couldn't, like, he's very active right there. Mm -hmm. there. He wasn't as mobile. I think he had a surgery on something a couple months ago. I saw him. He was not moving as much. I think he had a couple, uh, like a walk, walk couple mm -hmm. walkers with him. So seeing him do this Bet. is a big deal. Congrats to Jim being healthy. Yeah, Jim. Jim. Getting rehabbed yeah. back up, eating vegan. He's out yeah, there hey, doing his thing. Uh, his uh, hair's coming back. Snap peas, good pudding. Uh, Fried tofu. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know what that tastes Special. like. Special pudding. Yeah, all right. Only thing I disagree with is the, the replaying every call. Uh, I, don't, I don't agree with that. The two minutes for sure, you know, important call. And even with the one with the Kenny Pickett, he was short for sure. But every call, I think that would, that would definitely be uh, excessive. We just need the humans that are doing the checking of the calls to be quick. The XFL had it figured out. Yes, yep. perfect. The XFL, like, there's a lot of things that were fugues in state fair. <laughs> sure. they, they were trying out a lot of stuff. They're doing their thing. Shout out to The Rock. I think they merged with... Uh, USFL. USFL, which had no shot at all. No. The USFL no, no, no. had no chance after the XFL did Correct. its thing, and then it's like, we're on after them. Nobody's watching. So I think The Rock does them a favor, but also they're going to help each other because there's not as many quarterbacks. But the XFL had somebody up in a booth with the Xbox controller, and it was like in real time, speaking what they saw, the reasoning for the call being made, and it was happening quickly. It's like we can get those people in every state, and we have to be able to do that in 2023, especially with the money that's available. Why not do that to save your product and make your product the best i think that's what jim's probably going to get into yeah to your point though like th this will just continue to be changed like kenny pickett that that wasn't in the two, last two minutes 
of that Rams game. It was right before the two-minute mm-hmm. warning. So, like, when that when those guidelines kind of get set, it would be interesting. But you got to set the guidelines. Like, something has to be talked about. And we're saying the Kenny thing. Like, the P.I. against the Browns that the Colts did lose on, like, that just can't happen in the game. And let alone, like, gambling and everything. Just for both the teams. Like, if the Colts are four and three right now they're looking at the playoffs and same with the Browns you know if they're three and three that's a much different story especially in the AFC North so things like that just can't happen especially when there's 30 seconds even if that ball was thrown perfectly there would be a conversation about how both sides yeah yeah kind of hand jousting Uh let alone the fact that this ends up in the stands it ends up in the stands, just gives them a. T- I mean, it is. The other one was more good. In the yeah, the yeah. illegal contact whenever a strip sack happens. That was game over. Sure. Third and four. Here we go. Third and four. Forty-five seconds. Oh my oh, God, the Colts win. Game over. Yep. DeForest Buckner, be an athlete. You got it. I am. He's huge. He's athletic. The Colts just got a big time mm. dub over the Cleveland Browns, and they scored thirty-eight points. Oh wait a minute, illegal contact. Let's make it first down. Then you do the pass interference. It's like, hey, I understand the NFL admits that they were wrong on this and everything like that. But are, the guy that made that call, he's just going to go out there next week and he just does it mm-hmm. and we don't have to hear from him? Or are we checking his his family, you know? Yeah. Because it felt like he was like, uh, they're going to score here. <laughs> uh, legal co- Strip sack? No, legal contact. Uh, incomplete? No, <laughs> pass interference. Uh, no, yeah, another one. Like, I think that guy would have called 14 of them straight sure. if he had to. That's that's the feeling I get. And it's hard for me not to think that when there's a chance that guy is a middle school teacher, yeah. you know, on his side or some other job on the side. It's like, you don't think somebody could potentially just sit down next to him and be like, hey, you know, Brown's three. It's not really that much. Kind of a weird, kind of a weird number, right? Not that. We can make that happen, right? Yeah, easy. Yeah, man. Yeah, we'll try our best. Yeah, certainly towards the end. How about money line at least? Yeah. yeah, you got it. No problem. Browns are supposed to Pull win. Put my mortgage it. on it. It won't be that big of a deal. And that probably didn't happen, okay? Most of these humans, I assume, very good people. And we can't assume the worst. But it's hard not to take your mind there whenever you see two blatant and obvious things happen and you're potentially losing money on a gamble. Well, and like you said, too, like when there's nothing in place where like if a guy has a game like this, you can't bring up someone from like a practice squad. So like, yeah, that's great that you're saying after the game, like, oh, we made the the wrong call you know that that was that we're sorry that happened but there's no repercussions for it it doesn't matter like this isn't the end of the season where if something like this happens like oh the guy isn't going to get a playoff game like it's week seven this guy is going to be back out there doing the exact same or having the opportunity to do the exact same thing for the next 10 weeks so like even just be like fans are tired of the hearing immediately after the game when your team got screwed over like how ah, we, we made the wrong call you know and hopefully like that that doesn't mean shit anymore because there there is no repercussion for and it. they have like an ap yeah the reporters pool or whatever they have like yeah. that where i guess they answer questions sometimes but we never see it no it's never ever. on camera no. and there's never anybody that gets to ask like how 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 did you get to the nfl and how is that what you call with those last two things officials though don't suck in every sport No. Okay, I understand that there's a lot of anger against some officials, and VAR in soccer, I guess, has really made it even worse somehow. And you talk about any other sport that has – in hockey, the refs are a part of the action. They are. The refs are a part of the game. And that leads me to my favorite segment that we've started this particular season. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Hockey is – Awesome! Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Hey, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Hockey. Now listen, last night the Frozen Frenzy took over ESPN Plus and ESPN2. All 32 NHL teams played. 93 different goal scorers happened. 102 goals took place. Bucci Gross and Kevin Weeksy, former goalie in the NHL, were breaking it all down and throwing from city to city, mm-hmm. watching the magic take play. We got a power play. We got a shootout. Fight. We got a fight. fight. We got a penalty. We got Frozen Frenzy it was glorious. I believe the NHL's numbers are only yodeling, yodeling, yodeling and that's because a lot of people are recognizing something that we've had the opportunity to learn about since we were kids, being from a hockey town that hockey is awesome. We were just talking shit about the refs in the NFL. Mm -hmm. Well, all we've ever said a lot is, we want the refs in the NFL to be like the refs in the NHL. Look at this clip from last night's Pittsburgh Penguins game against the Dallas Stars. Listen closely, shall we? 
Oh, on the four check, Nieto. Couldn't come up with it. Hockenpah does. I owe you a beer. Passing I owe you a beer. Hey, hey, sorry about that. I got in the way there. We're on ice, we're on skates. I didn't know where you were going. I was trying to sneak by. Ended up giving you one. I owe you a beer, pal. That's first period. Yeah. Yeah. That's first period. He's like, hey, hold on to this. Uh -huh. I owe you a beer. They're a part of the game. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You've actually heard refs mic'd up before where they're like, hey, had to give you one. Had because to get one here. Had to because of the last period. Sorry about it. It's just like, we screwed them. We got to screw you. It's just the way it goes. And everybody's like, Oh, okay. Yeah, that's how it goes. Part of the game. I do wonder if he took him up on that beer or maybe a vodka, Bye. maybe a whiskey. Bye. I've heard the hockey boys can certainly booze a little bit. Let's yeah. start talking about not just the refs are awesome over there. How about the equipment managers? Oh. How about the equipment managers in hockey can actually be a part of the game? You know, whenever you use it, it lies in a stick, there's a chance that that thing could break. Well, whenever you're on the ice and you're flying around, you got a broken stick, you ain't worth a damn. Mm -mm. How do you get a stick fast enough? Boom! You get an equipment manager that is like Superman grabbing that stick, holding Hold it over. And then what? This is Pete Rogers, equipment manager for the Nashville Predators, handing off to Luke Evangelista. And what's he have? Breakaway. Oh. Go time. Silky Mitts. And the boys all celebrate Pete Rogers. So the refs are awesome. They're a part of the game. The equipment managers are getting actual assists in affecting the game. Hockey's all about the culture, yeah. all about the brotherhood. How about whenever you're playing this sport and there's a puck that's really hard? Oh, yeah. Mm. Heavy rubber. Hurt. Oh, yeah. And you're getting paid millions of dollars to play. And you've been kind of doing this for a long time. You're expected to actually move your body in front of these things. Anything to stop a goal. Well, what happens if you lose a blade on your skate? What if you can actually not skate anymore? Like what happened to old cuz right here. David Savard. Boom. Gets hit right in the hand. Oh. Right oh. here. Look at him. No stick. Let me get your stick. I'm back. <laughs> Stay it. Boom! Wow. Loses oh. his blade! Loses the blade! Uh oh. What? Gets hit twice. Oh. Can't skate! <laughs> Bang! Gets hit in the leg! Oh, man. This dude ends up breaking his hand. He's out for six to eight weeks. This guy. <laughs> Lost the. Where's the blade? Damn. Can't stand up. Can't stand! <laughs> yeah. Can't skate! Can't skate! Look at this. Can't. Help me out. Get me out of yeah. my hand. Get me over Broken my hand. hand. Bruised calf. All in one play. I'm stopping a goal no matter what. That's hockey. Guy, hey, let me, let's, hey, let's slide this guy's dead carcass <laughs> off. Yeah. Let's just get him off the butt. That is hockey. Everybody in the sport has that mindset. You hear about divas and prima donnas and people that do this. Hockey says, uh-uh, that ain't this sport. You're going to lose teeth. You're going to have your hand broken. Right. And guess what? You're expected to lay out in front of pucks yet again. Let's go to a superstar, a man whose name is synonymous with hockey and has been for a long time. And I know it's the third period. It's early in the season. But in hockey, if you get got, you got to get yours more than you get got, though. Mm -hmm. Look what happened to Kachuk last night. This dude's skating, flying, tripped. Oh, yeah? Let's fight. <laughs> Gloves down. Heavy bombs. Boom. Bang. Boom. Pow. Oh, right in boom. front of his bench. Oh, Go Chuck, yeah. All the boys. Nobody's chiming in. It's oh. one-on-one. Oh, hey, geez. take them down. Stick taps for the boys. <laughs> Stick taps for so the boys. So awesome. Well, how'd this happen, you say? How'd this fight happen? Well, he was skating. Oh, you tripping? Oh, oh okay. Right. Yup. Let's go. We're fighting. Come on. We need more of that in the world. Yep. Okay, instead of him trying to, you know, do some sly stuff or maybe say something bad behind his back or Bum. maybe carry this hatred for this guy for the next two months and try to ruin his. Instead, he said, you trip me. I don't like it. Let's fight right now. They handle each other. And Kachuk, he might have got tripped on that ice. But he handled a little touch. Yeah. Look at yeah. Touch's face. Hey, beats Boom. That ice. Oh, boy. Boom. Damn Talk right. is his name. Talk. It looks like he's touched. <laughs> Got beat by old Kachuk. Talk there with the eye. He'll get it fixed up. Hey, Tuck, I appreciate you standing in there, too. Yeah. I appreciate you standing in there as well. And last but not least, we cannot talk about hockey without talking about sick dangles. Okay, every time you watch a game, you're going to see something death-defying. They are literally on ice flying around. We watch the Olympics, and they do like a 60-second twirl thing. Mm -hmm. These hockey players are doing that at full speed with a chance of getting hit right in the mouth. 25, 30 miles an hour, yep. death-defying speeds. What are you going to do? Oh, I don't know. I'm going to take a puck behind my back through my legs, and then I'm going to score and go, run it! Carter, Las Vegas Golden Knight. Yeah. Stanley Cup champion. Watch this. E. Back. 
Whoop. Oh, whoop. see ya. Oh. Silky Paul Ooh. Carter, Stanley Cup champion right there. Absolute dog. And it's things like that that make you wonder, how are you not a fan of hockey? Mm -hmm. You know, you got a ref being super awesome. You got an equipment manager having an assist. You got a guy giving up his body, ending up being out for six to eight weeks just so he can stop a goal in a period in which there's three of them and there's going to be plenty of shots laying his life on the line. You got a guy fighting just immediately and saying, well, yep, got to fight you. And then you see goals like that. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're not on board, you need to get on board. Find a team. Probably the Pittsburgh Penguins. They're the greatest franchise of all time. Yeah. Bruins, Texas Bruins. hockey. Ladies and gentlemen, that is why hockey is awesome. Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. Love you, hockey. Joining us now, speaking of hockey being awesome, is a American superstar that plays in Toronto, which is the largest hockey city in whatever. You get it. Pressure yeah. through the roof. Right. American kid was a superstar chosen to go up and lead them. He was born in California, raised in Scottsdale, became a Coyotes fan. Then he went to Europe to play hockey. Then he got drafted to Toronto. Last year, led the NHL in goals. An absolute stallion of a man. Ladies and gentlemen, Austin Matthews. Yeah. What's up, dude? What's up, guys? Thanks for having me. Bro, thank you for joining us. I know your life is insane. Goal and an assist last night. Couple hatties to start the season. You led the NHL in goals last year. What is it? You just have a nasty shot? You have a knack for goal? You just score goals all the time, pal? Is that what your life is? <laughs> uh, I try to. I try to. Um, I'm lucky. I play with some good players, so they, they tend to get me to puck, and yeah, I just try to put it in the net. Austin, you were drafted in 2016, so here we are, seven years later. Uh, it feels like with the NHL going to ESPN with the frozen frenzy last night and everything that's happening around hockey, can you guys feel that there's a surge of popularity coming to the sport within the league? Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, you know, year after year, it's, it's grown. It's, um, you know, been showcased, I think, a little bit more. I think having ESPN uh, broadcasting the games now and, and nights like last night where you got every single team playing and lots of action. Um, you know, I think it's great for the game, great to showcase uh, some of the great players that we have. And, uh, yeah. You're a great American player. We appreciate you, bro. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. We appreciate America, you, bro. baby. Hey, we really do. We do appreciate the hell out of that because, obviously, uh, the NHL is very diverse. And yeah. diverse, it's like countries. And mm -hmm. we just got countries represented mm -hmm. in that sport that aren't represented in other sports. I guess the NBA is starting to have uh, some similar background and past. But hockey is, you know, Americans, whenever they have a, when we have a superstar, we got to applaud the shit out of them. And that is you. Uh, you went to Europe before you went to the NHL to kind of get a taste of what professional hockey is like. How vital was that for you? And how do you think we continue to create American superstars in hockey, Austin? I mean, I think they're they're coming. I mean, we've got lots of great great young guys. I mean, look at Jack Hughes, uh, who's come up, and um, you know, I went over to Switzerland to play uh, in my draft year, so I was lucky um, to go over there and play against some pros, some ex NHL players, and just kind of gain some experience. and uh, And I loved it over there. If I had to do it all over again, I, I absolutely would. But um, I mean, I think USA hockey's just come a long way, and you know, there's a lot of a lot of young talent, a lot of guys uh, coming through the ranks that are a lot of fun to watch, that are extremely talented, that are uh, just kind of taking the league by storm. When you got drafted to Toronto, did you know the pressures that would come alongside the hockey town that is that city? Uh, I mean, I had an idea. I think a lot of people just kind of. Uh, you know, kind of let me know uh, how it was going to be, but, you know, it's hard to really realize until you experience it, but, um, you know, it definitely comes with a lot, but I, I've loved my time in Toronto. I love the fans. Uh, the city's great. Uh, I've been fortunate to play and, and have great teammates along the way, so uh, it's been a really special ride, and, um, you know, I've, I've enjoyed every minute of it. Yeah, we need you in Pittsburgh. Connor has a question for you, Austin. <laughs> yeah, Austin, obviously you are a massive superstar. I mean, you're one of the faces of the NHL, but, I mean, we were talking about it before the show. Sometimes if, you know, you're out in public with your boy Justin Bieber, they basically make you feel like a schlub. They, they're not even showing you on the broadcast. His driver is it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's ridiculous, but <laughs> does that not get under your skin, or does it more so kind of, like, make you wonder, like, why aren't I – being kind of held in that upper echelon. I mean, even Sidney Crosby, there's videos of him walking through New York and no one knows who the hell he is. Uh, does that ever kind of get to you, or do you guys think about that or talk about that in the locker room? Uh, I mean, no, not really. I think, uh, you know, if you're out with a guy like him and 
and his caliber and uh, you know I guess like his status like there's not too many people that are that are going to be on that kind of level right uh, so, NHL uh, MVP yeah uh, yeah <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. yeah Austin yeah I'm thinking you are I don't I- Mind. I don't mind. I mean, it's it's fine. I think, uh, you know, hockey's getting there. It's getting bigger. I think there's being, uh, you know, a lot more recognition now, and uh, and that's fine. I mean, all I want to do is just play hockey. So at the end of the day, if this, that extra stuff comes with it, it's fine. And if it doesn't, it's all good. I kind of asked Connor Bedard this, but it was before he even played his first game in the NHL. But it feels like hockey players' personality super guarded. Are you guys told immediately upon getting into the NHL, hey, don't showcase who you are to anybody at any moment. Do you feel like that's an actual like messaging? And why aren't there more players chit chatting? Because I feel like every time we talk to one of you guys, it's like, oh, the lads are pretty cool, like awesome. pretty cool guys. But yeah. we never really get to hear that. Why is that? You think versus what other sports do with their superstars? I don't know. I mean, I think it's. Uh, I mean, it could be a lot of different things. I mean, I think hockey guys are just you know pretty simple guys, uh, pretty down to earth. Um, yeah, so so I don't know, but you know, like I said, the sport's growing. I think with you know us being on ESPN now and just kind of getting more recognition and um, you know more people watching, it'll it'll help grow uh, grow that. But you know, at the same time, I don't mind it being uh, you know a little low key when you're walking around and stuff. No, no, we're gonna try to heighten that. Yeah, have this to. guy superstar. <laughs> Look, this guy signed a couple hundred million dollars. Yeah, this guy, big time guy. Ty has a question for you, Austin. Yeah, Austin, I read. I I, I think your dad played college baseball, and he also said that growing up. Like baseball was your best sport with your hand eye coordination. He said you were an unbelievable hitter. And with being from like Scottsdale and Arizona, where it's kind of you can play baseball year round, was there ever a thought that you might pursue that? Or at like what age did you know, like, oh no, I'm I'm the shit. I'm gonna be very good at hockey and I'm gonna continue to pursue this. Uh, I mean, I played baseball up until like probably 12, 12 years old, like right after Little League. Um and I don't know, I think he hyped it up a lot because, like, he played baseball and, like, it was cool for us to have that experience where, you know, he was kind of teaching me and uh, the ropes and just everything that I needed to know. And um, and I really enjoyed it. I mean, pretty much just hitting. I wasn't very good at everything else. But uh, I think they knew it was just a matter of time before, um, you know, I was going to kind of just hang up uh, hang up the bat and the cleats and, and be full-time in hockey because I was always – that was always what, what I wanted to do, always what I wanted to watch and play. And um, I really enjoyed baseball, but I think they knew hockey was always my number one passion. And it was just kind of a matter of time. So when I was about 12, uh, I gave it up and just focused on hockey. Yeah, it sounds like your dad's lying. I mean, hey, we don't know if you're going to baseball when you're 12. So I don't know your dad. sounds like he's lying a little bit, but I appreciate him. Uh, uncle played in the NFL. You come from a very athletic family. How's your golf game? Most of you hockey guys are super good at golf. You good at golf? Yeah, it's not bad. Um, above average, I'd say. But I'm a big I'm a big tennis guy now, so I play a lot of tennis in the summer. But um, but I love both. I love both. Pickleball? Play a little pickleball? No, no pickleball. Oh, you're a tennis snob. That's what I just heard. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hate pickleball. Got it. I got it. I understand. I appreciate it. Yeah, exactly. Hey, exactly. when you get older and retired, you'll be able to play. It's a great <laughs> yeah, sport. Yeah, yeah. Last question here for you from D Butt. Definitely coming into the league, I've been the top pick. Do you remember what was that welcome to the league moment uh for you? I know for us we, we never forget those, but what was that for you? Um I, it's tough. Like uh I mean my first game I uh I scored four goals. So <laughs> Jeez. That was a, that was a pretty good, like, welcome to the league moment. <laughs> to everybody for else. Yeah, for the league. For the league. Yeah, for the league, yeah. Welcome to yeah. Austin Matthews there. <laughs> so that was pretty special. Um, that was my first game, so it was awesome. I had my parents there, and my mom was, like, crying in the stands. And um, just, like, a super emotional game for, I guess, everybody. But um, I'd have to put that on. It was a pretty good night. And your dad's saying, he's a kid should be should, playing baseball. Yeah, <laughs> hey, he got three. Should be four. Yeah, exactly. Four. Hey, good Jeez. luck the rest of the way. We know you're very busy. Congrats on the win last night, and we appreciate your time, buddy. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks for having me. Ladies and gentlemen, Toronto Maple Leaf superstar, American Austin Matthews. Yeah. Yeah. All right, hour one's wrapping up here. I love that. He's the man. Dog. They don't have a lot of time, man. Their lives are insane. Over. Just like the NBA schedule. Yep. I mean, yeah. that's kind of how it goes. Exactly. We'll be wrapping up this hour, but on the next one, we got J.J. Watt, what? AJ Hawk, Woo. and more conversations around the NFL and the sports world. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. Take three. three. three.
massive fans of yours, and obviously we haven't got a chance to chat with you since that mustache has become a thing. How has that not been your look forever? It looks right at home there. You look good. It's a missed opportunity, but I'm trying to make up for it now. Do you feel like a better coach with that mustache or anything changed? In yeah, life? I feel like, you know, better at everything. When you walk in places, I mean, it's just like the doors get open for you. They're going to come right to you at the bar. You get the first table. Something about it. I don't know. People look view you different when you walk in there and you're rocking a stash. You love to worry it's going to make you soft? No. If anything, I think it gets your T levels up. <laughs> <laughs> I think my sea level's grown up just looking at it, so I couldn't even imagine yep. Marine Dad. Ooh, Shout out to him, you know, mm-hmm. serving the country and doing what he did with FedEx. Amen. And then the Vegas yeah. thing. That's real? He went to Vegas? Real. What happened? Yeah, real. They didn't think they were going to be able to, uh, to make the payment, and so he went out there and I think he played blackjack for 18 straight hours. <laughs> went over $30,000. His whole thing was like, hey, look, nothing to lose, really. That was kind of the mentality. That's the way he told it to me. True story, though. And then saves FedEx. Yep. And then obviously now, a Goliath. <laughs> what a fucking dog, dude. Shout out to all the coaches committing their entire fucking lives so that we can get good football on yeah. Sundays, Monday, what? Thursday, what? Saturday, what? in America, what? Mexico, what? Canada, what? England, what? Germany. What? How do you feel about all of this? Best thing anybody wants to watch live now. Look, if you don't want to do that, then don't sign the contract. Where the money's going and the game, it's growing. When things change, you, know, you may give your opinion, but once the rules are made and that's what it is, if you don't like it, then don't do it. I just think you waste your time. Like, we're going over London again this year. We did it two years ago. It was awesome. I'm just trying to figure out. I'm still wondering what your record has to be to get knighted. <laughs> it's what if you play in London, I think the, the winning coach should be yeah. knighted, you know. So oh, I've got yeah. that, that. That joke felt real flat. <laughs> <laughs> Arthur is a knight's name, too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. King Arthur. King's you have to call me name. Sir, sir, sir Arthur. Me. Sorry, not King. It's so obnoxious. Somebody puts you at a, at a, at a dinner, it's, it has to say sir in front of it. Like, <laughs> sir, Pat Mack. Yeah. No, obnoxious. Yes, but I'm not going to win a game over there. You might be no, Sir not. Coach Arthur Smith. Yes. You know what I mean? That might be your name soon. Well, I'm going to try. I don't, I don't know. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. If I'm serious, will take me when I ask it again. How do you feel being one of those last few teams that really do just physically beat the other opponent into a pulp and just kind of really take advantage in those third and fourth quarters after you've already worn down the team? Bijan and CP are they're great all-around football players, and we've got a lot of a lot of young skill guys with unique skill sets with Kyle and Drake and Janu, you know, Matt Collins. I mean, we've got a diverse group of offensive weapons. We can attack in a lot of different ways. It's not just traditional rushing attack. Dez is another guy that can extend plays with his legs. I think this, when you watch us, we've got a lot of guys that are going to be fun to watch, and the way we'll deploy them is going to be unique compared to everybody else. I never wanted to be boring. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, we need to win games, but we've also got a lot of, a lot of fun guys to watch play. Yeah, and the offensive line, well, those guys play with a certain mentality. Appreciate you talking about all the weapons you have. Pretty big fucking. The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey, why? Let's go! This show sticks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for. Ah! The all time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pink! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice, could change their life. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Walk Wednesday, October 25th, 2023. Hour two of this program starts now. Football! It's the topic of conversation for this particular hour because it's not just me, it's also the toxic table at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. One half of the hammer, Dad. Cowboys Tone Diggs with old two chains on over there. 12 year NFL vet, Super Bowl champion, player, and coach, Jackie Moon of the Buccaneers. Also played for the Cardinals, the Ravens, what? the Colts, what? the Eagles, what? and the Steelers. Ladies and gentlemen, AQ yeah. Shipley. Boy, you. Let's go. I got him all right, right? Yeah, I think you nailed it. In the order, too, I think. I think and so. nine year NFL vet, a man who played every position in the secondary. He's the host of the Man to Man podcast and everything DB. Ladies and gentlemen, Darius J. Hey, Butler. Hey, 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 hey. Joining us now live from an attic in Ohio is a man who's college football national champion and Super Bowl champion. The resumes are thick around here. Oh, yeah. yeah. Seriously. Aren't they? I mean, I, I rattle them off every single day. But as I'm in the middle of them, sometimes I just have to stop and appreciate the people we get to talk to. Uh-huh. Greatness. Wow. wow. It is awesome to have greatness around. Truly. And whenever you talk about greatness, 
You're talking about this guy in this attic. Yep, Always. That's right. Was a champion in college and in the NFL. Yep. Yeah. All-time leading tackler for one of the original football teams, Green yeah. Bay Packers. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have been tackling people for a long time in that particular program. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's the all-time leading tackler with his massive head yep. that is currently holding the crown of the president of Ohio. Ladies and gentlemen, father of 10, COVID survivor. Whoa. Yeah. That's all we talk time. about on this show, A.J. Hawk. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. How you doing, A.J.? Yep. Doing great. How are you guys doing? Hey, fantastic. You heard about Argo Land. It's back. Da -na 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 -na. How about it? Good Woo. news. Yep. Change, it's going to change my life. No question. I know that. Yeah, me too. I, they've been looking for this son of a bitch for 150 million years yeah. plus, and they found it. And we're just going to act like this isn't a big deal, AJ. What a pig. <laughs> this is a big deal. 150 million. Somebody's been spending a lot of time lot of looking for this son of a bitch. And they found it right there near Australia and the boys. You know what I mean? Pretty cool. So what's there? What's there right now? What's a, what's a it's picture? It's Argo like? Land. Yeah, what do you mean? Me, idiot. Yeah. Argo Can Land. I see a picture and not a, you know, a, a graph or a so, drawing? So Argo Land is what you make of it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's up to you. This is like Avatar? No. Well, no. that is Pandora. Yeah. Uh, and they're trying to find Unobtainium. Planet. Yeah, that's a vastly different story that I've still... Yet to see the end of the second one. Sure, uh, sure. I do believe white people are bad, though, and uh, the whales die, yeah. from what I've been told. Australian yeah. white people. Let's move along. Yeah, okay, they, not just ours. To, just yeah, to clarify, they, they got a pretty. Hey, hell yeah, that's yep. the first time. Mm -hmm. Might even be New Zealand. Might even be, be New Zealand. <laughs> really? Maybe, maybe New actually, maybe from Argo Land. How do we know now? Probably. Oh, yeah. It's somewhere there. We, do we know if the Argo Land folks were the whites? I, if I know we anything don't. about the past, 150 yeah. million years, I don't know. I don't what. think that's how that works. Southeast Asia, so I'm guessing. Probably not. But if I know anything about it, whites probably showed up at some point. Yeah. Oh, this is ours now. This is ours now. Mm -hmm. And then change, which we, I wasn't there, but uh, that, that we agree. But 150 yeah. million years ago, all the continents were together, too. Well, Pangea. Yeah. But this was before Pangea. Let's move along. Shout out to Argo Land. If you guys want to take a trip, yeah. take the family. Welcome okay. home, Argo Land. Take the family to Argo Land. Beautiful. Last night, here. MLB, obviously, the Philadelphia Phillies lose to AQ Shipley's Arizona Diamondbacks. He's been talking about the SeaWorld character. <laughs> uh, there's also a Ginkle character that came in and was throwing the rock around. The Phillies were making contact. Goodwood just weren't able to get it out. Uh, the NBA had its tip off. Denver Nuggets fans were chanting, Who's your daddy? to the Lakers. That was electrifying. And then, obviously, the NHL frozen frenzy took place. What were your thoughts on last night? Quite a little Tuesday. As I was sitting at home, I'm like, this is an amazing Tuesday in sports, AJ. Yeah, it really was. You talk about the Phillies game. Like, that thing was, the energy was unbelievable. Like, thinking of a lot of this. A, a, a lot of that stuff. Like, it was fun watching that. But honestly, I think the frozen frenzy, like, took over. I feel like I've had a good time this morning actually watching clips of big time hockey fans watch the Frozen Frenzy and see how juice they are like voiceovering themselves filming the TV when old Bucci and Weeksy are on there just describing what's going on. Like that's been my favorite part. Some hockey purists I don't think love Frozen Frenzy. Hey, hey, Nick, ain't that right? Didn't I hear there's some hockey? You people? can't please everybody, Pat. There's always gonna be somebody crying about something. Yeah, but the yeah. hockey purists I do believe they're a tough crowd. To they are tough. They're like the college football crowd. A little oh. bit. Now the college football crowd, which I am very lucky to get a chance to speak in front of. Some of you I wish didn't exist, for sure, but you do, <laughs> and I'm very lucky to speak in front of you. It, they view their schools as like a religion. You know, it's like, hey, this is, our religion is this, and like, I am the one that is not as classy enough for their religion, how they see it going. Like, those are the people that, some of the people that don't like me. It's like, hockey people are, the old purist, hockey purist people, very, very protective of the game. Very. I, any change that is even potentially on the horizon is met with sharp criticism. I remember when the stadium series started, which has been a smashing success, I would assume, yeah. for the NHL and for hockey as a whole. They used to have, they, they introduced a sky cam, like a drone cam for hockey for the first time. And as I was watching, as a person that's watched hockey my whole life, I saw it. I'm like, that is the sickest thing of all time. I'm literally running with the puck with Sydney pretty much as we're going into it. was like, this is awesome. Go to the internet to say it's awesome. And then all of a sudden you got people, we don't need new gimmicks. Okay, <laughs> we don't need yeah. new gimmicks. It's an interesting transition period because I do believe hockey is about to get put up into the forefront a lot more in the future years. And I'm happy that we're kind of a part of it, Nick. Yeah, and especially getting to experience an experiment, something like that. That's the thing. It's like you got to grow the game. Everyone knows you got to grow the game. How do you do that? You don't keep doing the same things. You have to try new things and expose it to people. And that was one way to do it. Now, red zone, it's different. Football is a completely different sport. It lends itself to being able to watch multiple games at once with breaks and everything. Hockey, it's a little bit tougher because of the constant flow of the game and everything. But I think they'll figure it out. It was a good start, I think. Yeah, I think it was a good start. I watched 
I mean, I oh, was yeah. watching that entire thing. Weeks, he got up and went to another studio at one point. Yeah. He was uh, kind of moving. Bucci was handling that. Was, I think what they need to do, and I'm not the person in charge of anything, and much people are much smarter than I am, but there was a couple times where they would send over to something and someone would Hockey's, like, not a very – there's a lot of, ah, every – Yeah. Ah, every, like, 10 seconds I'll miss. Ah, my – ah. Close. Might be a goal. Might be a goal. Might be a goal. I think they should almost, like – like golf, you know, you're going to the 14th hole with some guy you never heard of. He's 150 yards out. I'm assuming he's putting this thing real close. Mm -hmm. You know, like whenever you're watching golf. And golf is just like banger, banger, banger. Almost need that for hockey, I think, for that frozen frenzy. But it's not as easy to handle, I feel like. AJ, did you spend your time with the frozen frenzy last night? I, I spent a, a good chunk of my time with it. I just thought of, like, the logistics of all the people behind the scenes trying to put all the clips together and in real time. Like, it seems... It seems overwhelming to feel like, hey, if I was a part of that broadcast. Yeah, you did great work, though, Frozen Frenzy yeah, team. You did. You did great work. Congrats. We watched it. Congrats. The NBA had a great tip-off. Uh, and World Series starts on Friday for you, AQ. I'm yep. sure you know that. Can't wait. Good luck. Hey, Matt, Monday back in Arizona. Who's the rookie? Who's the rookie that's killing it? Uh, Corbin Carroll. P-Fat. Man. No, that's Fad. P that's P-Fat. He's a pitcher yeah. and not a that's rookie. That's not how you say his name. Oh. Yeah, you don't know the team. <laughs> You hate the team. <laughs> talking about, talking to the lefty, the, the lefty that's hitting the ball. Like yeah, Madden. nicknames for Yeah, Corbin yeah. Carroll. Yeah, yeah, Corbin Carroll, obviously. That's who we know. Stud. We didn't pay attention to all the Diamondbacks. A guy who knows baseball <laughs> said he'd retire and quit what he's doing. He's been doing it for 40 years if they were to win. Yeah. I mean, how am I supposed to know to pay attention to this team? Exactly. I will say, they caught my attention all. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. What they were able to do, they went right into the bedlam in the bank. Install two, game six and game seven, and now they're in the World Series. Good for them. Kendrick, WVU guy. The owner. That's right. Oh, nice. WVU guy. There we go. WVU All right. guy. That's good. All right. That's what we were, we've been hoping for them the whole time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now, granted, no Bryce Harper <laughs> on the show. Nobody from the Diamondbacks has been on the show. Don't know if we'll be able to get anybody from either of these teams on the program. So we're not going to be dialed in at all in that particular fashion. But World Series baseball is must watch. Oh, it is. And we could maybe try to get minority owner George W. Bush for the, oh. the Texas Rangers, you know, if we're lucky, if the, if the stars, you know, kind of align. Yes. W? Let's go. Yeah. Are you kidding now me? Now watch me hit this drop. Here we go. Yeah. I do not know if I'm Who the right human to be directing Ty? a conversation with George W. Bush. Who do you think throw at 95 <laughs> He's down a patron the middle for opening pitch? I saw his dad flip that coin for the Super Bowl there at the end. I don't think they should have had him do that. I think that may be yeah, potentially you saw changing. Yeah. W Rest throw. in peace to him, obviously. Yeah, Thank you for your service to the United do, States of America. We can do both teams, too. After we get W, we can have AQs, you know, Pride and Joy, Arizona, that lady governor who's unbelievable at what she does. Can have her on, too, to represent the diamond. What are you there? laughing about, AQ? I don't think I know what you guys are what talking happened? about. I don't know what he's talking about, either. AJ, you know what he's talking about? <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. Joining us now is a man who lives in Arizona. He might know what the hell's going Come on. Good. I assume he's a massive Diamondbacks fan. Well. Just because he's good guy. He also hosts a softball game every single year. I think it's back now, actually. That has raised millions of dollars for charity. And every single time that game takes place, all you see is him busting out of a baseball jersey, hitting bombs down in Houston. Hell Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, joining us now, the third member of the Houston Texans Ring of Honor, a future first ballot Hall of Famer, an absolute dog of a human. Ladies and gentlemen, J.J. Wong. Yeah. Hey, thank you. AJ, I mean, AQ, got something for you. Yeah, it's wow. good time. Let's go. Baby, I need that. Randy. Oh, Randy. 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 I know, I know you're a new fan. I That's know right. You're a new fan, so That's I got right. you one. So, Thank you. Randy, by the way, you make auto parts for the American man or American people because that's what you are. Is that what you're wearing? Right? You can get a better look at a T-bone by sticking your head up a bull's ass, but wouldn't you rather take the butcher's <laughs> word for it? <laughs> well done. Nice. All right. Very thankful for you every single week bringing up incredible movies of our past so we can have great nostalgia. You know who Tommy Boy is? Of course. Come uh, on, man. Come on, Tommy Boy. Come on now. Did you watch Mighty Ducks? Peace. Rest in peace. Did I do what? Did you watch Mighty Ducks? No, I did not. I mean, are you kidding me? DJ B. Have you seen Tommy Boy? Homework assignment. What are you doing, DJ B? The kids look at this guy. Absolutely look at this guy. Not. Look at the, look the kids said, oh, no. They, they got too many options these days, man. We got all this. You had one job. I tried. Now he's got six jobs. That's the no. problem. I tried, JJ. I tried. You did not try. It sounds like you didn't even make an effort. <laughs> no, you literally didn't. You literally did, did not try. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, it's all right. You know what? We'll just Know this one, though. Okay, that's good. Doesn't yeah. matter. As that much. is great to hear. 
But the Mighty Ducks one, I think you need it in your life, actually. You know? Especially about halfway through the season right now. You've been working hard. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did it age well? It, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. Did Gordon Bombay age well? Yeah. <laughs> like, Jeez, yeah. Minnesota Miracle Man did it age well. <laughs> yeah, I did it age well. What a joke. It's disgusting. <laughs> Sorry, bro. You sound like an idiot. He did know Tommy Boy, though. So he did. Uh, that's a good he movie. Did. Great movie. Let's move along here. Uh, JJ, how's Burnley doing? I heard we stink. What's going on? <clears throat> we are uh, we are we are finding ways that don't work so that we can find ways that do work. <laughs> you get born this. You get right born this this week. You got anything else you want to tell me? Anything else you want to freaking give me advice on? You I have a I, I have a large wager on on you guys against Bournemouth this weekend, JJ. I believe in your squad. Yeah, I didn't know Bournemouth was, right. was a team. Yeah, so good luck against Bournemouth. You guys need to get a win over Bournemouth. <laughs> yeah, boy, oh boy. Yeah, if you don't beat Bournemouth, it's gonna get loud. For especially from that Canadian man back there, yeah. mm -hmm. Gumpy. What's this Burnley squad do well that we can tell JJ? Do you know? They don't defend terribly. Okay. Jeez, okay. I mean, that's that is one hundred percent the opposite. <laughs> Correct answer. That is literally. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know. You lost three truth. nothing to Brentford, JJ. What do you want me to say? Yeah. Brentford stays. Well, I could tell you if, you if you let in three goals, you probably shouldn't say the defending. <laughs> well, you didn't score either. What do you want me to say? You had a red card. Not even the discipline was good. Get the boys going. We got to win a match. We're, we're, yeah, Gee. We're. we're we have belief. We have optimism. Uh, we are going to find a way. It is the uh, American Minority Owners Bowl this weekend. Michael B. Bo Michael B. Jordan uh, is a minority owner in Bournemouth, it. and obviously myself in Burnley. Are you guys so. going to be there? Are you going to fight before yeah. the game? Kick his ass. Yeah. Uh, no, no, that would be that already happened in Creed Two or Creed Three. It was, it was were, were, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he won. Uh, he is. Yeah, yeah he did win. Yeah, well, he, he is. He's he's properly jobbed. Really properly jobbed. Yeah, maybe shake his hand instead of punch him in the face. He played football last year. Good-looking human being. He's a good-looking human being. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's a good transition, actually. Uh, I saw maybe the best put-together human being of all time this weekend, up close and personal. And I know that you are a strapping lad, big man. Wasn't able to use your golf club at the uh, at the uh, uh, hole, hole for one. challenge. Waste management. Yeah, waste waste man management, management thing where I'm on 60 to 80 milligrams and I get dropped into maybe <laughs> the most electrifying environment of all time and I didn't even have a golf club. So I need JJ's. And it was way too big. It, thing came up, it was like a hockey stick. I couldn't use that. So I'd use one of the fake ones. And then people say, you duffed it. No shit. I mean, I had no idea. That was awesome. Uh, that was awesome. I mean, you were you were trying to hit that golf ball from a spaceship, Pat. You were... You were normally you were pretty good at it. <laughs> normally pretty good at yeah. it. I didn't have good. I didn't have good handle of that club. Nonetheless, uh, you are uh, incredibly built human. You're big. You're strong. You're fast. You're fierce. Blah blah blah. Miles Garrett. This thing. I've never seen anything like this. Obviously, Ooh, that is what he looks yeah. like uh, without a shirt on. So that's a nice little thing to have whenever you look in the mirror. Jeez. Congrats to Miles Garrett being stropped. Absolutely. But then you watch him play football. He's seemingly unblockable. He knows what the Colts are going to do. He jumps over the guard and the center from a four-point stance at 270 pounds. It's like he's unstoppable. Is this guy... It, and I know in the pass rush community, there's a lot of guys on the Mount Rushmore and everything like that. But he has to be talked about as one of the guys like of all time, right, already? Is that how you're feeling? He's, he's an incredible player, man. And some of the things that he does from a physical standpoint, I mean, the field goal block was truly like an impressive thing. I mean, they basically tried to ban the jump over a few years ago because you can't put your hands on somebody's back while you're jumping over, which is what a lot of guys did. So he just said, screw it. I don't even need to put my hands on anybody's back. I don't even need to be standing up. I'll just do it from a four point. I mean, he is he is an impressive athletic physical freak and then you combine it with good pass rush moves with the ability to do some of the things he does against double teams, against anything. I mean, this play against the Colts is a great example. The Colts put two guys on him. Now, A, if you're gonna put two guys on him, I wanna show I wanna show this play from a different angle, from this angle. So let's take this play. You got the tight end and you got the tackle. Both guys are now on Miles Garrett. So if you're that tight end, you want to push Miles as wide as possible so that he has the furthest distance to go and also pass him off to your tackle. The first thing that the tight end does is kind of switches his feet and let, and Miles also knows the snap, he jumps the ball, so he's off the ball quicker than the tight end. So already, boom, he's past the tight end. Same. Now, if you're the tackle, AQ, you can talk to this. If I know that I've got a tight end to help me and he's going to push Miles wide, I'm going to set back even further because I know I can get in front of him and then make it tough. 
I feel like that didn't happen here because this is way, way, way too easy for Miles just to run directly past two people. Give me your thoughts, AQ. AQ, what the hell happened? Jeez. That was right in front of our suite, by the way. Like, literally right in front of our suite. (laughs) Made eye contact with Miles Garrett. Right, um... Right about there? Nope, not yet. He sees that the ball is recovered. They have a touchdown. This game's probably over. And he turns around and starts doing the shrug thing. Right there. We are making eye contact, I believe. <laughs> and then he just starts doing this one. And then he starts bouncing all the way off the sideline. And then the fourth Miles Garrett chant started from the Cleveland Browns fans that traveled very well. Why are they setting so shallow? That guy should have been getting straight back as fast as he could, AQ. Coach him up. Listen here, and this – the thing that he's not talking about, they're also sliding the line that way. So if I'm the tackle, I want to almost get to almost head up head up because I know my guard has my inside too. So I'm flying back there, getting depth, staying square. You looked him at him immediately, and he opened his shoulders. It's a classic no-no from a tackle. You know it, JJ. It gives him a two-way go, and then he's just able to run the home. Hey, the whole place was, ch- yeah. the whole place was chanting Miles Garrett, you know? That- well, I mean, it was, it was incredible. I mean, like he – that was one of those games where he almost single-handedly did it by himself, and those are those are incredible and impressive. I mean, he's literally putting points on the board for his team right there. Well, the blocked kick too—he's taking points mm-hmm. on the board for the other. I mean, it's just yeah. he's every he was everywhere. Amazing. No offense though, no offensive snaps. There, oh. there he is. Go, I think they'll show that from the other end. Not, oh yeah, I mean, geez, like like, come on. Like was, that's that's like playing the game on easy mode, it, and it's just I mean it just I, I, looks cool too. I mean it just looks really man. cool, man. Well, you have to. So the amount of confidence it takes, obviously, and we've seen him box jump in the off season where he's up over like fifty inches or sixty inches, whatever it is, and he's hopping up onto, and it's absolutely absurd. But he has to have the get off because that snap yep. is going to be quick. So you can't get too high. You have to get kind of like a quick up and down, but you can't touch the center or the guard because that would be a penalty even if you touch him at all. It's just like the amount of confidence, control, explosion. Get He's up before anybody else. I mean, he's moving. The explosion yeah. is incredible. I mean, like to, to go from that crouched position and to be able to do that, I mean, I, I've I've box jumped really, really high before and I'm, I'm proud of my athleticism. I don't know if I could have accomplished that in that fashion. It was it was incredible. Well, the, for the brand headquarters, thank you. Uh, because if Miles Garrett's <laughs> going to start doing that on every kick, we're going to have to change some shit. Yeah. You know, that's going to have mm-hmm. to really change some. Stuff. I was going to ask if you if you saw that coming over the line, did, you, yeah. are you yeah. pulling the ball and running? No. So I saw Jamie Collins. Uh, he oh, did yeah. it. Uh, New England Patriots. He jumped. So we would go on two, three, one. You know, because Vinatieri was confident enough for us, like. I could yell as much as I want. It's not going to affect him. Younger kickers, I don't think you can necessarily do that. It's easier to get a kind of a read on a younger kicker who maybe can't handle that. But Jamie had something. He knew exactly when we were snapping it, and he sprinted. He jumped over Overton, just completely over. And as I'm catching the snap, I'm actually looking at him. And I, in my head, I'm thinking, like, too high. He's going to get down. We'll be able to get this almost. Nah, hit him, like, right in the chest. He blocked <laughs> yeah. He blocked the hell out of it. It was one – I almost pooped my pants, but I did chase the ball down just in nice. case, yep. you know. But uh, I don't know if you're going to pull that when Miles Garrett's in your – you know. No. Like, this is – he knew. Oh, jeez. Go back to the beginning there? Yeah, he knew. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my Oh, yeah. He didn't protect himself Big from the ball. Yeah, he almost got hit right in the balls. <laughs> yeah. And uh, other angle there, there, I think they'll have a back angle. You can actually see me look up and see him while I'm catching the football. I mean, it, yeah, I just double clutched yeah. there. What is that? I didn't think that was legal. But he started one yard off oh. the ball because you're not allowed to be within a You yard. almost got to the ball, too. Well, you almost you. made it to the ball. Well, I was going to tackle whoever picked it up. Yep. You know that. Smart. JJ, you've seen me in action. Obviously, you understand that I was going to level. I was going to headhunt yep. whoever thought they could take a point off the board for Adam Vinatieri. I think they'll show a, a bat. What's that? What are you looking at? Yeah, here it is. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, bro. Yeah, it I is. I saw you pop your head up. Yeah, it is. Here, this is probably going to be. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, old buddy saw Miles Garrett. Rigoberto Sanchez certainly saw Miles Garrett. And it's just like such a what the hell is that? And I think people think that's like easy to do because two people have accomplished it in the history. It's not. The amount of timing, everything, Miles Garrett's at a different level. Sorry, AJ. Go ahead, pal. Oh, no. JJ, say you're a, you were an offensive coordinator, a hypothetical situation here. How would you, what would your plan be to try to block guys like Miles Garrett, like your brother TJ, that. Not only like are they just absolute game wreckers, but you never really know where they're going to line up. They they can line up anywhere, hand on the ground, stand up in the middle, whatever it is. Like, what can you do against these people? 
Yeah, I mean, the, the funny thing that we talk about that play that we just talked about is that the number one thing that I want to do if he's on the edge is I want to widen him out as far as possible. So I put a tight end or a bunch or something in his way to make him line up wider so he's physically further away from the quarterback. And then I also want to have either a chip or a double team or something like that, which they also had on this play. And then, I, like AQ was talking about, I want to slide because I want, I want that tackle to know that he can overset so that we can force him to go inside and have help. None of that obviously happened on that exact play, but that's the thing that frustrated me the most, is if you put a guy out there to widen my stance and then you also slid the line my way, now I got to beat that tight end. Now I got to beat that tackle and probably have to beat a guard also if I did an underneath move. Um, And then the other thing on that play that we didn't really talk about is the quarterback drifts just a little bit, which then allows you to really run that hump um, because if quarterback stays at seven or eight yards, that's the toughest spot to get to for us, that seven or eight yard window. Um, once you start to drift back to, to nine yards, 10 yards, or you start to move off the spot, it does become easier to get to the quarterback at that point. So if you got guys in the middle that can push the pocket back and get the quarterback to drop back to nine or 10, then you really got a good shot. I'll tell you what. So, a couple guys made mistakes on that play. Sure. Mm-hmm. We gave that Browns defense all they could handle, though. <laughs> yeah. Gardner Minshew, the second, was running wild out there. 38 points. 38 points. I loved everything about it. I mean, you guys are putting them up. You guys are putting points up down there. It's – it's. what, what is the stat? like? The only team. No, every, yeah, the only team in the NFL to put over 20 points. Shane Steichen. Impressive. Shane Steichen, Steichen baby. It's Can fun to watch. Mm-hmm. Put yeah. the banner up. Hey. Yeah, put the banner up. Amen, That's like, We need to celebrate the little things. Life's already hard enough. Come it on. Put the banner up. We're the only team that has scored 20 points yet. Now, also, Anthony Richardson, successful shoulder surgery. How about that? Ah, that's yeah. great news. Hang it. Hang it. Right Future now. of the program's coming back better than ever. You mentioned your brother there, uh, and you talked about, like, Miles Garrett got triple teamed there. I don't think I realized that. That guard was certainly eyes looking out at him. No doubt. You have handled that, obviously, throughout your career. TJ's handled that through his career. Well, we saw TJ do this weekend, though. Ooh, a little, ooh, little drop in the coverage. Looked like an athlete. Now, granted, gets tackled. Okay. Sure. Uh-huh. Need to end in the paint there, yeah, probably. Tough. But this play, first play of the second half, certainly a way to start this thing. He had a little disguise on that as well, JJ. Yeah, I mean, this this, uh, this is one of those plays where I actually, like, a lot of stuff he does, I'm like, yeah, okay, all right, nice play, good play. This is one where I was like, all right, I'm actually impressed by this play. So he's dropping into coverage. He's obviously got some form of responsibility out there, either it's a hook curl or it's some, he's helping with the flat. But he kind of baits them into this throw here, leaving it open and then breaking at the exact perfect time, coming across and making a play. I mean, he legitimately looked like, like a proper defensive back or linebacker here. I mean, he's he's making this break before Matt even takes his front hand off the ball, already knowing where he's going to try and go with it. I mean, that is a hell of a play. Look I, at I DJ, huh? Unreal. Athlete. And then, I mean, they hands the offense the ball inside the 10-yard <laughs> line, and that was, that was honestly a game-changing point in the game for them. And, I mean, we've talked about it all year long, like, that defense is really literally putting points on the board for the offense and, and helping keep the Steelers, I mean, four and two top of the division. It's the toughest division in football there. That was a great, great play. He keeps that ball? Yeah, you guys keep balls? I don't know if he'd keep that one. I think if he scored, he might keep it. Um, the one we always talk about, which is fumble recoveries. Like, we never, ever keep a fumble recovery because we didn't do anything special. We just fell on a ball that was laying on the ground. So we always talk about those ones where it's like they come and try and hand us the ball, and I'm like, what did I do? I did nothing (laughs) special here. I just grabbed it. That's awesome. So that was always your rule, and then TJ just has to live by it because JJ lived by it pretty much? No, he agreed with me. He he was like – because he he agreed. I think the Alex Highsmith one earlier in the year where TJ picked it up and went and scored, uh, Alex kept trying to give TJ the ball, and he's like, TJ was like, dude, you did the hard part. I literally just picked up the pieces and – and made it happen. So, yeah, we, we, we kind of know what is hard to do and what is easy to do, and recovering a fumble is, is pretty easy. You Watts are awesome. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah, JJ, I just want to let you know, like if someone ever asked you, would you take a bullet for your brother, you could say no. Because I'll step right in and I'll take a bullet for that. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. I just want you to know. That. How about that? And well, I'll be Tony. right behind him in Nick's case it's right goes behind me. And thousands of other Yenzers are behind him. And that high school ref that everybody learned about, yep. he's going, yeah. listen, first down, like second that. down, I'll be third down for the boys, <laughs> for T.J. Watt. I mean, that is really how Pittsburgh feels. What a perfect fit of a guy, honestly, with a city. 
Oh, it's fun, man. It's really cool to see. And I know, I mean, when he signed his contract, there is sec- his extension, you know, people, so there were some people saying that was, you know, too much. It was more guaranteed than they'd ever given a, a lot of things like that. Um, but I mean, I'm, I'm proud of him. I, I think the goal is to always try and be underpaid or prove that you're worth what they're giving you and give the fans and give the city uh, everything that they deserve. And when I watch him play, I'm extremely proud as an older brother because I feel like he does that every time he steps on the field. We got to be there one time for him coming out last, mm-hmm. and it was banana. The place, big pop, yeah. not easy to win over Pittsburgh. But I'll tell you what, yeah. you're TJ White, White, and you say, I don't right. want to, don't give me that ball. I fell on a fumble. That ain't worth a damn. It's like <laughs> you could just take it to the kids. You just want to have it. Yeah. Somebody else's ball, you ended up with it. No, nah, it's disgusting. No. Yeah, I don't want to do it. Don't do it. Keep How, it. I, this this brings up another conversation. I'm fascinated to get your guys' opinions on it. Game balls. Like, uh, do you have them all up in your house? Like, if the whole team got a game ball, are you putting that one up? Or if you specifically got how do you, how do you do it? AJ, you first, pal. Um, yeah, they're in my basement in a thing somewhere. Yeah, in like a container. You know. all my basically all my stuff is. I think. I would like to let everybody know that I have no clue where my game balls are. <laughs> I got one basically every single win too. I, I, it, I got, I got most of them in my garage, but I got a few of them in the office. Be, uh, Did you say you got a game ball every single win? Pretty much, yeah, dude. I mean, I was <laughs> I was unconscious there for like four years. Every punt was perfect. <laughs> it was, it, I really was. I mean, it was it was absurd. It was absolutely. And Vinny didn't miss for like two years, so it's pretty much just like special teams. Thank you. Yeah. Here's a couple game balls. Let's <laughs> move along. <laughs> like it was. It was kind of like that. Yeah. Not not before that. Like the last three years, pretty much I of my hell career. Of a unit. Yeah. We it was a hell of a. Yeah. Fourth, we had a fourth good, down army. Was a unit. Yeah. We kind of handled our shit there for a bit. We've lost a couple of them. You know, real life stuff. But boy, we were really getting oh, after yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. What do you, What do you do? You have a. I assume they're all framed. Uh, just literally put them up in my gym. Shipyard, baby. I got, I got some, nice. I got some good team balls though. You know, Super Bowl champ. Uh, oh, oh, this guy. Oh, I, got, I, got some good, I got some good. I got some good. I got some good ones to hang up on the wall. Ah, uh, that is Chris awesome. Tuttle, we had a couple guys on our team get them that. Uh, you know, like half a pressure, good leadership. <laughs> oh yeah! What a what a speech on the sideline, a game ball. You know oh, who's that? AJ? Yeah, no, AJ wasn't. AJ was on our. I didn't. Oh, I've, yeah, I've never been right. in there. It was good. Those were always great though. It's like I don't know if that person deserved it. Now, what does my game ball mean? Nothing. Jeez. If that guy's getting, what is anybody? We can't take any of this serious. And then you get outside of our team meeting. It's like. Did you see? And we're like, yep. We saw <laughs> yeah, the whole, the whole, the whole This thing. is all bullshit. Huh? Yeah, was, I was really proud of myself. I had a pretty good game. Connor has a question for you, JJ. Yeah, JJ, we all know the real reason you wore that shirt is because it's got that Kelly Green look to it, and you just love those alternate jerseys, and I know that is exactly why you wore that. But what did you see from the Eagles this weekend? Uh, I believe Jalen Carter had, quite, had himself a game, and that entire D-line once again showed up. A, you're correct. The Eagle, uh, the Kelly Green looked phenomenal, um, incredible uniform. B, the Eagles' defensive line seems to just be constantly reloading with incredible talent year after year. And obviously, you can say pretty much the same thing about the offensive line. But watch this play. Rewind it. Go back to the start. Now, I want you to imagine your Tua standing there. Watch this defensive line, and you tell me what you're supposed to do when this comes at you. You got Jalen Carter literally throwing his dude directly on the yeah. ground. You got the two edges flying off. Two was backed up 15 yards before the plays even got a chance to do anything. I mean, they've got Fletcher Cox and Brandon Graham who have been there forever and who have been crushing forever. Then you add Hassan Riddick on the edge who's just, in my opinion, still underrated, playing incredible. And then another underrated guy on the other side in Josh Sweat who's playing incredible football this year. It, I don't know – how they constantly get away with it. But every year they just seem to reload that defensive line and add to the pieces they already have. And I think that the reason they're being so successful lately is because they start with that O-line and D-line. And, I mean, they've done a really good job. Sirianni has actually said that because his father yep. at IUP <laughs> in Western Pennsylvania said the only way you win is through the offensive line and defensive line, baby. And he told Howie that. That's right. O-line, D-line, Howie. O-line, D-line, Howie is how we're going to win that thing. And they built the team like that. And I think that's how every team should build, don't you think? Yeah, and then you add a guy like Byron, and, and now they have even more time to rush the passer. I mean, they've already got a great defense going, and you add a guy like that, and 
I mean, they've, they've built it well up there. And obviously when you got a guy like Jalen leading the whole way, who is very calm and collected and seems to be poised and under control, um, it's, it's an impressive outfit, man. Yeah, Bayard is excited, I assume, to get to the Eagles. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the Kelly Green, if they wore it every week, he would be pumped about. But he is missing out on, because he got traded, the oh, no. maybe the greatest throwback oh, no. jersey Here we go. in the NFL. Here we go. Yeah. So that Here is we a go. I mean, you, I don't you chose know. violence. You chose violence. Here we go. No, I'm just saying, like, Bayard was informed that he was traded to Philly. He's like, wow, I got to move wanna, and everything. I want to go. Just but I don't even get a chance to take the jersey? wear it? throwback jerseys this week. These are the best ones. Exactly. In the entire NFL, so Shoot. that's in, that's that's a bummer for Bayard, man. I'm pretty. All right, all right, all right. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Well, we Let's do talk Jersey talk it. every week. Yeah, no, we do Jersey, Jersey talk. talk. Yeah. Let's talk about it. Want to talk about it. Okay. Let's unpack that, JJ. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna uh, we're gonna upset uh, some people, which is fine. But it's a li- real, legitimate conversation that I would like to have. I also know that you're just trying to distract from the uniform situation you had going on last week. Hey, look, 38 points on the best defense in the history of the NFL. (laughs) So if you want to distract on that, yeah, the boys were flying around. All black would have definitely been cooler. Yeah. But, you know, and they thought they had a primetime game at mm. some point because they called it Indiana Knights. Yep. Only team uh, <laughs> with no primetime game. You know, there's a new rule. Amazon said not everybody just gets a Thursday night game anymore. <laughs> yeah. And we were the ones that lost out on that. Mm-hmm. So, Indiana Knights in the afternoon against Cleveland and losing. Obviously tough, but they look cool. Let's get back to the good. Yeah. Let's get back to the good. Okay. Throw mm. back. Uniforms. I will say this. The Oilers uniforms look phenomenal oh, there was never a question if they were going to look phenomenal they look incredible they are one of the best uniforms in sports oh yeah obviously being from houston we've, we've talked about this before and i i know tennessee fans are going to be all up in my mentions again but the reality of the situation and i'll explain it one last time is i'm i lived and played in houston i wanted to wear those uniforms very badly they have such a massive history and tradition with Love You Blue, with Bum Phillips, with everything that went on there. Oh. I understand that the end with Bud Adams and everything that happened in the move. I don't even want to get into all of that. I also love Amy Adams Strunk. She's incredible. She donated to the Hurricane Harvey fundraiser. Nothing against her, nothing against that organization. I loved playing in Tennessee every time I played there. I just know, having lived in Houston for 10 years, and the people there and the connection that they have to Earl Campbell, to Warren Moon, to these guys that wore them, to Billy White Shoes, these guys that wore those uniforms and what that meant when they played in that Astrodome, it hurts to not have been able to wear those in Houston and it hurts to see them being worn somewhere else. Hey, we're heartbroken for Houston. Damn. Bullshit. I don't like it every week. The Titans do that's, that. That sucks. Me neither. Right in the face, they're shoving it. It is bullshit. How about the NFL marketing it too? Ooh, Ooh look at these Ooh, 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 stand up. These are so sick. You would think Braves would have some. And they have to look so good since too. he was in Houston. Like this is Braves' fault. Yeah, and you know we don't know if Braves is promoting it or he's allowing it. We know that he's promoting it. New think about the sideline gear too. The sideline gear is going to look incredible. Oh, the hats. I mean, Oh, Hats are going to be great. Start, give them the old school starter coats too on the sideline. Oh, yeah. yeah. Maybe a white a white sweatshirt with just the Oilers logo right in the center. I mean, it's just a good look. It's just a good. I look. thought the Titans were going to do it against the Texans. Yeah, that'd have been sweet. They what, are. They are next later in the year. Oh, they're going to wear it again. Twice. I believe so. Whoa. The Texans are, so. Wear it. are they coming? I thought that was. Is it in Houston? I thought they were doing it against the Texans. I mean, it, <laughs> they're coming into town. Look at me. Look at us. I thought that was – I could be wrong. I mean, I have no information. I don't do any research for this show. Um, Respect. But, <laughs> Respect. Mark, me neither. Yeah. Yeah, me neither. I, if they do, you can't lose that game as Houston. You, you just have to – you have to avenge your – and then the winner of that game should get the uniforms. That's, oh, pink oh, slips. I like idea. this. That's a good idea. I like this. Let's do pink slips for the uniforms. Yes. That's cool. I'm curious. Yeah. So maybe Houston wears the, the white one. And then they wear the baby blue one. Yeah. So then both teams can wear the throwback. Yes. And then it's a battle for who gets to keep it. And on the field, the other team has to yeah, take them, take them all off. Has to leave naked. Never yeah. wear them again. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See ya. That's a great idea. <laughs> be sweet. Come on, Raj. You want to evolve the can game? You, can you think of, if you think of the Oilers uniforms, where do you think of them playing? Like, can you think of one single memory of them playing anywhere but the Astrodome? Pittsburgh Steelers. They played a lot of games at uh, Three Rivers Stadium, okay, Donner. Okay. Yeah. Well, Whatever it was. I meant home, home games. AFC Central. Yeah. I, mean, I was talking home yeah. games. I meant home games. 
Like, do you have any memories of the Oilers wearing them in Tennessee? Well, I, we weren't, I, we weren't I, alive I can't see, yet. I can't I didn't, see Aaron McNair airing it out wearing that uniform. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. rest in peace, I by the way. Uh-huh. He used to be able to sling that yeah. thing. Vince oh, yeah. Young, when he was running around, wild when he was a rookie. Oh, yeah. And all yeah. over the did, place. Did Vince Young wear those uniforms? Yeah, yeah. they yeah. wore throwbacks uh, that night. Of so. Jake Locker. Yeah. Jake Good. Locker, Hasselbeck, yeah. Yeah. Charlie Ooh. Whitehurst. Yeah, Come speaking on. of Jake Locker, shout out Bill Levis getting the start this weekend for them. Yeah, Will Levis is going to oh. look great yeah, in these yeah. things. Uh huh. CJ two K. It's a new history. That's what they're trying to build. Yeah. But we understand. Hop gets, Hop gets to wear them. I, I, the first thing I texted Hop when he signed with the Titans, I, was, I said, "Those uniforms are going to look good on you, bud." Oh, so this is re- so every week. <laughs> wow. So every week, JJ would like to talk about uniforms. Every single week, this is a real thing that yeah. has happened. Yeah. You know, in conversations before show. So now we're learning that maybe it all started because of Houston getting screwed out of their own uniform. Sounds like it. Is that what it is, JJ? Is that how it all started? What do you mean? Yeah, that's what I've been saying the whole time. No, but you. But I'm saying like you have an obsession with uniforms. Like you like. Uniform. Oh, I'm a. Oh, I, I'm a. I'm a uniform Ooh. aficionado. Yes, I. I grew up reading Uni Watch in like. Ninth, tenth grade, I, I would always see what's going on, all the little intricacies. I love like the little patches and the little details. Yeah, I'm, I'm very big on the uniform game. I'm, I love it. And then he went to Houston, and they got screwed out of the best uniform in the uh, game. What a bummer! I mean, I that's, that's quite yeah. a recipe for a guy to have yeah. a little bit of a vendetta here yeah. in 2023. Excited to see what happens. Maybe they'll do pink slips for it. Good, AJ. Jace, what do you think about these college teams having like seven different alternate uniforms and they play a big game and all of a sudden they have a completely new thing we've never even seen? Are you a fan of that? It really depends on how good they are. Like I do think that the traditional teams with great uniforms don't need to change it up. I mean, I think Alabama, Penn State, you know, USC, like some of those iconic uniforms. I, but the you know, I, I think even you, you look at Notre Dame in the – iconic great uniforms that they have sometimes when they switch it up you kind of look at it and you're like you're notre dame like you don't have to switch it up you guys you have you you did it um but then you look like some of oregon's combinations are phenomenal and incredible and i mean really really cool so it just depends on how good you do it and how well you execute it i mean i grew up watching the, the miami hurricanes and i was a massive hurricanes fan and those jerseys when you know, Ken Dorsey and that whole team, Willis McGahee and those guys were out there balling. Those, I love those uniforms. What about the West Virginia ones? What about the West Virginia ones? you like them? I do. I do. West Virginia just uh, – I'm trying to think. They did a uniform – I think they did one of those, like, uniform reveal things where they showed how they went and shot it. Like, or maybe that was Appalachian State. Uh, yeah, it was Appalachian uh, State. They were in the waterfall. Two different schools. They're both Mountaineers. Yeah, that's right. Across the, the car. Get those two mixed up. This yeah. is disgusting. I don't know how you got those mixed Country up Roads, though. They did the Country Roads jersey last year. Oh, yeah. And the West yes. Virginia. No, that's – yeah, phenomenal. He does. I like the West Virginia colors. I like West Virginia. I'm, I'm a – I'm a fan. I was actually going to look into part of my weekly thing. I'm trying to find possibly a Pat McAfee high school jersey. Ooh. 99 pounds. Um, it's going to be tough to find. I wore a quad XL 99 shirt. <laughs> because grows away. That thing was massive. So big. Unreal. Tucked it in my pants. It like my knees. He like threw the pants. You could see <laughs> the jersey. It's awesome. Thanks, Coach. Were you? Did you have the pants where you got to still slide in the the, mm-hmm. the thigh pads, knee pads, but then put the belt loops through the yeah. hip oh, yeah. pads? Yeah. What a nightmare that was, man. Yeah, that was a nice welcome to football thing, you know. Like uh, then, obviously, the whole shoulder pads thing, but the the belt loop with the tail pad and the hip pads and having to time them up and do that whole thing. I'm not a I'm not seamsters. What, what am I? What am I doing here? Come but on. I feel like I've taken. Oh, and, and you wash your high school pants like once every two months, maybe. I mean, those things were rank. Yeah. Well, I didn't sweat much. I, I mean, I was there on Fridays, and yeah, I'll I see guess. you guys next I Friday. Forgot. But it was. Uh, I forgot. It was a good time. Whoa. Okay. The way you're saying that, a little bit disrespectful. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah. No, I forgot. I mean, did you play soccer and football in high school? Or was that do kickers allowed to do that in Pennsylvania? Yeah, I, I assume that was everywhere. There's some places where they don't let them do that, though. Oh. There's some states where that is not Most allowed. Most places they don't. What? Most places they don't. They don't do that. That doesn't what? make much sense to me. I, I don't know why no you would. Sense. Those places are stupid. Uh, so we're, we're, they're at the same season, so you would go to soccer practice and football practice. First game, I actually came from. A, no, I wouldn't go to football practice. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, first, soccer. first game I played, I came from a soccer game. 
I showed up like 20 minutes before the game started, pretty much. First game I ever played for the high school team. I had no idea. Oh, I was joking. I didn't know this was serious. Yeah, what are you talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah, this is a real deal. You can't I, do a few Thursday practices. Yeah, we worked on a couple fakes, never got called, which is a damn shame. I should have had six, seven touchdowns. No, you well, you had that one, though, where it was a bad snap. That was a bad snap. You I just tried. showed up on Fridays and slaughtered balls. Slaughtered balls. It, it used to, I used to just murder balls. The boys were actually pretty excited to see me, too. It wasn't like I wasn't friends with the football team, either. It was like, uh, yeah. hey, how's the week been? Man, pretty good. Soccer team, we went 2-0. I was How'd supposed to make it for soccer. I had like 10x the amount of scholarships for soccer than I did for football. And not a lot of people at our school get scholarships for sports. So it was like a lot of people were just trying not to mess it up. Like like Coach Romito was our football coach, and he was like, I am not going to mess up what you have going on with soccer. I'm like, I'm kicking 70 yard field goals. I think we should, <laughs> yeah. I think we should maybe think about this. I think we should maybe, yeah. I think we should maybe think about it or whatever. But yeah, I just showed up on Fridays and it was obviously a welcome to football moment when I went to college. And it was like, oh, I got I went into a summer workout. So I'm there every day, every practice every meeting and it was like oh this is the football world holy <laughs> shit what an interesting yeah. what an interesting place this is that you guys have lived in it's been awesome ty has a question for you jj jj for the lions d is this last weekend just kind of the definition of a you know bury the ball bury the film kind of game when they're so good coming in and then the ravens score touchdowns i think on their first four possessions and the game's pretty much over and then on the flip side of that how uh, humbling is it to go against a guy like Lamar Jackson, regardless if it's someone like you who is going to be a future, you know, a first ballot Hall of Famer? Like, how humbling is it knowing you're an incredible athlete and then you can still go on the field and that guy can make you just look like a moron? <laughs> oh, yeah, it, it is. Uh, it is very humbling. And the funny thing about it is there are times when you can do everything exactly right against Lamar. So when you're playing against Lamar, and, and the Lions, I got a clip that I can show you that does this. So when you're playing against Lamar, what a uh, defensive coordinator would tell you is, guys, we have to rush to the level of the passer and keep him contained in the pocket. We don't want to give him escape lanes and the B gaps. We want to rush to the level. So right here, look, both outside guys are at the level of the quarterback. We've got basically the inside gaps pretty much covered up. He has nowhere to escape. This picture is exactly what your defensive coordinator wants to see. This is exactly hey, how he's well done, Lions. Way to go. Great job. Great job, Great job. Great job, job guys. Boys. You crushed it. Congrats. Oh, yeah. But we are playing against Lamar Jackson. So even though we did everything as good oh. as we can possibly do it, oh, oh this no. happens. And then you're like, okay, so this guy's got him. This guy's going to come up and grab Nope. He's going to juke him out and then throw a touchdown pass. I mean, there are times where as a coach, as a player, you're just sitting in that meeting room. And honestly, they'll put on that piece of film and they'll say, guys, I don't know what else to tell you here. You guys you did your job. He just made a great play. He gets paid too. No, so they're not saying we went from the brand new lines where it was perfect to the same old lines where it was terrible. They're not blaming anybody. They're just recognizing but, the fact. Yeah. But when you do give up 28 in the first half, then you <laughs> – like, it's not like that every single play. You can't just say, uh, yes, we – He's a magician. We lost to him. No, you, there's there's definitely some other things to be fixed there. Um, but to the bury the ball fact, like it's it's very interesting because a lot of times the bury the ball game or the, don't even look at the film, move on. That comes after maybe two or three losses where you're like, all right, we just got to clean slate it and move forward. After one tough loss like this, you could go one of two ways. You could say, let's not watch the film. Let's just get back to being ourselves. Or you could hyperanalyze this one and say, we got to – really lock in and get better on a play like that there literally is nothing you can do that's just a guy making a good play but the rest of the game there were certainly some things that you can you can get better at how are the players only meetings in buildings that you were in you were speaking you were leading those oh, things yeah because yeah. Yeah. you <laughs> no. said, you said yeah, bury the yeah. ball. obviously bury the ball is yeah. one stage yep. uh -huh. and if it keeps getting bad <laughs> players only meetings yep. coming right around yeah. the corner of course. how what, yeah. how was the players only meetings with you jj you you lead the way up there <laughs> If you're at players only meetings point, just go ahead and book your January vacations. I mean, that's just go ahead, get, get Cabo, uh, get your flights lined up because if you're having players only meetings, it is over, buddy. There, I have never been in one where I came out of it and I was like, yes, let's go figure it out. Like, like if you're in players only meetings, like you're just literally kind of looking around like, oh, OK. So and then this guy comes up with a super passionate speech and he's like, guys, we got to play for each other. We have to do this. And then this other guy's like, yeah, but we're not. It's the coaching, man. This is some stupid <laughs> shit. And like 
And, and then this guy over here is like trying to defend the coaches and he's like, no, man, it's not them. It's us. And it's just, it is a nightmare. They always work out well. I, I don't think I've ever heard a single player say players only meetings, good things. I nope. haven't, haven't heard a single one, but they will still continue to get called for, I assume, at some point. <laughs> Has anybody day. ever come out of a players only meeting and then gone on a run? Like, has that ever happened? I, I mean, can't let think me of check like my a... Rolodex of players only <laughs> yeah. meetings. Yeah. I don't think so. Let's just say no for the sake. But this is very much our show where we do no research because we have no idea what's going to come up. I love to hear that you are not a players-only meeting guy alongside every other human that I've ever talked to that has ever been in the NFL. And if it was players-only meeting or bury the ball type scene for the brand-new Lions, and I'm not saying it is or not, Lamar's 16-1 and against the NFC now. 16-1 and against NFC teams. And if you start thinking about that, does that mean anything? No. But you can start saying maybe the AFC is a little bit more stacked. Lamar Jackson is playing his best ball that he's played. Josh Allen going through something right now with the Buffalo Bills. Patrick Mahomes, though, the clinic that he and Travis Kelsey just put on make us believe that the Chiefs are still the Chiefs, right, in the AFC, and everything runs through them with how he's playing right now? Yeah. I mean, I think that we kind of get to this point. Even with Lamar, we also do it with Pat where you, somebody does plays so great and plays so well for such an extended period of time that we almost get bored with the greatness of it. And I think people are constantly trying to find these things about Mahomes or trying to, you know, the offense isn't clicking that well or they're not doing this, not doing that. Patrick Mahomes is still Patrick Mahomes. He's still the MVP. He is still playing at a high level. He's still dominating this league. I don't think that we should get bored with watching greatness and with appreciating greatness. Uh, I do think there is this fatigue factor where, yeah, that's just what he does. He just plays that well. Let's who, Who's the MVP? Let's go find it. Is it Brock Purdy? Is it this guy? Is it that guy? Well, Patrick Mahomes is still playing unbelievable football. Let's make sure we're giving people their flowers at the right time. And, I mean, I mean, this is just incredible. Yeah, like, it's- this isn't normal. This isn't normal stuff. Like, that's just, a, oh, yeah, he just threw a 60-yard pass to – Travis Kelsey, that's not – you can't just let that be normal. That's incredible. Well, and also, Travis Kelsey's not running routes that are play calls. So, it's like <laughs> yeah. him and Patrick Mahomes are running two different plays than the rest of the team, and then they're always on the same page. And his acknowledgement or awareness of where the line of scrimmage is yeah. is another, like, yeah. sneaky talent that I don't think gets talked about much with him because he moves – same with Lamar. He moves, and he'll have one foot behind it, and he still believes he can run where I assume sure. – and we saw the play earlier – most quarterbacks are, like, scared to death. Ah, am I past it? Am I not past it? He's never past it, it seems like. He's always making plays. Never. And Taylor Swift and the Swifties have a front-row seat to it all. What a perfect team for them to get involved in football to watch. Yeah, no, I mean, they've, they've only won a couple Super Bowls already. They, they, the thing that they were missing is more fans, so it's awesome. So, <laughs> yeah, their, their franchise is going down. Nobody really knew about them. Um, Taylor and Travis. Oh, yeah. See the kiss smooch on the cheek? Yeah. See oh, smooch on the cheek? Saw, Lipstick. Saw, Take yeah, it. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it just looks – there's got to be a wedding soon, right? We hope so. Uh, Keep so. going, you two lovebirds. Yeah, add Arrowhead. Yeah. yeah. Keep going, yeah. you yeah. lovebirds. Yeah. Dad, Papa Kelsey's now in the equation. Oh, uh, hadn't heard from him at all before, but now we're hearing. He said Taylor's yes. a very, very smart girl. Uh, Dad, um, Papa Kelsey's see, a legend. Great to see yeah. Dad we, Kelsey. Yeah, we, getting we, in. We know a lot about Papa Kelsey. We know Mama Kelsey. We know Jason Kelsey. Right. Right. And we know Travis Big Kelsey fan. has finally found his love. Yeah. yeah. Unbelievable. I'm happy for them. Yeah. Darius has a question for Everybody us. in the Kelsey family seems awesome. <laughs> it, I mean, it really is cool to like have them playing at such a high level and to have them, everybody highlighted. Like, sometimes you get some fatigue or you get old. Like, I like seeing everything with the Kelsey's, man. They just seem like good people. It's like the Watts. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Oh, it is like, look at this. Cool. This is really cool. You guys should hang out. You guys know each other. Go on. This is great. Yeah, it's great. Uh, <laughs> Darius has a question for you about offense. Yeah, we got uh, a lot of these uh, pass rushers doing some great things. We talked about Miles Garrett. Obviously, your brother as well. But something they're not doing, playing offense. You pl- obviously played offense. What was that conversation like with your coach? Did you present that to him, or did he come to you and actually do some offensive red zone snaps? Yeah, I appreciate that, first of all. Um, not everybody can do it. <laughs> it's much, much harder. It's so much harder. I mean, on defense, you just got to – they just say, find the ball, get the ball. And we all say, no problem. Now, to go on the offensive side of the ball, you got to be cerebral. Okay. You got to use okay. your brain. Right. You got to be a smart cat. Um, no, but the conversation was – I mean, I would always mess around. Like, I, I always prided myself on being a great athlete. So I always wanted to do everything I possibly could. So before practice, catching kicks, catching punts, 
playing with the quarterbacks, playing catch, whatever I can to just kind of be an overall athlete. And so I would start doing that, and then you do one-handed catches, and then you start to, you know, do it in front of the coach, and you're like, hey, look, I can do this. Hey, look, I can do this. Um, and then you just try and plant it in his ear. But uh, I can't remember exactly how it ever first came up. But a cool story that I do have, because Bill O'Brien is the one that did it. Bill O'Brien is the one who gave me the opportunity to play on Oh, the guy you fought. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, fought him. Punch for it. Yeah, no, yeah, that, that's what we fought about. I was like, I should be playing every play. Um, <laughs> but his first, I believe it was his first game as head coach. Um, we, it was a home game, and at the end of the game, we were down and we were going to kick an onside kick. And I went up to him and I said, put me on the onside kick team. Mind you, I had never been on an onside kick team. I had no reason whatsoever to be on an onside kick team. But I was I was so confident in myself that I was like, just put me out here. I don't know where I'll go, but I'm going to get I'll this. find a ball. Um, and he was a first – it was his first game as head coach. So he I, – I, I appreciate that he listened to me. He was like, all right, go ahead. So I went out on this onside kick team and didn't even get remotely close to getting the ball. <laughs> didn't even get remotely close to anything. But I always thought that was a cool thing that he was like, yeah, you are – an athlete, you can go out there and get it. So give it a shot. Um, and I also appreciate that with playing tight end because he did give me the opportunity. And I mean, it was very, very successful. And we'll see you tomorrow, ESPN. All right, nailed it. Perfect. Yep. Let's Bye, go. Guys. Perfect. That was perfect. That was the best ending we've ever had. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you were right there on the screws, dude. You were right there on the screws. I. You, All right. Press. No, don't be sorry. Clock. As you were, no, no, because no, the clock's change and your clock might not match up with our clock, sure. which might not match up with their clock. There's been a lot of clock issues, big clock problems. Uh-huh. We're swinging around these clock problems yeah. like you know, nobody else's business. But you literally wrap that story up as the show is ending. That's the greatest ending we've ever Boom. had. Right on the money. Hey, I'm proud of you, dude. That's that innate ability. You. You know, Work days, athlete. That's that natural athleticism. Yeah. He knew where the line of scrimmage yeah. was. So what did you do on that onside kick? You just you didn't know where the ball was going? Yeah. <laughs> no, like it was one of those that bounced directly to the guy. He caught it and laid down, so there was nothing to do. But I was I literally believed I was gonna get it. I I, I was an idiot, man. <laughs> like I was I literally just had so much self confidence, like unrightfully, that I was like, Yeah, I'm absolutely getting this football. No idea. I didn't even know how to time it up because I've never seen the kicker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it all seems so ridiculous looking back on it, but that unflappable confidence is a massive deal to professional athletes. Mm-hmm. There's a narrative building a little bit that maybe Josh Allen's starting to question himself or maybe some other quarterbacks are starting to f- lose their confidence. Is that something you can get back, you think, once you lose it? Or what? have you ever had any issues like that during your playing career? Yes, I, I have, and I can speak to this very clearly because I've, I've gone through this a lot with injuries and things like that. But you definitely can get it back. But there is also something about when you have that unflappable confidence from the beginning and you don't lose it. Like once you lose it, then always kind of in your head, you know that there can be questions. You know that there can be times where you don't have that confidence. In the very beginning, when you're so naive and you're so – you don't know any better – it's like this crazy, unbelievable phenomenon where you just don't believe that anything bad can happen at any point. Um, I was awesome. actually just talking oh, yeah. to this about uh, with, with Matt Burke, the Texans D coordinator, because we were talking about young guys and young team. And I was like, sometimes there is a massive benefit to having a young team because they don't even know what pressure is. They don't even understand what they're doing and what they're accomplishing. And they don't even know that pressure is a real thing. So they just go out there and they play and they have fun and they – perform better than they might have performed otherwise. Um, but yes, for myself, that first wave of confidence that if, if, you, if you've been there, I know any, any great athlete's been there. There is just nothing better than when you're like, anything that I do is going to be successful. It is the best feeling in the world. I had that in a pickup basketball game one time <laughs> nice. a few years back. It was awesome. That hoop looked <laughs> like it was this big. You know what I mean? I was just throwing it up. And then my cardio caught up to me and it was like, oh, Humble time. Sure. How you doing? Keep it moving. But it is nice whenever you see guys in the zone clearly and ladies in the zone clearly. It's a it's a wild phenomenon because like your mindset and confidence is something you can control, but it directly affects your performance as well in all walks. Yeah. Whether you're an entertainer, an actor, mm-hmm. uh, comedian, mm-hmm. anything, if you have to perform a craft, if you have confidence, you're going to be so much better. And it's all self-controlled. It makes no sense to me. I, I don't fully no. comprehend it. I got a I got an interesting thing that you guys can relate to here, and I'm fascinated to hear your thoughts. So 
at the height of it, you know, 2014, 2015, when I was playing my best ball, I was trying to find literally any edge I could possibly find. And this confidence that we're talking about is one of the biggest things. And pregame songs and everything is so important. And you so, just, yeah, 20% so luck, like, 50% skill, 20% yeah. power to win. So I had this idea. So I had this idea. And I was literally trying to find any little edge I could find. I had this idea that at the end of the season, I would not listen to any song on my pregame playlist until the next season started because I wanted that mentality to kick back in at the same time next year. And I didn't want it to like fade. So once I kicked those songs back on, I wanted it to be right back to it. So like, I didn't get to listen to Eminem lose yourself for six months. You know? Oh, I don't know how you did that, Jeez. especially at that time. Yeah. Did it work? Did it work? Uh, no. No, it didn't work. So, no. <laughs> Actually hated the songs. Nope. Yeah, it turned out. Yeah. Yeah, no, no I, I got hurt. I got hurt that year, so it didn't work. Uh, um, Six so, months. A lot of, no, lot of wasted time. Could have been listening to yeah. great music. Just wasted it. Yeah, it also could have got jacked up for those lifts, you know. Yeah. Uh-huh. Could have yeah. got better. I, yeah. I actually got rid of all my pump-up music yeah. for all my off-season <laughs> workouts because I thought it didn't work. Hey, you know what? You take that into the next year. That's right. Boom. And then you move It forward. was a long-term experiment. The, the thesis took a long time to play out and uh, not very long to disprove. So that was stupid. Last question, AJ. When you were talking about the whole confidence thing, it got me thinking of I heard some golfers talk about when, like, as golfers get older, they have, like, these mental scars because they've been, oh, they've been second place in the major, third place. Oh, they've competed, but they miss putts in huge moments. And as they get older, those scars continue to come up in, in their brain again and again, and it gets harder and harder. Like, you're right when you said it's there's something to having a young, naive team. Like, how could you find a, a nice balance of a young, naive team that doesn't even know the great things they're doing and don't even understand the stage they're on also with some vets that get it and are confident and can kind of lead the way? Yeah, 100%. I think you, you do have to find that perfect balance because you want vets who are going to let those young guys be naive and be fun and have their and feed off of that because it also gives energy to the vets. It also keeps the vets young and makes them kind of have that, have that vibe and have that youth, that fountain of youth. But then you also need those vets to be able to foresee issues that are going to pop up and kind of prevent them from happening without taking away the innocence of those young guys. So whether it's, uh, you know, you're going to win the division and you got to, you can't party celebrating the division because you still got to go out there and, and secure the number one seat or whatever it was. You got to have the guys that can say, Hey guys, we don't need to celebrate this that hard because we've got bigger goals ahead. Little things like that make such a big difference. Um, and it's just having that right combination of those young guys and those vets but it makes a world of difference when you get that perfect combination and a coach who knows how to let all of that play out and not get overly into it and not try and micromanage. You're friends with a lot of those golfers, right? Aren't you out there? John Rahm. Yeah. 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 It's golfers are fascinating, man. Fascinating. What do they, they drink, they smoke dope. What do they do? What do they do? <laughs> what do they do? No, John, they, uh, I mean, <laughs> The ones that I know don't do a lot of – they play a lot of golf, man. They play a whole lot of golf, and it's the most mental – like, it's fascinating to pick their brains and the stuff that they want to learn about because I'm like – you know, they'll try and ask me questions about routine and nutrition and uh, lifting and things, and I'm just like, I can't do anything remotely close to what you can do. I don't know how the hell you want me to help you, man. Like, you just piped to drive 350 yards dead center for 18 straight holes – and I shot 110. What the hell am I going to help you with? <laughs> so you suck at golf? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, I suck. Uh, John, If I play with John, he's got to give me two strokes a hole, uh, and then it's competitive. He's uh, number one in the world, though. Yeah, he's, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's pretty, pretty good. good. Pretty good golfer. Pretty good. I don't think you should be comparing yourself to fucking John Rahm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, to me, are you a good golfer? Are you like, like? I mean, I shoot, I shoot literally on either side of 100 every time I play. I mean, I'm like a 98 to 104. Like, that's my range. But you got to play actual rules whenever you're playing with those PGA guys, right? I, my, my brothers and I and my buddies, we always play all, like – Ball and hole. I, I don't understand how people play this, like, pick it up bullshit. Like, how do you know your score if you don't put it in the hole? Exactly. That's a lot of pro who gives right. a fuck, dude. You're right. Like, hey, hey, where's the ball? To get better. Hey, where's the ball? It's somewhere in this area. Well, I'm not spending the next 10 minutes looking for it. <laughs> nope. Okay? So I'm going to drop, 
I'm gonna drop. We'll one, drop right? and take a stroke. Though. Just take a stroke. Yeah, you take drop it. Take a stroke. Yeah. I mean, okay, so maybe, right maybe. I, I don't know. You'll I mean, never you know t- your score then. I mean, you tell me. I don't keep score yeah. when I go out most of the time. No. You know what I mean? It's just like I feel. No, like- I'm sick of all these dudes where I'm like, "How how are you as a golfer? What do you shoot?" They're like, "Yeah, I shoot mid to high 80s." And then I'll go out there and I'm like, okay, let's play. And then we'll play real and it's 102. And I'm like, don't bullshit me, man. You don't shoot at 80. It's the high 80. See, what I do is, like, I won't. You're right. They are pieces. Everyone lies. Yeah, like, I wouldn't, like, if I'm, if I hit a ball into a high grassed area that is not out of bounds, but we all know my ball is in that area, okay? I'm not doing it, okay? I'm not, I'm not like a little puppet looking for this little fucking thing for the next 15 minutes. I don't have time. Who has the time to do that? So I'll drop one in there, though, okay? And I'm hitting this. If I was to get a birdie on that hole, I would not count it. How I keep score, though, is I'm like, mm. got two birdies today, had like a par, and then what you do for the other six? Ah. <laughs> that could have been, that been any. That's how I play. And I people don't love it, but I'm having a great time out there. And also, I'm never finishing nine holes either. It's Six, seven holes, and then I'm probably out of there. So never finishing I'm kind of – buddy, who has never the time? Never finishing nine holes? Who Jeez. has the time, JJ? It's so long out there. Let alone if you're waiting behind somebody and then there's people on your ass. It's like I get very uncomfortable. I can't do it. But it would be great to just be able to sit out there in Arizona, hike up Camelback Mountain, oh, have yourself a little Aussie eye, Ooh, you know, do your thing, sure. and then go out there with John Rom and hit the Phoenician, you know, of out course. there. It'd be good. You know, maybe one Come day. on down, Pat. Come on down. Come on down. I am thinking that that's potentially a place where the wife and family and I are going to retire at out there in Arizona. It is awesome. It is yeah. so cool. The weather just broke. It's a high of 82 today. Ooh. When you wake up in the morning, it's 63, 64. Oh, you see your breath still. You see your breath out there when mm. you're drinking your coffee? Not this morning, but it'll come. It'll come. Kind of sucks. It's beautiful. Jim, Jim Ursay's down here all the time. Miss <laughs> Ursay's down here all the time. Refs, got to fix them. How? What a what? How, I don't know how. I mean, I trust me. I wish I knew the answer. But the, what a what a tweet! What a tweet! I love to see it. I absolutely love to see it. Yeah. That he's just gonna just reckless with it. Just go ahead and reckless? throw it all. What? Yeah, no, this is cerebral. No, in a good way. In a good way. In a good way. In a good way. It sound like it. I, I would love to see it all fixed. I mean, I, I'm still blown away that we have Hawkeye technology and everything. We can see that where the tennis ball landed on the court to the millimeter the second it happened. Wow. But we got, we got sticks and freaking chains, and I love the chain gang. The chain it. gang are some of the best guys on the planet, but come on. I mean, let's get in the 20, 20th century, not even the 20th. Whatever one we're in. Yeah, the chain game, we don't take anybody's jobs. You know, oh, we're man. being blamed love for that, that already enough. I hey, don't like that yeah. at all. Mm-hmm. Okay. Love the chain gang still be there. Celebration. You know, have them walk out there, cool. But that needs not be the actual answer. Yeah. We need the answer to be elsewhere. And allegedly, that Hawkeye technology you're talking about with tennis, not every tennis person believes it. That's our shit. Nope. Not Some every tennis of person b- believes it. Birds thing? I've been telling you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm Gaze? telling you. I've been told by a tennis player. Yep. I think it was McEnroe. It was. I, so. I think it was McEnroe who told us. That he said, oh, now there's questions on whether or not that's accurate, and everybody just acts like it's God. Everybody just like, yep, that's it. And I guess there's been some tennis players who have seen it with their own two eyes, clearly professional tennis players, and then the replay ends up screwing them. And that, that probably has happened to a few people, and they're like, that's not real. Like this ain't, So just one thing leads to another. So allegedly, there is some chatter about it not being <sighs> Yeah, mm-hmm. I know we were buying. We, we need to get some video. We need to do some independent research. Yeah. Put a video down the line, match it up with all the Hawkeye. I mean, it's a very simple experiment to do. I'm telling you, we were mind blown as well. Almost cried because it was like we, because I was saying that needs to be yeah, the NFL, yeah. like you said. And then they were like, oh, that brings a whole other set of problems. Are yep. they manipulating it? Are they trying to manipulate the results, is he saying, or is he just saying it's not that accurate? I assume the conspiracy fodder is that they're manipulating it, but I would assume that he is. The actual thought is that the technology can't be yeah, that, down to yeah. the millimeter every single time. Like, I assume that's what he's saying. I, I don't know. The one that blew my mind, literally blew my mind when I found out that they could do this is baseball in the Doppler technology that they have in baseball, where they can get the spin of the ball out of his hand. Like, they know exactly how many rotations on the way to the plate. I mean, that is literally, I, I can't figure that out. Did you see Ginkle? I don't know what Ginkle had. I don't know well, what that yeah, rotation was. Probably fucking 2,500 plus RPMs. Yeah. Ginkle was taking that thing from top of the strike zone. 
down to the, he was hitting the plate with it. Somewhere. Oh yeah, that thing was gone. Fucking dropping off the kitchen table. How are the Phillies supposed to hit dingers when that asshole's throwing the ball like that? Well, you can't swing at the ones in the dirt. You think the Diamondbacks are going to win or what, <laughs> uh, JJ? I mean, look at what they've done. They sweep the Brewers. They sweep the Dodgers. They come in in Philly. I mean, yeah. I, you can't bet against them now. You can't bet against Who's them now, can you? AQ said the guy named SeaWorld got signed, and it's been a whole different. He said he's been a fan for six what? months, this Diamondbacks fan. I, I assume you're doing the same thing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm not I'm not sitting here acting like I've been some longtime, lifelong Diamondbacks what? fan. I live in Arizona. I've lived in Arizona for two years. I I support the team in the town that I play in. Um so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely rooting throw for First him. pitch. Yeah, why don't you go out there and throw Ooh, some gas, bro? be sick. Or, I'll, th- I'll throw you... heat. I'll throw heat. I got no problem tossing some heat in. Hey, you're doing that charity softball game again, I heard, right? Yeah. You want to come? I think I'm busy. I think I'm busy. I think I'm busy. Yeah, yeah no problem. No problem. <laughs> it's a good out. Immediate no's are better than long-term no's. Just when is it? When is it? Happen. When is it? May 4th. That's my going to be fun. That's my it's daughter's birthday. That's my daughter's birthday. Mm-hmm. Maybe you she, have a great excuse. Maybe, good excuse. Maybe she I'll, I'll tell you what, kids are the best excuse for anything ever. Oh, buddy. <laughs> this is awesome. Oh, yeah. I've been learning that. You know what I mean? Certainly need to give an answer to this potential request. Look down at McKenzie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. You, you said no. You, you don't want it, right? Yeah. Sorry about it. No. Yeah, I just got to take care of the little one. I'm on I'm on daughter duty today. I'm sorry. I'm trying to be a good I'm dad, you know. There's stories about bad dads. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. You want to tell her? She's six months old. Uh, <laughs> first one. That's you're right. You're not at birthday party territory yet. Wait till you get to, like, kids' birthday party territory. We just went to one the other day, and... Um, it's it's a it's a new world. Never been in this one before. A lot of this, you out of you. A lot of this. Yes, yes. A lot of uh, a lot of very interested people in in uh, saying hello and meeting, and it's great. I love it. I love it. Just be a normal dad, JJ. Yeah. Okay, play Come cool. On. Oh, sign JJ, will you sign yeah. my kid? JJ, please. What was your favorite sack? You ever sack Brady? Well, they're all they're also <laughs> all going like this. You know what I mean? I get. I bet you there's. What do you think about this tush push, huh? How about this tush push play? What do you think? <laughs> Small talk with like JJ. Watt. Oh my god! One of these dads is gonna see this. And J- he definitely. You want to talk about me, yeah. right? Well, I didn't ask about Bitch. tush push. I, I told you, Jay's been asking dumb questions, and we <laughs> talked to him. We told him to relax. You know, Brad, big Bears fan. You know, he's got a. <laughs> That's good for you. And you don't stick out ever. You can really yeah, yeah. Yeah. just kind of yeah, yeah, no, I, just, I, I go straight to the kids. Like, I go straight to the kids. I'm trying to play with the kids to, like, like you know, they had a little water. I love it. It was a great – honestly, now, because I know somebody's going to see this. It was a great birthday party. I really enjoyed it. Um, but they had water tables, and I just went straight to the water, water table. Tables, playing with time. kids at the water table. What the hell is a water great table? Time. What's like, a water table? Where you just, like, you know, it's, like, a little set up, and it's got a top on there, and then you just put the hose in there, and, like, so the water goes through, like, the pinwheel and just, like, falls down and everything. Kids fucking love it. What do they do? Is bad it? Yeah, yeah. yeah kind of just play in there. You get cups splash. in there, and they splash, and maybe oh. get, like, a frog. Waste so much time. Yeah. yeah. You, you get a good 45 minutes out of a water table. Easy. Oh, nice. And then we got to sub in something else yep. immediately afterwards. Yep. Yeah. But we're not worried Constant about that right now. Hey, does AQ go to any of these birthday parties that you go to? Is he asking any stupid questions? <sighs> I think I'm busy. No, I got. I still got to get together with AQ. I still haven't seen the Fight Club. I, I, I honestly don't know if I want to be a part of the Fight Club Come or on. not. That's just Holy crazy. shit. But I do. JJ, you got to go be a part of this Fight Club. Yeah. yeah. Need you hitting the heavy bag. Yeah, they just beat the shit out of AQ. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I just don't know, man. I just it's in a basement. Uh very rich I don't guy. Know. Uh-huh. Very yeah. rich the basement. Big basement. Big ba- like your basement. Okay. Big basement. Yeah. I there are no basements here, which yeah. was the first thing that threw me off. There are no basements <laughs> here. Nobody has basements. That's so how, that's this how much guy has a basement is got. something new. Yeah. He's got a lot of money. Yeah, you, this guy had to dig money. into the desert <laughs> yeah. to build this fight club. And they do it every single week. I would like you to go in there because I guess there's a drill they do. I get video of it every once in a while. Where AQ's just standing on a wall, and these guys just line up one by one, and they try to take him down. He's just getting trained by these guys. One guy mm-hmm. comes up, tries what? to dump him on it. Yeah. Yeah. And then that guy walks tries out. Tries to dump on him? And then next guy comes in, tries to dump him. Oh. And then that guy walks out. Yeah, I, I, I have to be a part of this. This sounds fantastic. They're why saying you're I, the caboose. Why would I not right? want to get trained on in... in- what the hell? Yeah, Why that's do you have to retire from the NFL words. again, AQ? That's the yeah. thing. That's the, you could go what last. What are you wearing during this? Uh, Nothing. Spanks. I mean, did, did, did the term train throw you off, AJ? Is that what happened there? Because they are what, training in there. Well, all, I'm worried about your neck, first off, AQ. And don't, I'm worry, also don't worry about, about my neck. Your, 
Don't worry about it. Backside as well. I don't know what's going to happen to you. Well, he's, like he's, people he's, get you, they get your back, they choke you out, they hey, you Pat, know, you're paralyzed. Pat, I, did you see me go to the ground on that? They, until the last guy. Last guy came in and yeah, got I was him. tired. But, but then AQ ended up being up on yeah. top of him. You know, he put that thing on okay. him at the end. He did roll. Yeah. Yeah. Don't. Got him. Was the last guy that said yeah. something? He did what now? He did. <laughs> yeah. He did what now? He put that thing up on. Yeah, yeah. He was. Uh -huh. So the first guy oh. came. Tea bag. Tea bag. <laughs> yeah. First guy came. We first have this footage. Sure. That's, the best, that's the most disrespectful move you can do. We got the footage. We got footage. They're not yeah. disrespectful. For real. I thought he can't. I don't want him to break his neck. I thought he can't grapple. What are we doing? Can't break your neck if you never go down. That's pretty much what's happening. He's just standing up against this wall throwing these. Was like a centipede? I think there's like dentists that come in there. Yeah, you know, like lawyers that come in there. Yeah. They're like, oh, let me go ahead and rough this uh, guy up. I think little baby they shot for a takedown on him recently. Yeah, yeah little baby tried to shoot for a, for a single leg. He, How'd it go? He just sat up. He didn't pretty get, well. AQ didn't let him get in close yeah. enough. Nope. He knows how it ends. But he threw that guy and he threw the other guy. I mean, it's a real deal. So are you like a gimmick, like a, like a petting zoo? Like, hey, come in and see our resident NFL players. See if you can take them down. No, uh -huh. I mean, there's, they're, they're making a mockery of this. There's, <laughs> I am there's, not! There's, there's legit fighters there, former yeah. UFC fighters. Jay Glazer. Now there is some, some doctors. <laughs> There okay. is. So you're like sure. a big dancing bear. How, how but most of these fair. most of these people have some fight experience. I mean, like big time fight experience. And then what? What have I, what have I said that's? More and they couldn't take you down. You're better than big time fight experience. Well, I'm just. I mean, these guys are all well. These guys are 170 pounds, and I'm still. I mean, like. I mean, Pat, what are you too he argues all the time that he can still throw me around. I can't wait for this day. Yeah, I I'm going, wait. wait till I get the boost wait. of that train. Uh -huh. I'm still 250. Oh, me and JJ coming in together. JJ. Me and JJ coming in together. Oh, yeah. three. Yeah. yeah. Train on him. Yeah. yeah. Two you on could, one. You could win a UFC fight? Eiffel Tower. Yeah. Wow. I got... I'm not getting taken down, JJ. Let's just say that. Against a wall. It's him and a wall, bro. He just locks these calves. Have you oh. seen his calves? He locks these calves in, and he's just... Oh, he, he literally becomes one serious. with the wall. Yep. And these little doctors are coming up. Look at that. Have. Jeez. Holy shit. Is yeah, that, JJ. Is something yeah. wrong? Yeah, JJ. Good luck. Yeah. 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 I'm thinking he's that, okay. That, I'm jealous of that. That is a damn good looking calf. It is. That is a nice calf. He's Thank like, you. And he's working on him in that basement. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> They're only getting better. So it's you you should good calves are a sign of a pretty good athlete an offensive lineman when you got those calves you, i mean you know you're pulling around the edge that's that's a good looking calf Thank the, you. Good the sound you. you heard was his forehead banging into the microphone because that's literally how he just says yeah, yeah. he just headbutts thank you yep. thank, thank you. you good calves Who's hard head for? guys from pittsburgh yeah beautiful you how are your calves pat how we got how we working with those you know the deal i got plates down there yeah i got that you know the deal jj you knew that ass too that's another you know what i mean Big ass, big calves. Do you do calf exercises, or is that just one hundred percent natural? Uh, I think calves it's a debate. Genetic. Some people, some, some people think you can't like work on your calves. Some people, calves and traps are both pretty genetic. genetic. Really? What have been doing? You can work on them both, but I think calves. You, I can. I've told you before. I can. I can show you a kid's dad if I see they're both their calves. You I can show you. Old, nope. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> those aren't real drama. Drama called those out for real. They're super genetic. All right. JJ, thank you, buddy. You stayed too long today. Are you, hey, on, thank you, guys. Are you on CBS yeah. this weekend or no? I sure am. Anything you guys want me to toss in there? Huh. Oh, maybe some words. Yeah. Oh, oh, here we like go. This. Yeah. Oh, yeah. good calf breakdown would be good. Yeah. Argo land. Yeah, have you heard? Of I'll toss a calf comment in there. I'll toss a calf comment. How about Argo land? Have you heard about this? 155 million years they've been looking for it. We fucking found it. <sighs> I, caught, I caught about three minutes of this conversation. I did not catch the whole thing, and it... It put my brain in a blender. But we found what it. happened? We found it. Found, found yeah. it. Wow. We what found does it. Mean what we found mean? What does that mean? Is this a gigantic it. piece of land? What do you mean? No shit. It's, it's Argo it's land, come JJ. On. Come on. This is disgusting how stupid the show is. Washington Post is right about this show. Do you hear us? This guy doesn't even know what Argo land is. Wake up. Oh, I heard that. No, I heard that. Oh, yeah. You want to talk? Athletic? You want to take your pole and shove it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that I heard it all. Hey, those people, it all. Those people are good people. You know what I mean? Those are good people. Well, they're all really good people. That's well, right. You know. Let's move along. Uh, JJ, today was awesome. Thank you, pal. Uh, I'll, I'll defend it. I'll defend the show. I'll defend the show. But I, if, I get the vibe. I get the vibe. I won't defend it. I'm, <laughs> I'll, I'll be cool. I'll be cool. I'll be cool. Be cool, dude. I'll be cool. Yeah, yeah whatever. Cool they're running their mouth, though, weren't they? They're running their mouth. JJ, they were running their mouth. I mean, it's like it's like people are just actively trying to find. Bullshit. A little smack in the mouth, maybe. Is that what you're saying? He's some of these people need. Well, good calves, good ass, maybe a smack in the mouth. I mean, yeah, like that's the beauty of sport. Like you go out there and you settle it on the field. You get hit in the mouth. You get, we'll, we'll find out who's better, who's worse.
Sometimes you lose. That's the way it goes. Hell yeah. But sometimes you win. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Sometimes you do. And those things. You can get a better look at a T-bone by sticking your head up a bull's ass. But wouldn't you rather take the butcher's word for it? Hell yeah. You Have a great that? day, guys. We'll you see you. Ladies and gentlemen, J.J. Watt. Wow. Yeah. That was really profound, J.J. Good work. I appreciate you defending the show. He's a good guy. He's yeah. a good guy. He's been a fan of the program a long time. Mm-hmm. He followed along on Twitter, I think, whenever he was in college. Oh. So when he got into the NFL, it was like an introduction immediately. I've known J.J. a long time. Got a Before J.J. became the J.J., mm-hmm. I was at the Pro Bowl at the locker next to him telling him, he, hey, you need to fucking be in every move. Listen, you're like one of the best humans we got. You need to be doing everything. And then lo and behold, that would go on to happen. Yeah. And he would be box jumping on Jimmy Kimmel like three weeks later <laughs> up onto a glass thing and then hard knocks and then MVPs. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and then holy shit, what is this guy? Zach yeah. Brown. He's bingo tackling somebody on a Zach Brown oh, stage. Yeah. And, and also a Mighty Ducks fan. I'm surprised that's cool. He's a friend. You seen of the Tommy Boy? Has Debo seen Tommy Boy? Or no. Yeah, you know what it is. I seen Tommy. What Boy. happens, to, uh, Tommy Boy? Oh, just yeah, synopsis, just synopsis. Quick, quick. Owns quick. A business. Oh, okay, you got yeah. it. All right. Yeah. 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 What was the town in Ohio? I don't know. Sandusky. That's understandable. There you go. Oh yes. yes. There you go. Can't forget that. On yeah. Yeah. Named after the guy from Penn State. <laughs> Cedar Point. <laughs> is that where Cedar Point is? It is. It's yeah. Cedar Point's above it. Yeah. Hey, real quick. Not as many signs as I thought at the Ohio State. Michigan doing a sign thing, real big deal. That was huge. Yeah. I thought there was going to be a lot more. Me too. I, I thought I was walking into a... Uh, helped you. Not only on Friday, on Saturday, as I was walking up on that stage, I'm like, boy, I wonder how many... Yeah. And then we got up there, and it was all Michigan stuff. It was like, jeez. Oh, Bummer. Penn State people were... Yeah. Thank you so yeah. much. Oh, yeah. All right, let's take a break. Let's take a three to four minute break. Uh, we go went long there with JJ. Shout out to JJ. Shout out, JJ. Shout out. the best. Shout out to all of you. We got the generals top five on the other side. Has there been any changes? Oh. A lot of things have happened. You know, I guess the first college football playoff top twenty five ranking will come out next week. Nice. Okay, so all these rankings now that you're seeing, we're starting to get to a point where they actually matter. The generals has mattered since week. One. That's right. We'll do that on the other side. We'll have Amanda Serrano. We'll have In the Trenches. We'll have Everything DB. There's still a lot on this glorious Wednesday, October 25th. Be a friend. Tell a friend something nice. Fuck. Take five. Oh, no. five. body feels fresh, my mind clear. Like, I'm gonna go do it tonight, I think, you know? Like, I'm gonna go do it. 77,899 people going bananas. I thought I wouldn't be able to sleep last night. I thought that I'd wake up with high anxiety. That is not the case at all. I am so ready to get out there and do what I was put on this earth to do. I'll be walking out of that thing. Well, this is a big night because uh, 11 years ago tonight, I had my match with Jerry Lawler. Come on! Broadcast colleagues, same night, 11 years apart, could become the first undefeated broadcast team in the history of WWE wrestling. Not could. We will be. Only two superstars have actually commentated on the same WrestleMania that they had a match on. Pat McAfee joins that club tonight. Audius is in and Party Boy is here. Audius is here. Party Boy is in WrestleMania. Audius' cheeks are out in WrestleMania. Now he's putting that thing up on Sami Zayn. I would like to say that that's the first time I've seen Pontius's ass, but that is not the case. Hey, look at, look at, look at, look at, look at. Leave it. It bunches from Wee Man! Wee Man so angry! Oh, look at look at look at look at look at Body slam! Wee Man! Body slam! He said he said he said! Wee Man used to kick himself in the face! Are you kidding me? Now he's body slamming Sammy Zay! You know, I've walked out that ramp into this setting probably 10 million That's times fine. in my mind. There was a time where every time I walked out of a door, I was acting as if I was walking into a WWE arena. So tonight, whenever I feel that energy, just hoping that I don't have a heart attack immediately. I'm hoping that I don't get too gassed, and I'm hoping I put on a damn good show because I've been thinking about this for 23 years. I'm about to walk a girl and do this thing, huh? I'm prepared, I'm ready, I'm excited. Hey, who do you want to see tonight? I want to I wanna see Pat McAfee tonight. Up, up over the top. 
moment. Oh, there he's in trouble. Oh, oh, up here. And McAfee driving. Oh, Watching their kid beat the hell out of a boost bag. You remember this? Oh, a little payback from Friday night. Get it back. Oh, these sounds good. McAfee, oh, he almost went. And then a McAfee lands on his feet. Also, they're not sure what to do. Holy moly. I'm a sick for the ball. The finishing maneuver, the A-Town down for Austin Theory. He hits this, it's over. McAfee rolls him up, shoulders are down, does he have him? He does! McAfee wins! Yes! McAfee wins! come true! Believe it, Michael! Your broadcast partner has earned himself a WrestleMania moment. The fact that I never got to see him as a kid, uh, then I get to watch his last match live, it was just, it was awesome. ears like it feels like I got water in my ears I got beer in both of my ears but I just had the incredible opportunity and honor <clears throat> to chug beers with Stone Cold Steve Austin have a Wrestlemania match that Vince McMahon was a part of I'm living on cloud 50 right now dude this is sweet what a day what a dream what a life now I'm gonna have a couple more Steve Wisers why maybe a little whiskey why maybe some carbs because I've been ketoing for four weeks why
Hey! Why? Let's go! This show sticks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pig! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. Could change their life. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to our Hump of the Boat, the Thunderdome, on this wild Wednesday, October 25th, 2023. Hour three of this program starts now. Football! Is what we get a chance to chat about all year round because Hell football yeah. never sleeps, although other sports had a massive evening last night and will continue to do so. Football's our bread and butter because we have a man every single day joining us that's a college football national champion and a Super Bowl champion. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, that's A.J. Hawk. Yeah, AJ. Hey. The talks at table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. One after the hammer, Damn. Cowboys turn Diggs is here. 12-year NFL vet, Super Bowl Game ball champion. Woo. Ladies and gentlemen, AQ Shipley. Yay, AQ. AQ. We'll be doing it in the trenches here in a couple of moments. We'll also be doing everything DB with the host of that nine year NFL vet. Ladies and gentlemen, Darius J. Butler. Hey, buddy, buddy. Joining us now is a man who last week was in full pads yep. whenever we saw him at the Zotron on the college game day set in beautiful Columbus, Ohio. Former Ohio State legend, now the general of college football and of college football's rankings, ladies and gentlemen, Bobby Carpenter. Yeah. Oh. General, I want to let you know, you putting on full pads last week was one of the most awesome things I've ever seen. I appreciate your commitment to everything that you do. Today, sleeveless, pretty jocked, huh? You look pretty jocked right now, Bob. What do we got going on over there? Uh, you know, I got a little workout in for you today, Pat. Wanted to make sure I was kind of feeling it. It's nice in Columbus. When it's nice in the Midwest this late in the year, man, got to pull those sleeves right off. You do. Hey, listen, if I was you guys over there in Columbus, I'd be having Rooster's Chicken. Three, four times a day. Bingo. It was so good. Hey. So good. So good. Unbelievable. I had it after. So they delivered it while we were still doing the show. After the show, it was kind of cold, the, the one plate. They had warm ones inside. I ate the cold plate. It was like, damn, this is very, very good. Then inside, it was warm. They, hey, Roosters is good shit. Really good shit over there in Ohio. You guys should be proud of that, Bobo. Oh, Roosters is tremendous. We do a little show over there every Monday. I bring a whole bunch home for the kids, and it's it's like, you know, raccoons going through the garbage, just chicken bones all over the place, dead chickens all yeah, over. Yeah. It is uh, it's really good stuff, man. I absolutely love it. We're actually getting them catering for a Halloween party here coming up this weekend. I love the fact that uh, Ohioans are dumpster divers. Yeah. 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 We are uh -huh. not scared to do that. Really? Also, Ohioans, they showed up for us on Friday, Bobo. That weather was terrible. Horrible. Those people were awesome. Please say thank you to everybody you know that was there for us. AJ, you as well. Let's dive in. I assume the top of the top five is going to remain the same same after what happened in Columbus this weekend, but where are we at everywhere else, General? So there's a little bit of movement down there at the bottom. If you watched some college football last week, you saw some teams jumping around. Uh, number five, I have Oklahoma. Whoa. You know, they sur Whoa. Well, they Whoa. survived the tight one. Believe me, I was all about Dylan Gabriel. He played well, but Brent Venables, they got to get that defense tightened up a little bit against uh, Gus Malzahn and the UCF. So Oklahoma coming in. At number five, unfortunately, I had to slide Washington out because oh. when you're playing Arizona State, Coach, I, I love Washington. When you're playing Ari Ar Arizona State, yeah. you know, a one-win team, we can't be down What's seven to on? three going What's into happening? the fourth quarter. Did you, you at one point have Florida State at five? Or did you at one point have Florida State at five? You know what, Coach? I may have flipped those around. <laughs> <laughs> I, may have, I may have made a game time decision Respect, on a change up. Yeah. I, yeah. I get this stuff in. I review a little bit of it. I apologize for it as I was sitting there stewing in bed last night. My <laughs> wife goes, what are you thinking about? Listen, I'm thinking about the college football rankings, dear. There's nothing else going on. This is what's running through my head. I can't be watching TV. I'm not thinking about game seven. I'm thinking about the college football rankings. And this Florida State, Oklahoma thing, was really rattling me based on <laughs> what they did last week. Okay, what do you have Florida State at? Are they four? So I got Florida State at number four. Okay, so okay. we can just, we can okay. put up we can put yep. up five and four yep. there because we have you can you can flip them around there. I've, I, that's the problem. <laughs> I was sitting there trying to figure out who looked better, and I was struggling because Florida State was losing. Now, and if Riley Leonard doesn't get hurt, 
I don't know if they win that game, but Duke's a pretty darn good football team. Riley Leonard goes out, Sandwich. and all of a sudden you see the Florida State title wave take over. And so that the two guys at the bottom, Coach, it was it was back and forth with me all night long. I understand. Well, we appreciate the fact that you're thinking about this thing and you're putting your efforts into it because, honestly, that's why we, we called you. We knew you would take this serious. And I think the college football world – has been acting accordingly yeah. yep. to the general's rankings. Who's at number three, pal? All right, number three, I've got Georgia still sitting there, and this is going to be a big week for them. They've got Florida. Uh, Carson Beck, we're going to see what he's going to be able to do without Brock Bowers. And this is the real question, I think, that everybody has. This Georgia team has been rolling, been tested a little bit here and there. You know, Got tested by Auburn. Brock Bowers bailed him out. They don't have that safety blanket there anymore. Maybe what some people are considering the best offensive weapon in the country. He is down and probably going to be down at least through the remainder of the regular season. And Florida with Graham Mertz, they've slowly got it done. They had a close one against South Carolina last week, but they pulled it out, sitting there at 5-2 and two and still alive in the SEC East. At one point, Graham Mertz was completing like 75% of his passes or 80% of his passes or something he, like that. He is, and he threw for 400, I think, against South Carolina. So and yeah. ETN's running bananas, right? He, I think he got hurt a couple games ago. He was. They have the backup. Uh, I can't remember his name off the top of my head. But, yeah, Graham Mertz is playing a, a thousand times better than he was at Wisconsin, and Wisconsin's having quarterback issues. They wish they had Graham Mertz. And Florida, I think, has maybe started the season in a bad taste in everybody's mouth because they look like, oh, especially with what yeah. happened last year with Vegas Bowl with Oregon State yeah, and then with sure. Utah, it's like, oh, Napier's like, they, they got a team. And mm -hmm. Georgia without Bowers is a real – hey, that's a real question. I mean, we're going to see here, but Georgia's Georgia is how I believe. I think that's why you have them at three still at this point. Who's the number two, General? Uh, number two, we've got the guys who have been – Doing as much scouting as anybody in the country, coming oh. off a nice 49 to nothing win. The Michigan Wolverines, JJ McCarthy looks really good. Jim Harbaugh looks good. The run game looks good defensively. They, they've checking all the boxes as they beat down their in state rivals. And they got a bye coming up before they got a nice, tough stretch here to finish the season. A good effort on the swapping of four and five there, boys in the back. Great work after the graphic was already made with the error. <laughs> you know, you can kind of swap these. AJ, I want to ask you this question. Okay. You're the president of Ohio currently. Okay. Obviously. Sure. Yeah. You are. You're Ohio's <laughs> finest, okay? Stop with the sure stuff. Yeah, yeah, own it. We know. It's not a sure thing. It's a we know. You are an Ohio State legend since his freshman year. Dropped mm -hmm. in there doing his thing, national championship. Yeah. Living in the area, going to the game, big pop when he's there. A.J. Hawk. A.J. Hawk. Hawk. Chance everywhere. I mean, it was awesome. You know, it was like we were literally with the Pope in Columbus, Ohio. Yeah. Now, I don't know what the Pope's into, but I do know that A.J. loves himself some Ohio State, and he's in there. His license plate says Ohio State legend. Mm -hmm. We're talking yeah. about being oh, – so yeah. you obviously hate that team up north. Two For, letters. Huh? But Yeah. Too many letters to fit on a license, but you got to no. It was that a down circle. Down. No. It was we a saw, circle thing yeah. next to the thing. It said Ohio State Legend right here, and then it had oh. like, AJ yeah. Hawk. Yeah, I think. yeah. You're right. It's like right. Marine. Yeah, you're AJ right. Hawk, forty-seven. Yeah, it was like a, an F three fifty. You know, that thing's on diesel. So with that team up north, and how much you guys hate them, with all these things that are coming out about the signals, how do you feel, and how does Ohio feel about it? I, I feel like this is kind of like a boy who cried wolf type situation, where until we see something that's like deemed absurd when it comes to stealing signs. I don't think a lot of us are believing that. Is that how Ohio feels or, or are we feeling differently than most of Ohio State fans? I, I don't know. And I don't know exactly how Bob feels, but I, I mean, it seems like this was much more elaborate than we may have thought of at the beginning and all the stuff going together. I can't imagine how much of work it would be to try to pair up like a video of the signals to the play call to the, the all of the stuff that has to go on. Like, I don't think it gives them that big of an advantage either way, whatever they're doing. I'm sure that it sounds like whatever's going on, they broke the rules. I don't know what the consequences may be, but I don't think it got him as much help as some people might say. But have we found out if they were recording? Like we heard a surveillance video might come out or is – People Dude. claim they were they were filming like sitting across from a bench filming on their phone like the signals like they they claim all this stuff but we don't know like, we haven't we have, seen we, any of it right and then like allegedly the Connor Stallions uh, uh, yeah. guy he had a document called the Michigan Manifesto that's right that he was yeah. piecing together yep. that was about how he was going to run the Michigan program whenever he was inevitably in charge Rogue a couple of years I mean it's like the the story's getting absurd and I think all of us want to just be like. Where's the fucking video of them just filming a sign from some team? Mm -hmm. And it's, if we see that, then I think everybody's going to be like, all right, cheaters, that's too far. But right now, it's been a lot of wording, you know, generally. I haven't really, I don't know. Everything I've heard now, it's just like all 
potential, hypothesize, it's this. How do you feel about it, General? So that's what everything, like you said, there's a lot of accusations out there. Until I start to see a video of my man sitting there with his phone, like zooming in, watching across like Chet Holmgren, his dad, when he was at uh, Gonzaga filming his son from the sideline, nice. you know, like that's what I'm envisioning here, like a grown man standing up and filming, you know, the other team, like the whole time, which you're really not supposed to do. So they said they have documentation with that. We'll see. I do know this, like when you're buying all tickets digitally, unless my man Connor Stallions, which with a name like that, I'm not even sure that's his real name. Maybe he's like a Jason Bourne type dude. And he's yeah, got a yeah. bunch of different passports and credit cards, True. but all that stuff's digital now. So if it's out there, it will come out. It's just a function of when do we get to see it and how much of it is actually real. I agree. I think what's real and what isn't is the big question mark right now. Because you've heard every human that's ever been in competition pretty much be like, yeah, we're trying to steal signs all the time. But if you go past that ethic level of like morals and like what everybody else isn't willing to do, then I think you'll see everybody turn. But until then, I think it's just a lot of maybe, maybe, maybe at this point. The only new thing I saw on that last break was the whistleblower name. They, they're saying that they know who's leaking all the information. Oh. Yeah, and allegedly this son of a bitch ran Coach Rod out of town yeah, too. Yeah, it's Harbaugh. Uh -huh. Yeah, this guy ran Rich Rodriguez out of town. This guy used to be a University of Michigan Regents uh, member. Board of Regents. Board of Regents yeah. member or whatever. And I guess he does not like Harbaugh, so he's the one leaking yeah. that this is potentially allegedly, and he's also the one who ran Rich Rodriguez out of town, is allegedly. This, is this manifesto uh, news coming out? Is this this is them? This is Michigan starting to try, start to try to say he's a rogue agent. Yeah, they're throwing <laughs> that son of a bitch under the <laughs> bus as quick as yep. they can. Thanks. Stallions? Oh, yeah. So. Yep. I think so. Which, which tells you all you need to know about them supporting the troops. That's why I was going to ask if AJ, if he supported the troops, because he was questioning his motives, too. Well, Mike, hold on. Would be a good move to be like, you're going to look at that guy's computer, and you're going to see some stuff. He was trying to take overtake my job, yeah. Jim Harbaugh. Manifesto, 500 I, pages. I don't like this at all. I'm just learning this guy was trying to plan on taking me out. Wow, that would be a good uh, or happened. separate yourself from the guy that has uh -huh. been linked to everything you've done. And maybe that was the race in the hole from the get go. Like Harbaugh told him, "Hey, I'm going to need you to write a 500 page manifesto. So if this does come <laughs> out, we can just say, hey, this guy's a lunatic. Okay, <laughs> yeah, nothing new with me." Connor Stallion's like 500 pages. He's always well. It's got to be real, Harbaugh. <laughs> yeah. Start typing now. We need a new computer too because they're going to burn your other one because we got to get all that film out of there. It seems like a lot of smoke. A lot, a lot of smoke. Mm -hmm. Need to see the fire. I still think there's a smoking gun out there. Because uh, otherwise, it, they, the NCAA is just setting themselves up to look like bigger assholes than everyone well, already thinks they are by, like, making this so public and doing all that. Like, why would you – like, they're, they're basically setting this up like, like they do have it, and they're kind of just waiting for the dominoes to fall and for – like a couple weeks now to just be like, oh shit, we were wrong. He really, he, this guy just loves college football. He was just going, he was going to games with buddies. Like that would just be, I well, don't know. The the one thing they they got video of him right beside Michigan's D coordinator Jesse Minter, like on the sideline during games, like having conversations hey, while there's stuff going on. You know the run pass stuff. Like and people say you can get that off the TV copy. So yesterday I just watched the first half of the Miami Clemson game. And you can't see coaches signaling at all anymore. Like the opposing sideline, you really can't see. And now you see those guys put the paper up and the giant boards behind their coaches. So I'm just trying to figure out, like, if they have video, it's all going to be there. Either they have it, someone has it, or they don't. So I'm just curious when this crap's all going to get released or maybe it's all much ado about nothing. Uh, I don't the, – the authority, Pete Thamel, like, you know, he used to work for Wall Street Journal, I think, and, like – They yeah. won awards. He won an award. Like, he is basically saying, like – Show, the Big Ten show. coming out and saying something, and the NCAA coming out and saying something. Just my journalism brain is telling me there is going to be something. Because to your point, they're not just going to – Big Ten's not just going to throw Michigan under the bus. Exactly. These guys are cheaters right. for no reason. Mm -hmm. But what if it is the rule, like, from 1994 on, you're not allowed to send people to games to scout things – like, I think it's going to be tough to sell to a lot of NFL people. Because remember, we just learned that this rule existed in college on Friday. I think that, that is when we learned about this entire And for the Big Ten to do that when Michigan right now is oh, like yeah. a legit national championship contender. They're undefeated. Like, that, it just it would make no sense for them to kind of, uh, like, tarnish that while they're in the middle of this run. Well, there's another team in the Big Ten, and I do believe they're potentially on this general's top five and has not been listed yet. Who's number one, General? Coach, it's got to be the Ohio State Buckeyes. Yeah, 59 congrats. and a half minutes, they held the Penn State Nittany Lions to six points. I mean, we talk about winning and scoring a lot and all these things. It looks like the silver bullet defense might be back. I think they're going to lean into that. 
And then you got Marvelous Marvin running around out there. I mean, 11 catches, got over a buck 60. You can do whatever you want to try to go- cover that guy. He is almost unguardable. And, you know, for my money, if one of these quarterbacks doesn't emerge, he might end up winning the Heisman Trophy and be the best player in college football this year. He got hot. Yeah. He got hot there. Mm-hmm. And they, they, they fed him early, too, and mm-hmm. then missed him a couple times. And then in the second half, he just kind of took over. He's so much bigger, I think, whenever you see him in person than it looks like when you're watching on TV. And his hands oh, are just massive. gigantic. He's a weapon. And McCord, what'd you learn from McCord? You think he's a quarterback that can lead a team to the college football playoff? Yeah, because they're, they're playing a team with a really solid pass rush. They had over 20 sacks. And listen, not every game is going to be perfect for a quarterback, but he hung in there. He delivered the ball when he needed to. You know, he was very efficient on the day. And I think he's only getting better. You've watched this Ohio State offense. They've continued to improve. They're playing better competition, and they're beginning to move the football and they've been able to lean into their defense while they've done it. So they're, they're ascending, and I'm looking forward to that Saturday after Thanksgiving, man. That's going to be a heck of a game. And this week, too, Friday night up at Madison, AJ will tell you some stories about playing there at night. It can get a little rowdy and wild. Yeah, they jump around, right? Oh, yeah. They jump around up there, don't they? They do jump, jump good one. And Fickle jump. knows the program. How'd you do over there, AQ? Did you win a lot of games in Wisconsin? Yeah, 49-14 to 14 twice. Wins. What about in the horseshoe? How'd you do over there? Uh, one and one. In the horseshoe. How'd you feel about your Penn State team? First win in 30 years. Okay, how'd you feel about your Penn State team on Saturday? They stunk. They stunk. They didn't show up. Offensive stinks. Offensive game plan was... It was... Franklin? Cuff the watch. James Franklin's stats are getting better and better against top 10 teams and on the road and everything like that. They are. Every day that passes, they get better. (laughs) You you really thought they were going to win. You really thought a lot of people were going to win. Did you get a chance to see how you did on the NFL? Uh, (laughs) Not good. (laughs) You, you were so confident with every pick. The Penn State one over Ohio State, obviously. Yep. Uh-huh. Right. And then the NFL picks, every single one, there was a full du- two and nine. <laughs> two and nine. How'd you guys do? I mean, me, I got, to me. I got five of them. I barely Thank you. got you. <laughs> Thank you. I got five of them. I did a lot of research on this. I felt good. I mean. Tough weekend. Tough weekend, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 but yeah. I, I do appreciate how matter-of-fact you were with everything. Oh, my God. Yeah, going to need those. Because on week. paper, I felt real good about every one of them. That's good for TV. Yeah. 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 I, you should see me on game day when I'm making these picks. That's Guaranteed. the one. Rutgers. This team's going to do Rutgers over Michigan, I said. I, I didn't watched, know that I Michigan that knew all the Rutgers play. <laughs> yeah, right? exactly. I didn't know that was the case. I mean, Shiano, I thought he would have him better hidden. Uh, any gimmicks this week, General? Yeah, I got two gimmicks for you this week, Coach. Number one, a guy that you have on every Thursday. They try to bury. We buried after they lost to Texas. But the Alabama Crimson Tide, since then, all they've done is rattle off seven wins in a row. They were down 20-7 to against Tennessee. You're thinking, hey, they're cooked. They're done. This is it. Alabama is done for this season. They battle back. My man is like Jason in Friday the 13th. You cannot kill Nick Saban in this Alabama Crimson Tide. It's Halloween weekend. He keeps coming back. He's like a vampire, man. He doesn't <laughs> age. And he looks the same, and his teams always play great. They're uh, ninth, I think, in the country right now. Here we go. They're back in the top ten. Yep. Don't look now. You know, they go on a run, especially with no Brock Byers down there in Georgia. Woo! All of a sudden, uh, all of a sudden, is old, what you call him, a vampire, Nick Saban, back in the college football playoff, we should see. Seems like he's having fun this year, too. Yeah, yeah truly. He's chewing on cigars. Having a cigar. Yeah. Yeah. Doing his thing. What, what else do we have? This was incredible. Uh, Halloween theme. I appreciate that. Oh, you know, Halloween theme. And then we've got one, the Cinderella man, Tony Elliott. He's been at Virginia for a long time. Nice. They had not win money games. They were three and seven last year. This year they were two and five. And against North Carolina coming out of nowhere to beat the Tar Heels. I don't think anybody saw that coming. No. I didn't. I don't know AQ, AJ, any of you guys. Like no one saw that. And you know what? Getting a big victory. I love to see a guy who, you know what, after a couple of years finally gets a nice signature win. And hopefully this will be a little opportunity for him to rise the Virginia Cavaliers up the ranks in the ACC. Hey, congrats, Coach, getting that big win over UNC. Yeah. Cinderella man, Cinderella man. That's a good song from Eminem as well. Oh, yeah. Great That's popped one. up on the other day. It's not bad. I forgot he even sang that thing. I don't think I've ever heard it. Oh, what? Great song. Yeah, you have. It's a great what? song. Oh, come on. Yeah, you have. I gave up music. This is almost like a Mighty Ducks Was it within the last Um, 10 years? Anyways, let's move on. Thank you so much. The General, Bob Carpenter. We love you, buddy. When did it come out? I gave up music in 06.
Damn. It was, it was definitely what? after that. It was, yeah. See? Yeah, I gave mean, when you graduated and, high school? Yeah. Gave up music. Gave up music. On, on spot. Called it. Yeah. A long time. Said, I mean, no, more new song, yeah. no new friends. No new songs. Yeah, Beethoven Beethoven music only. come out since, age. I gave it up. It's been a lot of good music. Yeah, tell that to Kid Rock, you son of a bitch. Hey, that was all before. <laughs> Jeez. What's your problem? Oh, all before? We the People ones. was before? Your ringtone was before 2006? You're an idiot. <laughs> Kid Rock's bar was packed, though. I will say down in Nashville when we were down there for a day or two. A lot of booze in that, in that place. Yeah. A lot of booze. In a lot there. of booze. In there. There's a video that came out of Kid Rock from Kid Rock's place. Everybody in there was drunk, but the internet saw it sober. And they yeah. said, whoa, 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 wait a minute. People were surprised. And Kid Rock said, eh, you know, that's Kid Rock. I'm, Bob's trying to get a hold of him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bob's trying to get a hold of him. Yeah. That's happened since 2006. Yeah. You didn't pay attention to any of it. You're a bad guy, dude. No new songs for real since 2006? No. What was, when was Carter 3? Oh, nine. And, and then oh, another wait. one. Hold on, I think there's another one coming out. Yeah, the, the Carter oh, Six. Sorry for yeah. the wait times ten. No, no, this one's got. This one's gonna be good. I got a feeling. Also, Meek Mill, uh, Rick Ross, November 11th. Ooh, I think they got a new album coming out. Here we go. That's gonna be worth it. Creed's got a new album coming out. But I feel like we sit over there and because the Minnesota Vikings. I think that's a big reason why. Yeah, and uh, the Rangers. Yeah, Scott Staff has also just been at Rangers games. Well, Creed has led a lot of champions. I don't know if they have led this particular champion. Ladies and gentlemen, this lady is a friend of the program. She's also an absolute badass. This Friday, for the first time ever, she will be fighting in the first ever 12-round, three-minute-per-round, unified title fight for the women's ever. Normally, it's 10 rounds. This time, it's 12 rounds. The goal here, obviously, is more fighting, more exciting, maybe a little bit more equal pay for these women who are absolute dogs in the ring. For the unified featherweight title on Friday on DAZN Live in Orlando, this lady will be putting her 45-2-1 record on the line. Ladies and gentlemen, Amanda Serrano. Yeah. Hi, you guys. Thank you for having me. I'm here at the beautiful Caribro Royale um, Resort in Orlando. I'm super excited for Friday night. <laughs> okay, let's talk about this. You'll be fighting in 12-round fight, first time ever. I think you wanted to do this before against Katie. She declined in Madison Square Garden. Now you're getting an opportunity to here against Danila. So tell me how and why we got to this point. And does this, I assume this helps you because your cardio is absurd. <laughs> well, yeah, I worked on that for this fight. It was 12 three-minute rounds. Um, yeah, first to unify. I'm the Spirit of Champion, um, and we're going out. You know, I asked Katie to for when we was going to fight because it was such an iconic fight um, at an amazing uh, arena. For the amount of money we were getting, I think it was a, a great night to, to do that. But, you know, she denied, but I asked my, my mandatory, my WBO mandatory, Daniela Ramos, and she said yes in two seconds. Um, I know she's a tough and rough fighter. And she said, let's do it. And we're doing it here Friday night. Um, I'm just thankful for my team for allowing me to do this. Um, obviously, uh, Florida Commission, the Carib Royale for having me. And um, I, I can't wait to put on the show Friday night. Hell yeah. Go ahead, AJ. No, no it's, <laughs> it's scheduled for, for 12 three-minute rounds. Do you have any expectations for it to go that long? We know you have those heavy hands that seem to, to put people out. Mm -hmm. Well, you're so right. It's scheduled for 12-3 uh, <laughs> or less. But, yeah, no, with, with my power, I think that extra minute and um, either the extra two rounds, I think um, I think I, I you will see a lot more knockouts um, in, in me and in women's fighting in general. You know, this is the first step for, for women's um, equal pay, equality. And I think I, I just hope that I can open the doors for these women in the sport. You know, my legacy is already done. It's cemented. Now it's time for me to work on the, the future of women's boxing, as well as the present. How do you feel about your talent at this stage, though? You fighting better than ever? You said your legacy is already there. You fighting better than ever? Who are we going to see on Friday? <laughs> oh, you're going to see a different Amanda Serrano. You know, we just added a new uh, strength and conditioning coach. Boy, was I running to make sure that my cardio is there. You know, I, I love to throw punches and bunches, and I want to maintain that in the three minutes. Um, I know it might be a little crazy, but, you know, you're going to see the old vintage Amanda, the real deal Serrano. Um, I love to give the fans uh, what they pay for, and you're going to see that. And I would just put an extra minute, and um, you, you have to tune in Friday night. Let's if go. you can't make it uh, to the Carib Royale, make sure you watch it on the zone because it's going to be a great night and, and it's supporting women. 
When did you start fighting, Amanda? I started at 18 years old. I was a little older in the game because now women are starting five, six years old. So I started at 18 years old. I've been a, a professional for 14 years, 14 long years. And now is when, um, when we're having fun. Now, the last two years have been the best times of my life. Signing with MVP, when Akisa and Jake Paul, um, they changed my, my, my life around. They changed my career around. And um, now it's time to, like I said, um, open the doors for these women in, in the sport. And, um, yeah, equality, equality, equal pay. We deserve it all. Hey, shout out to most valuable promotions. And obviously they picked the right lady to kind of push behind. You are <laughs> a beast. You're fun to watch in there as well. Happy you got into this thing at 18. AQ Shipley is Thank in a fight you. club every single week. He has a question for you. Amanda, we're a big boxing program over here. So we're just curious, being a southpaw, fighting against an orthodox fighter this weekend, what challenges present themselves? Are you just looking to avoid the overhand right all, all weekend? That's good. Well, I know that's, um, that's one of her favorite punches. And, and in my training camp, that's all we worked on. We worked on keeping my, my hand up. Um, I have one of the best sparring partners, Jason Velez. Um, he, he watches and studies my opponents, and then he comes and, and he spars me just like them. And sometimes I laugh when I'm in the fight because I'm like, wow, I've seen this before. So, yeah, we've been working on that. I've been working on um, little different things, how to stay calm, how to keep my hands up, how to, you know, walk down my opponents and, and just be, be the same aggressive fighter, but just a little smarter. You know, we have that extra minute. And I just want to be make sure that I'm, I'm a little patient because I want to set up my punches and set, set up for the knockout. Tom Diggs has a question for you. Yeah, man, you mentioned uh, signing with Jake Paul. Have you got an, and advancing the sport for women? Have you guys talked about doing putting on potential celebrity women fights, seeing how big, big it's been in the men's world? Um, I honestly, I don't know. I mean, I mean, obviously, we women first, <laughs> so you know, a lot of women don't want to get punched in the face. You have to be a little um, on the the side where you don't you don't don't mind getting punched in the face. But I mean, I think it would be cool. It would bring some excitement, like it has with the with the males. Um, but I, I don't know. I haven't personally thought of... Um, Amanda, I think you're fighting anything. male celebrities. Yeah. Yeah, I think you, you fight are. male... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's where, I mean... Island boys or something. Yo, know, the island... Ooh. Yeah. One. <laughs> I, one island boy at a time. Yeah. You're like, I'm in, boom, see ya. Next Bad time, bunny? Boom, see ya. I don't know if you want Bad Bunny. He's going to be a champion in WWE. Britney yeah. Spears can be... No, 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 not Bad Bunny. Ooh, <laughs> oh, that is something. Maybe Britney Spears. She can be a little scrappy yeah. in there. Yeah. wrote the book. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bad, bad Bobby. Right, so that's, funny. that's future business. It's yeah, future business. Yeah, right. Not now. We're going to we got a unified yeah. title fight know, right. on Friday. Ty has a question for you. Yeah, man, and not to look ahead, but Friday night after the fight is over and after you knock all of Ramos's teeth out and send her back uh, to her corner, <laughs> after a long, arduous, tough training camp, what I mean, what are we eating after the fight? What's what's your go to cheat meal and uh how are you gonna attack that after you beat the hell out of Ramos? A nice big juicy cheeseburger. Oh, <laughs> hell yeah. 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 yeah, or Pepsi or or a, a soda. But usually a milkshake and nice um oh. cheeseburger. Ooh. What is fight camp schedule and what is the diet of fight camp? Well, fight, this fight can I, I really, you know, um, this fight is not just about me. Um, this fight is about women's boxing and, and uh, to change the sport, you know. So I trained extremely hard. I hired uh, a new strength and conditioning coach, like I said before. And boy, I thought I used to run before, but I ran a lot just to make sure that I have my lungs are, are right for the fight. And I lost toenails. Um, I, <laughs> I, it was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears this camp. And it was um, three times a day. Um, like I said, running for, for an hour, and maybe sometimes more. But it was intense. It was intense. Um, uh, I was really, I, I needed to, to make sure that I, I give the fans what they want and, and female boxing what, what they want. How long was camp? My camp was um, five weeks, five to six weeks. Hey, let's go. It all pays off on Friday. Yeah. AJ has a question for you. Yes. With that new strength coach, how much more running did you do compared to what you did in previous camps in, in your career? 1,000% more. <laughs> it was an increased cycle, 100%. You know, I, I used to run um, 20 minutes. I used to run for, for, for the fight. So I'll fight 20 minutes. So I will fight over 20. I will run over 20 minutes. This time, 
They said, nope. Um, I When it worked for me, for my fight, I would go 10 rounds like nothing. But we said it's different. Um, and I, you know, it was a dream of mine. I, my training camp was in Puerto Rico. So it was a dream of mine to run the, the uh, moto. Whoa, that became a nightmare. I, I literally, that night, I, I cried. I never run, ran that. It was all hills. It was over an, about an hour. And I said, wow, well, I need to I, I need to hire this guy. First, I, it was just a tryout. I said, we need to hire this guy. And he helped me out tremendously because I, I sparred eight rounds and I like I wanted to die. But the next sparring session, I was able to do 10 rounds and it was so much better. And it helped me out a lot. We can't wait to see the best Amanda Serrano on Friday night on DAZN. That you will. Live from Orlando, 12 three-minute rounds. Empowered women, empower women. And here's an empowered exactly. woman spending some time <laughs> with us. We appreciate the hell out of you, Amanda. No, thank you so much for having me. Thank you for everybody who's involved in making this fight. My team, Jordan Maldonado, Nikisa, Jake Paul, MVP, um, Carib Royale. Thank you for having me. Florida, all the organizations for putting this fight together. Uh, we're making history together Friday night. I hope you guys tune in and, and watch. And just thank you. Thank you for all the love and support. And women's boxing, we're here to stay. Hell yeah. I Question. <laughs> that was a great promo right there. Thank you to all those people. <laughs> <laughs> do you do virtual reality boxing? Have we done virtual reality boxing yet in the uh, thing? Have you I have. I have a long time ago when the Wii came out. <laughs> and the Wii, no, it's not real. That, that, was the Wii. that was a virtual, yeah. I need to know if that's real or not because I'm knocking people out in there, Amanda. I'm not, I mean, I am putting ah. people, I'm putting motherfuckers to sleep. <laughs> yep. And we're talking real quick. I love you, Pat. I love you, Pat, but I would have to say it's different getting punched in the face. Uh, for real. What? What? <laughs> I guess. All right. I appreciate you. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't get hit in the face on Friday. Amanda Saron. Yeah. <laughs> hey, DeZone, let's go. Friday night. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 12 three-minute rounds. First time ever. Wow. That's sweet. And that is. Fury, Fury and Ganu on Saturday as well, like at 2 p.m. I saw. Okay. I Strength and conditioning coach for uh, Nganu. Like college roommate of mine. Really? really? Yeah. That's awesome. That's what pretty cool. Dog. Me. Yeah, I just, Sweet. I was scanning the internet and I saw one person holding bands behind Francis and Ngannou and the picture is Francis and Ngannou and then I looked in the back I'm like, I sent a text, are you, <laughs> excuse me, are you, uh, yeah man, heading to Saudi Arabia tomorrow or whatever. I'm like, holy fuck. Wow. Okay, let's go boys. Now I think it's going to be a tough task against Tyson. You know, yeah. and Tyson's already scheduled his next fight already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, Tyson, I watched his reality show he needs boxing. Yes. Like uh, for his. So I don't think he's ever not training. I don't know how that one's going to go. And I'm pulling for France. It's a great story. But anytime we get to see France or Tyson, oh, yeah. yeah. Just dancing. Oh, his yeah. his dad was in that crazy. cage uh, during the Tommy Fury weigh ins and almost yes. went. That was. That guy's the glass the or, yes. His dad lives in a. Uh, I'm not even getting into it because I don't know what's real and what's not real in that reality show. Yeah. But I spent a lot of time <laughs> with the Furies yeah. watching them on Netflix. Love the family. Absurd family, yeah. incredibly talented family. But his dad's saying, I created the the world champion pretty much using that as his strength. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. I fucking created the world champ. So I, ipso facto, I am. The I world too champion. am the world he, champion. He is. It is awesome. I love that. He's on the show Friday, Tyson. Let's go. Oh, here we go. Tyson yeah. Fury's on the show Friday. Nice. We'll be live in Utah. He will not be, but he will be live on the program. Can't wait to talk about how he feels. I also can't wait to get smarter and get better. We have an opportunity to do that every single week. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to not only dive into the trenches, mm. but also to do, do everything DB. But we will start with <laughs> yeah. in the oh. trenches with A. Q. Shipley! Hey, how cool those shoes are. Hey, you know what they said, though? I'm just going to get this out of the way early. Who's that? Mm. Shoppers? AJ. What'd they say? Yes. Someone told me that I'd stop sweating as much when I lost weight. <laughs> yeah, it's been since minute one. Yeah, it's, it's been pretty, disgusting. Oh, pretty crazy. Good. Yeah. You're efficient. You're efficient, AQ. Doesn't, Don't worry about doesn't it. Doesn't work that way. But hey, we got a good, we got a good segment this week. We got, <laughs> okay. We got a segment that's going to make all the Pittsburgh people. <gasps> uh oh. A little bit worried? Happy. Oh, happy. First time in there two is? years what? on it. But we're going to start with yes. the rival. We're going to start with the Baltimore Ravens. Obviously, everybody saw this play, but let's let's dissect why it worked. But here, AJ, 
I'd love for you to just watch this guy, and then after we dissect this, tell me what the fuck he's doing, okay? So that's Whoa. the first thing we're going to do. Yeah. But All right, AJ, watch this rookie. guy. Watch this watch guy. Sam that rookie. guy. You see him? Oh, see nice. Ricard. Anything. You can't really do a whole lot against Ricard. That guy will kill anybody. Bingo. You got Ricard, and we got the guard pulling. They're making it look like it's oh, lead man. counter this way. They just don't even block this guy. He's supposed to block him, but he goes the whole other way with the fake. And then Ronnie Stanley... Climbs on the beautiful fake by Lamar, gets his hands on him, oh, and no. runs him off the football field. Wow. 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 How good is that? Great block. Ready? How good is that? Should, Should be a these penalty two, AQ. These two right here get lost in the sauce with this right here. Obviously, have no idea where the ball is. He's supposed to block him. Okay, cool. We'll just bypass him. Great awareness by Ronnie Stanley. And then gets his hands on him and runs him into the other team's tunnel. Golly. And just keeps taking him. AJ, what's that guy doing, bro? Running back. What are you, I mean, the, the only chance he has there, AQ, right, is if you're the outside guy, go fight outside pressure and make sure Lamar has to cut it back up. But you, then you have a one-on-one -on -one tackle with Lamar, and you probably have 10 yards on either side of you. Hey, good play action. It's a really yeah, good play. Gorgeous. Good play action. By Fourth Lamar. and one, by the way. First possession of the game. Oh. Hey, they were a wagon. Oh, the Baltimore no. Ravens were a wagon. Again, they haven't done that every week, but if that's the team we see moving forward, Watch out. Ty reached out to Jack Campbell. Uh, Jack Campbell told him that his responsibility was the running back because Jack Campbell wouldn't get fooled like that. Okay? That's right. And he was still distraught about Iowa getting screwed over on Saturday. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. Yeah. <laughs> that had to have been it. Yep. I mean, how do, you, how do you expect him to have a straight mind whenever that shit's happening to Iowa Hawkeye full exactly. go. I don't know. First time losing that bronze pick. Yeah, he never lost yeah. it. Hey, before we let this one go. That was disgusting. I can't was. believe it. There's still him. people showing up in my mention saying it was the right call. Shut the fuck up. No way. Well, you know, Someone that, said it's the right call? I've never. Yeah. For no, real? I, I saw somebody say it to do it. No, like, it, that was was a, never even, it was never even an option that it was even close to a right call. No, like, I never it, even thought for one second. Ever. Not one. And nobody on the field did either. Nope. Look, no. No missed tackles. Like, they made the right call. It's like, no, they didn't. Do you ever watch a returner like Peter and Poison? That happens a lot, mm -hmm. especially in college football. So just because somebody came out and made to make their people look good and said, that's right call, anybody that has ever watched football in their life, that was the wrong call. That was completely obnoxious. In the fourth quarter, too, to do that, that's bananas, bro. That, there needs to be an investigation. Yeah. Well, Is it a I, Minnesota mark? Sounds like it's uh, Minnesota Probably, because that Vikings, dipshit yeah. P.J. Fleck came out and said something Whoa. on Monday, too. Like, yeah, that was the right call. You know, you can't do that. Uh, you can't do that kind of stuff or whatever he said. I'd say but, the same thing if I was P.J. Fleck. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But also, I felt a lot better because everyone we've had on who, like, played in the league and knows football was like, yeah, this is bullshit. You know, for a while there, I was like, oh, hopefully I'm not just being a homer here. But, yeah, I mean, it was... What are you going to do? If the guy no. didn't throw the flag, it never happened. Like The reviewer, I guess, was the one that said it. It's like, you don't have a say. What do we he, even? Never had an arm, he never even had an arm raised above his right. nipples. So don't tell me it was, a, it was a fair catch. And I think the rule is shoulders are down. Like, there is an actual rule. And he never – like, there are people that fake fair catch and, like, try to get yeah. people. That is this happening. was not one of those. This no. was not that situation. No, no. but saying Peter – and then getting the ball, that's a technique as well. Like, that is let people sleep a little bit and then go get it. It was a great football play by that guy. And there's yeah. not a lot of those in Iowa football. Yeah, and P.J. Fleck also said, well, there's a penalty on Iowa on that play because one of the rushers, like, jumped up into the personal protector or something. He, he's been saying a lot of stuff. Well, like they that. didn't call it then. Yeah, you're right. The refs were terrible <laughs> on the whole exact thing. Yeah. We agree. That's what we're trying to say. Anyways, they got fucked. He's going to – maybe he's going to think the running back has the ball. Yeah, Jack exactly. Down. He's got a lot on his mind. I was might losing. Might not go to the Big Ten Championship now. <laughs> might not be in the Rose Bowl. They might not go to the Rose Bowl. <coughs> okay, and they Damn. might be playing in the fucking Tax Slayer Bowl or the Music City Bowl. How many more losses Iowa have this season? Oh, I'm, I got that fucking Rutgers game circled. I'm worried about that one. I'm also worried about the Illinois game. But outside of that, it should be, it should <laughs> it should be, be good. should be just fine. 31 zip to Penn State. Yep. Bamboozled for the bronze pick. Yep. And then Rutgers and Illinois potentially. Nebraska we'll see. Don't I mean them? Them pesky Northwestern Wildcats at Wrigley Field <laughs> next week. That could be a tough you, one. You well. end up with five losses. I could see it happening. I could see it happening. I mean that that win, that Minnesota game really really could have taken the wind out of their sails. Especially the way it went down. Exactly. Yeah. Two yards of offense in the second half. Yeah. Have you ever seen a more inept football team? Than never. I, honestly. Inept inept offense. Honestly, never. Inept offense. Yeah, Ur yeah, okay. Urban's Jags. Whose Ooh. offense do you think looked better, Penn State's versus Ohio State or Iowa's versus Minnesota? <laughs> Actually, Penn State's, and it was not good. Oh, horrendous. That's a tough call. 
They had more than two yards. Yeah, they had two yards. <laughs> yeah. Two yards. Two yards. Well, we got to give some credit to that fucking stingy and tough Minnesota defense. You're right. No and also the Ohio State no defense. No talking yeah. about that. Yeah, no one is. So. Deacon Hill took some shots on this program the he other did. day. He did. I apologize for that. You know, he needs to respond and play better, but I shouldn't have called him a fat so. I, <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. Is He's just a kid, damn it. Is Ozempic on the NCAA test list? That is interesting. Huh? That could Ooh. be a new weapon. Oh, God. What's what? that, AJ? I, that would be hilarious. If guys get busted taking Ozempic, <laughs> <laughs> are they testing? I don't yeah. know if they're testing. Well, they're the probably way, not. The way probably Ty not was testing. talking about him, he might be diabetic anyway, so he could probably take it. I didn't Whoa. make any insinuations that he was diabetic. I said he was slow and he was a fat so. Okay, and I've since rescinded those comments because I felt bad about it. Because he's just, but you just felt the need to repeat him. College kid, you felt okay? the need to repeat him like three, four times. <laughs> well, he's <laughs> well, trying to live his life. I, I gave know. you like seven opportunities to apologize to him on the spot. I did. I did. <laughs> In the same thing, you know. I mean, I walked it back a little bit. I said I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have said. I got that. some text from some Iowa people that said needed to be said what Ty said. Today. <laughs> Feels like, it. and that man's a legend. So I'm, I'll, I'll go to my grave being okay with what I said. Yeah, and Tony, Tony bringing up diabetes is just out of too pocket. much. Out of pocket. How dare you, Tony? Diabetes what? is not some joke, Tony. It's a real disease. Oh, I didn't know where you were going with it. You're right. Kills one out of seven Americans. This. Can we move on? This show is disgusting. What's going well, on with it, the Falcons here? Well, what is going on with Artie Smith and the Falcons? <laughs> we, we love the Falcons, we right? We haven't talked about it just yet, but we still need to. Let's go on, please, with the Falcons. Perfect. He was going to ask Amanda Serrano if she knows anything about Lil Baby's music. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. I had two qu questions written down. That was my first thought, and you then it kind of brought Artie got talked about. Hey, you got you coming out some Lil Baby music for the, for the fight? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's go on. He was digitally enhanced. He was, or yeah, the, something was. the other thing was? Enhanced? <laughs> Which one? Which it was somebody else that was digitally enhanced to look like little Baby, is what little Baby says. Uh, okay. Okay. I'm just telling you what well, I read on here. quite a video. In what, what video, video are you talking about? Is yeah. it a video? Yeah, there, yeah there's one. quite a video. I, I have not seen the video. I thought Connor was going to have the other knockout on the internet. No, that that is what I was referring to, but we still haven't talked about Dwight Howard yet either. Well. Dwight Howard's living his life. Yeah. Just like little Baby's CGI. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you want to bring up the last one that we haven't talked about yet? Yep. What's that? <laughs> you know, AJ's got to go to trial soon because his brother-in-law's probably yeah, going to jail. Oh, Brady! Oh, yeah, <laughs> Jesus Christ! Brady committed hey, a murder last night. Did you see what your what your <laughs> brother-in-law did? What Brady do? I, yeah, I did. You guys, oh. you guys put it in the old chat room. I don't know who Tweet the guy is. He's going. At. I don't know anyone involved, but yeah, but people are people. <laughs> him, and, uh, him and Deshaun Watson's quarterback coach had a little give and take on the uh, oh, on the Quince? internet. Pretty yeah, good on a give and take. Well, Brady Quince. Quinn certainly feels like he won that one. I think the internet says that as well. But Ooh. Quincy Avery fought back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. fought a good fight. He good battle. Fight a good fight. Twitter yeah. fight. Good old Twitter fight. See, it was really? not. It was really one sided. I mean, yeah. what Brady did was just. I guess it was sitting there for everybody, but. But he certainly found the perfect time to throw that haymaker. Mm -hmm. And he certainly didn't garner a lot of attention. That Quincy Avery guy has attacked this show a couple times. Yes, yes he, he has. has. He, he's not like Arsene. He was rubbed him the wrong way. Yeah, he didn't. Brady, he like to flap his gums. Yeah, Brady pretty much brought an RPG to a knife fight. He's kind of, <laughs> you know, he said, yeah, we can go back and forth, but uh, I'm just going to go ahead and fucking behead you right now, and then that's going to be the end of it. And Brady, as he was typing it up, said, a lot of people are going to like this. Yep. Uh -huh. And they did. And they did. A lot of people really liked it. You know Quincy? You remember him? Uh, no, I don't know. I I've never met him either. Trains a lot of quarterbacks. Well, then there was a follow up to that too on how many quarterbacks he's trained that are good. And yeah. I mean, he started getting. I mean, he was yeah. he was in the trenches. He was in the trenches. Yeah, he was, good in, he was in the trenches. Let's, let's bring him in the yeah, trenches. Yeah. We should hey, bring him. Deshaun Watson. Hold on, that was another question that's getting asked. You guys think he's going to get back to form? No. D but. Um, uh, I mean, it's I don't know. I'm not sure. Two he years play again. I mean, he, the yeah, last time he played, not including the Colts, it's been a while. Game, he he was spinning it like he he was. Like, he was getting yeah. better. Yeah. He was yeah. getting, he was getting better. better. That's the oh, key oh, word. Oh, but but, but yeah. back but to form. But good. back to form. You said back to form. Like back to form at his height. I top think two hundred and thirty yeah. million. People yeah. thought yeah. like top five. No. You know. Yeah. Do you do I see that right now? I don't see it right now, but. You know, and be shot. He was getting better. Like, yeah, yeah, he was getting like this. Like he, he didn't just, have to be that PJ's good. That's a, that's a wide. What do you gap, mean he didn't have to be that good for that team? I mean, right now to win. I was like, say, for two hundred thirty million, yeah. you gotta be damn good. Yeah. The contract, I'm gotta saying, be like, elite. This yeah. year, with that defense and the team was constructed around the running back, like it feels like, you know, with the defense, he's just holding the ball and not throw picks. Yeah, but you're not paying two thirty. Two thirty for that. For that. Exactly. I, no, believe me, I completely agree. Yeah, Quincy Avery was in the trenches. Let's go back to in the trenches. Let's do it.
Atlanta Falcons, right? They love to run the zone. They live and die by the zone. That's what Artie Smith does. I love this play, and I love these little wrinkles that teams are starting to do with this. Oh, we're going to fake the zone. It, they made it look zone. Let's go back a little bit. Watch what it does to the linebackers, AJ, because they think it's zone weak. We're running zone, 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 zone. Nope, we're running duo back to the strong side. Oh. How good is that? Pretty good. Genius. And then the other thing, again, he's not a crazy, crazy quarterback running threat, but it does just enough to Carlton Davis to hold him up the field, which creates the big gaping hole. But all that fake zone right here, all it did was get the linebackers to set up on the blocks on the duo on the front side. And those guys, I mean, it was it's it's a thing of beauty to watch. Hell yeah, it is. Artie Smith's a big old. What's this all about? Whoa. Sorry. Oh, Sorry about whoa. it. Oh, no. Sorry oh, is this about the it. game winner? No. This is earlier in the game. We're going to send P.J. Walker out in motion. Watch this guy. This guy's been on the show. He loves to fucking hit people. No. Boom, boom. Jeez. Look at that. Takes two people out. We got the quarterback <laughs> trap right here. Obviously, he's got to beat one person. It's a hell of a collision at the goal line, but we get Kareem Hunt in the end zone. He's obviously that sweet ole by Dewan Jones. Yeah, unbelievable. They need to throw the ball. Jedrick, 66 Jedrick Willis outside. actually. He did re uh, report his eligibility. Yeah. Oh yeah, because they announced it at the stadium. Yeah. Throw, throw him the rock. Yeah. Did you guys see that? Go back. AJ made a great point. Watch this little. They call this a jab ole, where you kind of fake it here, and then this guy almost falls off it. Check this move right here. Boop. And then a little swim over. Oh, so nice. He's so that? big, dude. He's How nice so big. I assume defenders aren't expecting the swim coming from the offensive line. No, and that's the way. thing. That, that's why it's such – like the trap plays, all those types of plays where you can get D linemen to use their weight forward on their hands, especially down here at the goal line, yeah. all they're doing is firing off like that. All you have to do is just move out of the way and they kind of block themselves. That's exactly Slows what them down, too, for the rest of the game. Exactly. Oh, look at this guy talking shit. Look at it. I'll help you out, boys. Let me help you out. I got you. Got to love it. Let me help you out, boys. I just Wyatt don't. Teller. Here we go. Oh, whoa. Yes. Here we go, boys. Yes. Matt Canada's offense. Here we go. Hey, you know what's awesome, though? Seriously. We talked about this a little bit before the show. They came off the bye week and showed a bunch of new wrinkles. They did things on the bye week. Out of it, Canada. Hey. We're back, baby. Huh? Here we go, Canada. Here we go. Here we go, Canada. Here we go. That's what they're chanting now. That's yeah. it. That's it. But we've seen this scheme a lot from San Fran where we send this guy in motion. They can help each other out here on this zone. Boom, he's going to come inside out and help the tight end. So if this guy does go underneath, he's got him. Let's watch this right here. Rewind that just a little bit. Same Moala, who's a great pickup in the offseason. Watch him snap this guy across the face and go here. Mason Cole with a great... Reach on the center. Incredible. Now, here's, here's the key to this. Here's the key to this. We get this guy on the back side, and he's taking high risk versus reward. Creates a huge hole right here, here, or here, because he takes the easy way out because he doesn't want to get reached. But he's made this play a billion times. Obviously, run away from him, but then you get Jalen Warren. Wow. In the end zone. Yes. Oh, Jalen Warren's been a hell of a back for the Steelers team. Uh -huh. Oh. He's been a hell of a back for the Steelers. Yeah. yeah. Hell of a snap by Sam Wallow. Watch him snap this guy out. Boom. Boom. Climb. Gets on the backer. Hell of a reach here. People don't realize how hard of a block this is. AJ knows how hard this block is right here. When you got a nose guard who's got to stay in that A gap and he gets reached like that, that's, that's key. Mason Cole, great job. Hey, let's go. New wrinkles. Yeah. New offense. Yeah. Beat the Rams. Strictly wow. positive from here on out. I'm all the way back. This is not the only play that hit the internet this week as far as the as the run game and some wrinkles in that. Canada found his bag during the bye week. This He might be a top two, three coordinator. Ooh. And emotion, too. You saw him celebrate. Yeah. Whoa. Him. Didn't throw for a touchdown. Nobody received one, but hell yeah. Yeah, we we're all the way back. We saw him. He was fired up. He Except was fired up. Yeah. Fired up, Canada. Fired up. Teams are going to be after his services in the offseason. He's going to be hard to retain. Yep. That's it. Might be a head coach he position. It. It feels like he's going to be able to get retained at just the right price for Pittsburgh. He, the perfect price. What's your yeah. problem? Hey, he, might, he might actually be you know, Tomlin's other guy for the rest of his career. Associate head coach. Bingo. Next yeah. 20 years. He deserves it after that. Call. I agree. Canada isn't in the north anymore. If no, we could just, Canada's in Pittsburgh. If we could just come off a bye every week, we'll hey, be Hey, it's fine. cold world, especially in Canada. In oh, Pittsburgh. Well said. Boom. Bring coat. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna get icy. That guy stinks, right? We all think. <laughs> yeah. But he did have new wrinkles. So it's he funny. did have new wrinkles. It's funny. I, Isaac Ciamalo, I just saw a report that he was sitting in his locker just terribly sad after the game. And like, what happened? You won. And he goes, well, I've, I've been on a good offense. We're not there yet. 
What? That's real? Yeah, I paraphrased it. Great, great lead in. There's the good transition. Great, great lead in to the next. Hey, listen, we got the Philadelphia Eagles. Obviously, people in Philadelphia a little upset. Hey, hold after. on, though. Just, just put up uh, four and two. Four, four and two. two. Steelers. Top of the division. Four and two. It's not Top easy to win games. No, it's That's not. Right. Not easy to win games. Not. Need to give more credit out there. That's right. This team's really They good. make it look real easy. Played against, when obviously, another wagon. Sorry, Gumpy. They played against a wagon. And listen, these guys are blocking as good as anybody in, in the NFL right now. This offensive line, they get mixed pieces, right? They get, they get a different right guard because Jurgens has been out, right? You get Kelsey, obviously, pulling right here. This counter play is so well blocked. Trey right here. Man block there. We got great on the backside, and look at this. Wow. I mean, you can't block it any better than wow, that. Wow, what is that? that? Great yeah. kick out Miami. by Kelsey. Great. Miami pull. has nine in the box, too. AQ. Yeah, this like, is at the end of the game. Deal. This is fourth quarter, two minutes left. They need a stop, right, yeah. to get the ball back. And boom, they, they come out with that untouched for 30 yards. No Jurgens too? <laughs> I mean, that, that took you That's down. Tough. That was a few great games. pull without <laughs> you know? Jurgens. You don't, you don't have Jurgens? Cam Jurgens is stud. Yeah, yeah. Stud. yeah that, Jurgens is. Absolutely. Great company. Necessity. And you guys all like these jerseys? Yeah. yeah. You don't like them? Kelly Green? I, I saw one tweet. I can't remember who it was from. Hats off, but it, I'd said uh, Hulu has live sports looking ass jerseys, and now that's all I can think about. That's because Jalen Hulu has live sports, right? Mm -hmm. I love that instead moment. of Jalen Hurts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the Eagle. The, yeah, that yeah. old, yeah. the old. What are you talking Eagles? about? You don't like football? Is it that was what a you just funny said? tweet. It you did just well. said you just. How about you think about Jaws, Tony or Randall Cunningham? One time, Vince Capali. Ever heard of him? One of our pies on. If that movie's Invincible. on, I watch it. Invincible. Randall Cunningham. What year did he play, Bruce? Uh, 1962, 65. Yeah, Bruce said. 1985 was here. What? Thanks, Bruce. Appreciate it, Bruce. <laughs> Thanks, Bruce. Well, Bruce was trying to say other organizations are like his, and they're not. What do you mean? Well, Bruce. Tell Rod Taylor. Bruce's organization's a little uh, behind the eight <laughs> yeah. ball. We'll say. Ooh. What are we talking about? First black starting quarterback. <laughs> uh, <laughs> game. For New York Giants in 2023. They tried yeah. their hard. First ever. First ever. time ever. <laughs> <laughs> only, they only, they only have two. Gino and Tyrod, I believe, are only two that have suited Bruce up. Bruce is trying to throw other organizations could make his look better, and he can't do it. Yeah. Not to mention what he's been saying about Michigan. I mean, geez. Yeah, he's been talking about Michigan. Who Bro cares? Yeah. Who cares? Makes it seem like the pole. <laughs> is that real? Yeah. That's a great stat, Bruce. How come we never heard about that? How come I never heard? You know what I mean? I, I mean, it was in the group or something. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Was it? I will say um, – Dayball told Saquon to his face he would not be traded oh, right. away from the Giants. So things are looking up over there. Things are looking up. Things are looking up up there. How about that? Black guy starting a quarterback. Are you guys okay over there, the Giants fan base? Is everything all right? Wall Street's on the fire. The fan base is great. You know, I, I maybe ownership might prefer, like, some pleated khakis, but oh, the fan base fired up. Hey, listen, the, the group that we follow blindly, they might not be necessarily <laughs> yeah. pumped about it, but we're pumped. We're excited. He's been playing good, too. Right? Yeah. Very good. Very Te good. Teams are playing yeah. better. Yeah. yeah. Very good. They look yeah, a lot better John, with him at quarterback. Than who? Than the Daniel white John. guy? Yeah. Than Daniel Jones. Yeah. John Mayer is pulling his hair out right now, though. <laughs> Fuck, we got to start Tyrod again. John. I wonder if those one per club meetings are like, you still haven't done it, huh? <laughs> 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 just can't. Just can't do it. It's crazy. Well, congrats to the Giants maybe winning some games. Yeah. This is the football gods potentially being like, <laughs> okay, hey, welcome. That's time. Hey, yeah. things are okay. That's good. <laughs> Bruce, this is crazy from coming from you. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a wild thing. Uh, I mean, Randall Cunningham was in 1985. It hasn't been Donovan that many McNabb? or that long. Yeah. yeah. True. We're we're Did he Michael, play for the Eagles? Michael Vick. Yeah, he did. Michael Vick. <laughs> 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 what, 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 what are you talking He's about? Trying, about? Hurt, yeah. <laughs> yeah, start throwing others. Yeah. All right. I think the more we do that, the, you know, like rubber glue. It's a league wide problem. You got the Rooney rule and everything. All right. Well, hey, listen, I'm pumped about it. I'm pumped about the fact that you guys are coming into the modern age. You know, because there at one time, that was a real conversation. I think it was like 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it was a real. Yep. Just about. It was a real conversation. Welcome Good to the modern world. Listen, yeah. Giants. Weren't the Giants the team, too, that had the uh, the big snafu with Bill Belichick texting Brian Flores yeah. saying, hey, congrats, you got the head coaching job? And he's like, oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> I'm at the text table. <laughs> the wrong Brian. Brian. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're 100% yep. right. But looking back on it, we should have known. Yeah. No chance. Oh, I was getting hired. I'm never going to hire a black coach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no, 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 no. Dable. Mm -hmm. Dable, yeah. Yeah. I cut a hand. <laughs> allegedly, 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 allegedly. allegedly. We, we are just going off the information. Right. We are just now learning. Yeah. Presented. Sorry. We apologize. We're living in the yeah. moment. <laughs> Belichick should have known. <laughs> yeah, yeah should have. Should have. Oh shit! I'm so sorry. All right. Anyways, Jalen Hurts. He's a good player. Good great, great player. Great quarterback. Great, great player. Hulu has live sports. They're he crushing. is the weapon for this whole thing, right? Because these guys got an eyeball. Bro, I bro. cannot believe that. <laughs> Crazy. That, I did not see this in the group text. I am just now learning that that is the case. With how they talk and act. Mm -hmm. Oh, buddy. Huh. Bruce, back to the microphone. Jacoby Brissett, 2017, Indianapolis Colts. All right. You need to. I mean, you need to relax. <laughs> yeah, he's plus. He's Googling every team right now. That That's strictly. Jacoby Brissett was also the Patriots first in 2016. But also, we know <laughs> Indiana. Indiana's not going to let that fly either. Uh, Tony Dungy, first black head coach to win a Super Bowl. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What's your problem? Rewarded. <laughs> Jim Irsay. I think Jim Irsay, great ally for a lot of, like, future things like that. I, I think what we're learning about the Giants, potentially, you know, I bet you, he, is he voting against everything that kind of moves the game forward, I wonder? We, need to, keep an, yeah. we need to keep an eye on his <laughs> well, votes. Did it John Tomorrow's Morrow, when he mentioned talking to his friends about losing all the time? He yeah. was like, I mean, I could do what other teams do, but I'm not starting a black coach. I'm not starting a black quarterback. <laughs> There's no I, way. Is this real information? I think is this real what, stats? I think that's what Mara says. Yeah. Stat is. This allegedly. Is, what Connor is this stat? real stats? Allegedly. No. No. allegedly, that's what he said. All right. Listen, I'm just telling you what I'm learning on the fly here. Yeah. This is certainly alarming news. I'm, I'm going to pick games differently just because of what I'm learning here. I have to. I want to let you know. This is all bullshit, but it is just the, <laughs> hey, Danny Dimes does kind of remind you of Eli Manning when you look at him walk in in his khakis. Yeah, but he was called Vanilla Vic. It was. Uh -huh. So Mara was like, whoa, whoa. Buy Get him out. Uh, <laughs> Saquon Get him out now. <laughs> All right, let's roll. Damn, I did not know that about the Giants. Mm -hmm. Either. So, a lot of room to grow still. How long have the Mars on the team? Whole time. Long time. Forever. So they're the old. Yeah. Way. Yeah. So I told you that in ownership yeah. of a lot of things. A lot of get out scenes in that building. <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly. Once again. Allegedly. <laughs> I have not seen that movie. I do not know what you're referring to. It's a bunch to. of white people who are trying to take over black people's brains. Giant. What's that? That's what the movie's about. <laughs> okay. I was getting another piece of information there while you were saying what you were saying. First, Giant's first year was 1925. Mm -hmm. 1925. Okay. Long time. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder how they feel about women's women voting. You know what I mean? Did anybody ever ask them? Yeah. They do <laughs> not love that. Yeah. I bet. Well, we don't know. We can just, we can just go off what we know right now. And it's kind of like, I believe Gary uh, Goldman, stand-up comedian, yeah. he said if he goes into your freezer and he sees ice cream with fork marks in it, he can start reading other things yep. about who you are as a person. You know, the corner of your bed, probably nowhere near on, mm -hmm. like other type of stuff. I don't want to start ipso factoing with this whole situation, but the new information I just learned, I'm going to have to start viewing that Giants organization a lot differently. Yeah, mm -hmm. good. I think we're going to have to talk about culture all the time. Yeah, yeah. That's all we judge things on. Exactly. That culture's still in 1930. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's a wild thing to think. Bruce, that's your team. Bruce, that's your team. Patriots 2016, Colts 2016, oh, Giants 2017, Geno Smith. Oh, okay. okay yeah. Same year, All right. basically. All right, Just well, one off. It was 2015. Let's make sure we ride that high horse into every grandstanding conversation we yeah. possibly can, too, as a fan base. Scumbag. Right? Absolutely. All right, let's move along. I didn't know that, though. That's crazy. We should have made a graphic. Yeah. <laughs> should have. That should have been a graphic. Tomorrow, we'll break that thing down. All right, let's get on to the Eagles. They looked, They played their best game. They played their best game. They looked awesome. They looked awesome. And like like AJ just said, right, Like they're, they got nine guys in the box here. First of all, this play, Kelsey's supposed to block back on this, and this is what they do. They just man the back thing because obviously they want to take advantage of his athleticism. They also don't want him blocking back on a three and having him blow it up. But they do a great job getting this counter thing going. Kelsey with the kick out, mm. tight end wrapping. I mean, it's, the beginning it's of a classic play. Just, my lot of makes big humans. I mean, he's huge. He was the rugby huge. guy. Yeah. yeah, left tackle just makes big humans look. He was a rugby player, not great his first year, right? Yeah, and then he just kind of learned it, he's and then dog. took over. Got yeah. paid. He's a dog. Stout in university. Yep. I mean, great. They got one of the best O line coaches, if not the best O line coach in football too. Who, Who is, is it? Jeff Stoutland. 
Used to be at Michigan State. You guys let him go, too. Way to go, Foxy. Hell, yeah. Oh. Well, we don't have to start talking about oh. Miami. Yeah. When was he there? Miami guy. Oh, uh, I, think, I think he was there before you guys put Hitler on the jumbo truck. Yeah. 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 No, that makes a lot of sense. A little I did Probably with Mark D'Antonio. Packers rushed for yards that, on Sunday. Yeah, I think he was with the Yeah, he was a Nasser guy. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. No. During the Nasser era. Yeah, excuse me. Right. What's this guy's name? Zach okay. Tom. There it is, Ty. Let, let everybody know because after you see this guy get on the train tracks, Watch out, boys. Uh -oh. Watch out. AJ, you guys hate these ones. When, when I show them when, with the big tackles getting out in space. Wait do you see this, DB. Oh, no. Wait do you guys oh, see this. Oh, no. Oh, Tom. No. We're just, oh, we're just, we'll just let this thing. Tom. Oh, boy. Oh, oh God. Oh, God. Oh, Jack. Oh, DB. I mean, how, how bad is that? There's nothing you can do about it. There's something go you low. can do. What? Change the rules. Let him go low. low. Can't I mean, go low. Can't you got to make him miss one way or the other. Am I right? Like, you don't, you can't it's, take this straight on. You can't. The cool. receiver's right there, so you don't uh, have, you know, it feels like yeah. good six yards of space you could. Watch his go. eyes. He's, Watch not, him. he's not looking for a guy to kill him. He's looking. Hey, he actually did his have job, Have some though. awareness. He actually did his job. AJ and the boys are, are pursuing inside out. I just got to make sure he cuts in. And goes up field. Are you so I did my to play job. right tackle with fifty. Quick up though. Yeah, yeah fifty. Ugly number at fifty. Yeah. Does hey, this yeah. offensive line though, new faces. A lot of new faces. Yeah, he's playing I don't even know who center happened. last week, playing left guard two weeks ago, new right tackle. guard three weeks ago. Different. So yeah. Jack Tom's a Hall of Fame name though. Yeah. Zach. You got Zach. different people. Oh, okay. Look Zach. at this. Zach. What is this? The hey, Bears? Zeke. Whoa. Zeke. Let's go. Check this out. This play's awesome. So they call this a throwback screen, right? We got guard, center, guard. Everybody's going to sell zone this way. And then what's going to happen is they're going to wait for them to retrace because they're going to go after the quarterback. So whenever that happens, they'll retrace. Now these guys will leak out. There, see everybody starting to retrace? Retrace, they leak out and they got a little wall. Oh, wow. Now watch oh, all three of them. Boom! Boom! Boom. Shit. Step out of bounds. What are we doing? Oh, what is that? Chicago's not used to this. <laughs> pretty nice you to put a play where Bobby Splane got knocked out of the hey, game on. You get all three of them putting people on the ground. It's pretty awesome Bobby, stuff. Bobby took a hard hit here. Bobby's oh, yeah. right in the middle of the field. And, yeah. And, he, <laughs> and the guy ran out of bounds 15 yards there. before he got there. I was going to say. You scored. see the patience, oh. too? Because they all could have gotten oh, illegal man yeah, down. Bobby, get down. Boom. Bobby sacrificed his body for the squad. Don't do it to him. He don't care. Oh, oh. Hey, he split them though. He 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 cleaned it up for the guys behind him. Yeah, he split his head open too. But <laughs> ear almost fell off. Yeah. This yeah. is old yeah. school wedge busting. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> take exactly. two. Bob says you got it. Oh. <laughs> Bob needs you to take two. <laughs> Fuck that it. Hurts everything. Oh god. Fuck it. Oh. And he's out. That's awesome. It's gonna take a while to get up. Yep. I'm done. Yep. You saw what happened. Two guys. Independence in his. <laughs> Six hundred pounds. Stepped out of Jeez. bounds. Let's go. Good shit, AQ. Hey, yeah, Love yeah, it. Go. Look at this. I mean, this dude, here. we need to. Oh, not that. Bob Spillane. I mean, just do it. Right here. Job. He's like, oh, no. He sees everybody. He literally makes a decision. Okay, I'm going to have to take two here. I'm going to have to do it. I uh, don't love it, but I'm all right. It. Try to oh. split them. Oh. Jeez. That's so much like a that's like got, a such a like a dead no collision. Chance. Like you hit it and just your whole body shuts down. <laughs> now hold on, he did make the guy run out of bounds though. Yeah. Yeah. He, he made the play. He, that's a he made the play. Look, what? he scared See, that hit was so that loud it scared him out of bounds. <laughs> what is he doing? Why did he? Who, Cody? Or, no, no twenty one. Foreman. Foreman. Look. He heard that hit and he jumped out of bounds. Yeah, it was so loud. Foreman had a great game. That's the equivalent of uh, Thor's hammer hitting uh, Captain America's shield. You're right, you're right. There's a little gonna be a ripple effect. Yeah. I mean that's how it's gonna go. Ladies and gentlemen. Let's get better. Yes. Let's learn a little bit about the defense. Hell yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for everything DB. Here you go, Hell yeah. Hell yeah, DB. Mike is not on. Mike is not on. Mike okay. check, Mike check. There it is. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, All right, here we go. Sounds good. Holy shit. Here we shit. go. Here we go. Hey, Lamar Jackson obviously had an excellent game first quarter first quarter was unbelievable for him came out firing on all cylinders making great passes from the pocket something that we wanted to see from him for a long time first quarter first and ten is going to be cover three on defense play action but not with his back to the ball just play action in the gun you're going to get a crosser here once again oh. you got these guys got sucked up on the play oh, action no. you'll, see it back up. you'll see it better from the back end he almost gets his fingertips on that but Lamar Jackson standing in the pocket with pressure in his face makes an accurate throw runner's ball to Zay Flowers got to run off down here with uh, OBJ run off up here and it's just a clear 
picture. Middle of the field, Kaminsky with some pressure in his face. Maybe got away with a little holding call there. Whoa. But uh, that's one of those that O-linemen do every play. That's a good ball. That's right. I have to call it. So I think that's it's good, right. good job. This is another offensive line. AQ could speak to it who did their damn thing this week uh, up there against a tough Detroit defense. If you see this from the back, copy, yes, sir. you see this linebacker right here, boom. He's in a tough spot. Got to respect the play action. Obviously, a run responsibility. Boom. They keep Ricard in there as well, showing up protection. Like I said, this is a you know a six on four, but Kaminsky gets in there, affects the throw. Oh. Still an oh. accurate dart. ball. An absolute dart right over 55's head. But this is Lamar all afternoon long. And uh, Now, that's a big one. That was an easier throw compared to this one. Red zone. Red area. You hear quarterbacks talk about it all the time. Once things get Jeez. down here condensed, for the defense, it's no, it's no, uh, no threat of a deep pass. Pause. Sorry, Foxy. Pause. <laughs> so for this deep safety, typically we we go and call this red cover one. So third quarter, seven twenty nine, second and nine. So now it's red one. So as this free hitter, as a free safety, we're looking to help somebody. So he's he probably told this left side based on his body language. Hey, if you get a crosser, I got you. So we got. High help, and then we got low help as well. You'll see it from the back copy. They actually, if you rewind it to the beginning, they flip this back right before the snap. So that basically turns this guy from the man-to-man -man guy and him to the, from the rat, and they just switch responsibilities late. So you got low hole help, high help. Lamar has to read it. And he's going to hit Mark Andrews accurately before high over, over the uh, defense, <clears throat> accurate ball, and you'll see it from the back copy. A lot of things happen quickly. It's got to be bang, bang down here in the red area for quarterbacks. They got to dissect the pre-snap pause. So you see Kirby Joseph, he'll uh, dive down in that cross, I believe, from Zay Flowers. And then that makes a clear picture for Lamar to know, hey, I got Mark Andrews, got to throw a high ball. He catches it or nobody catches it. Accurate. Boom. Oh, Just throwing darts. Lamar dealing. Just throwing darts Spinning all afternoon it. long. That's a good flex there for Mark Andrews. Tough yeah. day for the Lions. Yeah, are we worried about that it secondary, D-butt? Yeah, no, I'm not worried about it. It's uh, kind of the bury the ball. We coming into this game. Remember, this is the team that won four games in a row by two touchdowns. So I mean, they they laid an egg, and we've seen it all year long. As soon as you think one team is unbeatable, they go out and get you know the brakes beat off them by somebody. And it was just Baltimore's day. It was at home. The offensive line did their thing. Lamar's been playing like this pretty much all year long. It's just really been about the people around him. Are they healthy? Are they being uh, productive? Um, but he's been, I'm not worried about this defense. I think they'll make plays. They do need to create turnovers, obviously, and they obviously get pressure up front, too. And uh, J.J. was talking about it earlier. <laughs> when you're playing a guy like Lamar, it's hard to dial up exotics and pressures and do all this shit because you got to have people that have eyes on him. So that he knows that as well. He, he's been around the league a long time. So he knows with Aiden Hutchinson's of the world, he's not just coming off that edge and hitting spin moves and doing all that shit. He's trying to keep him in the cage. Sometimes you're rushing three and you're keeping, you know, Jack Campbell or somebody to spy on him. It was one play like that that he made. So it's tough for, for defenses. Uh, I think the Lions would be all right, though. Tough matchup for the defense. Tough yeah. matchup. Tough matchup. Sure. We'll this, bounce back. This is yeah. the, the last one for uh, – <sighs> bad D, oh, bad, bad D. Now, D this is one of, one of the best defenses in the league, obviously. Steve, Steve Wilkes, one of the best defensive coordinators as well, in my opinion. If you run it back to the beginning, we all saw this play. This 60-yard touchdown, Jordan Addison, rookie, made a big play. Sec situation. Now, second quarter, 16 seconds left in the half. Third down, no timeouts for the offense. So no timeout for the offense. So even if they get this ball and they catch it in bounds, you know, they got it. You know the time as, as, as a long-time special teamer. You know a certain cutoff oh, yeah. where they can make a completion, spike it. So you would have to get, what, a 20-yard completion, get the entire offense up there, snap it, spike it, kick a field goal. Pretty much not going to happen. So I don't understand this play call at all defensively. Now, you do have one more than they had to block if they do get home. But you'll see it from the back copy, especially – uh, Fred Warner drops out to low help, which once again, as a defender, DB, I'd rather you blitz. That, this is not helping me down here. I don't care about this completion. Same here. It's guys that are just standing around not blitzing. That leaves War out there on the island one-on-one. -on -one. And with the pressure in his face, Kirk doesn't make the best throw. Receiver bells him out, rips Whoa. the ball from War. But I don't understand this play call at all. I think terrible play call. I think bad uh. execution. And this kind of ended up being, obviously, it was a close game. This is a backbreaker. Right before the half, this is an absolute backbreaker uh, for this defense. So Fred Warner drops out. And once again, if you blitz everybody, because this is max protection. They got seven in there to protect, I believe. So if you send eight, you have, you know, one more than they have. But, I mean, I just don't understand that play call at all in this situation. Second quarter, 16 seconds left, 36, no timeouts. You heard about the Niners? 
Mm-hmm. Scott no, Tart. not worry about the offense. Okay. Not worry about the, the the defense either. Two good coordinators, Kyle Shanahan, Steve Wilkes, and a bunch of talent. I think when Trent Williams gets back in there, um, AQ said it, it, that makes a, a a ton of difference with that um that offensive line. Um, pick number one for Brock Purdy. Oh, geez. That sounds – you don't say that's the first time one. you said that. Yeah. Right, weird. So we got Hitman down here. Uh, he's going to get a slight reroute now. The thing about Brock Purdy, uh, as Dan Orlowski would call it, his superpower is his anticipation. We talked about it on here as well. His anticipation, anticipation, he'll get back to that back foot, throw it to a spot. Sometimes before guys even there, you see it a lot with Tua as well. And this is what he wanted. But this is not route on air. You'll see this slight reroute. Now, reroute, it looks slight, but he's throwing him off. He wants to run this route right in between his numbers, give a little something at the top, and then get to this spot. By the time he's done with where he got rerouted, and then he still tries to hit that move, it's so much uh, discrepancy between where he's supposed to be and where he actually is. And it's not a great ball either, but Bynum does a great job getting there, making a the pick. And pre, if you run it back one more time, uh, Hitman also talked about this, kind of what you're showing to that quarterback. If you look at this free safety bottom, Cam Bytum, he's showing him, hey, I'm back here on this hash, and even more so, I'm going to turn my shoulders there right before the ball snaps because that's the last thing I want. Right, but pause. So that's the last thing I want you to see is the safety. So it, obviously quarterbacks, when they get the snap, they kind of – it's almost like they take pictures. So I see this quarter, this backside safety, he's going here. So I took that picture in my mind. So I'm not worried about him being involved in this play if I throw this dig route and I can lead this uh, receiver a little bit. He does a great job, knows exactly what's coming, anticipates it, breaks on it, makes a play. So Let's, probably a miss, but not as bad as a miss. It was a miss for sure. Than we think because the hit man yeah. kind of slowed Hardy him down. Under. It was a miss. He never yes. even looked at the receiver. He just expected him to be That's there. That's the spot. Yeah, you expect to be in that spot. You expect what you see on defense, what your uh, receiver is going to route, uh, what route he's going to run based on what look he's getting uh, secondary-wise. So he gets there. It, so he expects him to be there two yards right outside of his hash. That's where they want to complete these dig balls. He's just not there. First half, he Boom. hit Jennings on this same. Same, route. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it was like, it was almost like the pocket looked like it's like there's no way Brock could even see this. No, yeah. yeah, it was like he was five, you know, six foot, whatever he is, and it was just like it's no way. And then a few play, you know, a few series later, yeah. But that's that's the small differences though. One guy not being in this spot based off a of reroute, and then still trying to. I think the receiver also just once you get to that point, you know, forget the cell, just get to that spot. Um, and this is uh, the game ender once again, showing them something priest. I love this when you can watch players on defense that aren't just doing their job. Hey, go run this coverage, be in that spot. But they're trying to play little mind games because you just want a little bit of uncertainty by either these receivers or this quarterback from uh, from this look. Now, this is a situation fourth quarter, 34 seconds left pretty much in the game. So the offense obviously needs to chunk. They love dig routes, love the dagger concept. Cam Bynum watches film. He knows that. Gets a little late reroute body-wise and then gets right back in the window once again, right where they want to cl- complete this oh. ball and goes up high points hit. Boom. Oof, Curtains, blouses, game time. So great game by him. Great ending by him. Uh, I think that's – we may have one Do you notice – do you know that this guy throws the ball over the middle? Like that's a big thing about Purdy, right? Even though his stats outside are great, but their offense is a lot of this. Yeah, a lot yeah. of crossing routes. So this guy knows that as he's rerouting, I got to get back yeah. in there, right? Yeah, and you know, chunk plays. It's, it's certain routes. The dig routes are huge, especially AJ knows the two minute. You know, you're thinking dig routes, dagger concepts, a crosser with a dig coming behind. Two it. by two, pre snap two, two by two. Somebody's got to be. There's got to be a couple crossers yep. most likely. Yep, two by two. So you, you got you got time too. So it's not like the. Um, the other situation yeah. was 16 seconds. You got 34 seconds, so they can get up there, get a completion, spike it, run another play, do whatever. The whole Empty field bad. is kind of at their um, disposal. So that is that is something you do. But people talk about inside routes, and Brock Purdy obviously lives on them. Tom Brady li- lived with inside breakers, everything inside the numbers for, you know, 18 years. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, so that's not a bad yeah. spot. Those are easier throws. Usually they're runner's balls. You can give somebody, you know, Catch it, see Matt catch it, get 40 more yards. Debo, same thing. Uh, the sideline, when you're throwing outbreakers, you got to be on time, number one. You can't be late ever. If you are behind, they get picked, they go to the house. See ya. And then yep. sometimes, you know, as a DB, I'll always give up that deep out than a, than a post. Post or touchdowns, deep outs, you probably catch them going out of bounds. Hell yeah. TJ Watt. Now, offensively, this is exactly where you want TJ Watt. As <laughs> far away from your quarterback as humanly possible. Being that he is a linebacker, he is going to have, uh, you know, pass coverage responsibilities at that time. Probably on first and 10, you know, you're going to get him extended. 
if you go empty. So the Rams right now have everything they want. We got T.J. Watt out here in the hook curl. Defensively, we got Pat Pete back here at safety, so they're doing some things different. But defensively, we're going cover two. And cover two, you're basically responsible for this hook curl. He has a run through. That's the pass trim, so he'll go that way. Deep half, deep half, flat, flat. You have Cooper Cup in here. You know he's working away from that leverage of this middle linebacker. TJ knows this, first and 10. Now, typically, oh, you putting Ooh. pass rushers out there in coverage, it's like they're, they're kind of pissed off about that down. This is a football player. Like, I want to be out here. This is my opportunity to make a play and get a pick. And this is just an unbelievable play. This is exactly what Stafford and McVay wanted pre-snap. Dialed it up. They probably saw 90 out there. And just watch this throw. It's kind of almost what Stafford sees. He doesn't expect him once again that pitch. He looks left first. Run it back one more time. He looks left. So he feels like, okay, with my eyes, I'm looking left, and I'm coming back. And every time we ran this in practice, Cooper Cup was here between those hash and numbers. I hit him. He caught it and ran. T.J. Watt's going to come from nowhere, pick this thing up. Oh, boom. wow. And then, you know, he didn't look he didn't look like he was surprised. He knew what to do with it. Puka with a great tackle right there. I wish he would have got in for six mm -hmm. right there. But a great play by T.J. Watt. Remember, Tone said earlier he'd take a bullet for that guy. That's right. I would. Yeah, I would. It'd, be a a like that. It'd be a long It'd line. It'd be a long line. It'd be a long line. D. Slay, last one, Sunday night football. Game winner. Game winner. Coming off awareness. Awareness, a guy that's been around for a long time, covering his guy in a position. Probably, you know, not in the butt. Boom. Now, as a corner, as a veteran corner, he knows, you know what? I, I'm probably not in the best position because of the route, but I also know where I am on the field. I'm not worried about this guy running 40 yards down the field. Let me get my eyes back for an underthrown ball, potentially. Gets his eyes back. Tua doesn't make a great throw, doesn't step into this throw because of this D-line. He's got people right in his lap, but great job by D-Slate coming off of his man, finding that ball in the air and making a play. Do you think that's a mistake on the offense there? Because yes. the wideout brings D-Slate back in there. If that's just yeah. that's either a penalty or a touchdown if yeah. the wideout it, doesn't. So offenses, they never want that spacing right there. Yeah. You got Moster and Waddle you know, within five yards of each other. If, if Slay's not there, it's an incomplete pass. It's an unthrown ball. If you rewind it real quick, though, you can look at that pocket. That's where the issues came here because I think Tua gets this back again. He throws this away. But um, this D lineman, four-man rush, boom. Jesus. And right in his lap. Davis, right in his yeah. lap. Yeah. Get a if you can get four-man rush, yeah. man, your defense can absolutely mop up. Yeah. Just and they keep afraid. You know, Jordan Davis, oh, Jalen, Sweat, Black Reddick, like just – Cox, like just guys yeah. all up and down that line that do absolute damage. Why don't they block them, AQ? Yeah, so that geez. helps. Yeah, huh? easier said than done when you got those dudes up there. Well, just do it. Figure it out. Yeah, and when you get and when you get behind against them, they're even more dangerous. Oh, what yeah. a miserable job, <laughs> offensive <laughs> lineman. We appreciate the hell out of you boys. Ladies yes, and gentlemen, sir. everything DB and in yeah, the yeah, yeah. On this glorious Wednesday, we'll be back tomorrow. You know, Thursday night football. Oh, let's go. Week eight starting. We'll have a reaction to some games from tonight happening. Mm -hmm. I mean, tomorrow's a beautiful day. Today oh, yeah. was packed. It was. Packed. Oh, yeah. A lot of conversations. Yeah. Tomorrow, too. Can't wait. Let's just keep going, baby. Hell, yeah. That's right. We appreciate you all so much. AJ, great show today, pal. You did great. Hey, great show, boys. All right. D-Butt, yesterday you did your thing. Yep. Oh. <coughs> Today, I think it's time for AQ Shipley to try to win some people's money. Let's go, AQ. AQ, what do you want to do? You tell me. No, 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 no. no. You, you tell me. He's going to grapple with somebody? Hey. All right, go stand on my wall. We're on train on you. Who, who can get me down? Oh. What's that? Do you face the wall or do you face away from the wall? Depends. Well, at the end, he was facing wanna, the wall. Uh, how many do we got? We got three. We got four. There's another one down here. Oh, you're going football. Yeah, I'm going football. I'm going to get You don't need them. This is the hardest one. make the first one. Yeah. Which one do you want to put in it? That one. Okay. okay. All right. So if pit stains here can make a, that football <laughs> and that basketball hoop right over it there, happens. we will give 25 people $500 who retweet this tweet and say something nice to somebody in the same reply put the easiest way to pay you. Here we go. Thank you. You look more confident than normal in this particular. Well, I'm wearing an XL shirt today. That's why. XL? That might be why this is a little. Look at you, though. You're fitting into XLs. Not bad, huh? Hey, good for you, pal. You look good. Will the throw be good? Will 25 people win $500? We shall see as the Super Bowl champion, AQ Shipley. Ooh, that was, good line. One, that was good line. on the line. That was on the line. That was like uh, the equivalent to Daniel Jeremiah's three-point shot. A little short, just on line.
Sure. Yeah, yeah, but you you didn't really follow through. It feels yeah. like a shot wow. put that yeah, short arm. You didn't look. Good I've been throwing them up in the rafters the last couple of weeks. So. Ladies and gentlemen, if AQ Shipley can put that ball into that hoop there right over go. there, twenty five people win five hundred dollars. All you gotta do is retweet this post, say something nice to somebody, and put the easiest way to pay you in the same reply. Wearing the Henley, extra large, pits on fire. Oh, oh man, that looked good, man. Yeah, that looked good. He, he has been putting them long. Remember, he, your, your one and only game ball you have, he threw against the bricks as hard as he could. Like. Oh, yeah, yep. that's right. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, A.Q. Shipley is a Super Bowl champion. Yeah, he is. He's an incredible athlete in high school. He was the best high school basketball player in the city. Basketball? Yeah. He's actually in the Hall of Fame for the Western Pennsylvania Interscholastic Athletic League's Basketball Hall of Fame. Wow. Yeah, so he's used to putting a ball in the hoop. Now we're putting a football in the hoop? Uh-oh. Wow. What Talk. a crazy thing. Talk. If you're able to pull this off, 25 people, $500. All you got to do is just make it. There's five of those balls can fit into that hole right there. Come on. Just Come on, need Q. one of them. Come on, Here we go. Five balls, one hole, one nope. man. Nope. Missed the backboard. Ooh. I tried for the bank. Get that time. legs, huh, ball? This is the bank. bank side, pal. No, I'm going this way. Bank on this side. Oh. I got I mean, you hit it. the it's back. physics, win. I don't think. Really help you in this one. Yeah, you got to be a left. Hit the bear. Yeah, the that's. Bear I think this is the right physics. Go you, here. Yeah, but hit top right corner of the paint. Like a layup. Yeah. So just like on this side. Yeah, pretty much. Layup. Bingo, and got it'll go it. down into the left. That's got pretty it. much the game. Mm -hmm. okay. If AQ Shipley is able to put this ball into that hoop right over there, twenty-five people. Five. You know what? Thirty people. Wow. Five hundred dollars. Wow. All you gotta do is retweet this post, say something nice to somebody, and put the easiest way to pay you in the same reply. AQ Shipley in the trenches. Ooh. Oh no! Perfect location, Q. Yeah. Slow higher. The speed. That was the one. Too yeah. fast. Yeah. Too much speed. Nah, it's too low. Not Ooh. enough speed. Need to throw a little higher. Look All right. Good. Yeah. I onside kicked that ball to myself. Let's throw it off the bricks. Perfect. Put the ball you in ready? the bucket. Ladies Fire and gentlemen, out there. if AQ I mean, Shipley can put this ball into that hoop over there. I got robbed today twice. This one doesn't. That happen. is the man who is going to try to win 30 people $500. <laughs> Look at that athletic stance. Look that at those hip school. pads. Yeah. That's Moon, Moon Township. That man used to be a high school basketball stallion. Yeah. He'd go on to be a Remington Award winner. A unanimous All-American, a 12-year NFL vet, Bye. a Super Bowl champion, Bye. and now he can win 30 people $500. All he has to do is put that Duke in that hoop right over there. Go ahead, AQ Shipley. Done. Let's make it happen for the people! Oh. Another, another day of losers. And now we make a mess because we're children. All right? Unbelievable. <sighs> I think you got one more. Ty's calibrating yeah, it for you. Have one more. Oh, I do. <laughs> I was going to sit down all the way. Then. No, I love this ball. Ladies and gentlemen, Russell Wilson made a dorsal fin football that was certainly sold to, to people, but never really enjoyed. No. That's right. It's impossible to play catch with, but I will tell you what it is possible to do. Put it in a hoop. If AQ Shipley can do that, we'll give 40 people oh my God. 500 Dollars. Holy shit. Whoa. All Holy you gotta do is shit. put that dorsal fin into that hoop right over there, AQ. That one. Whichever one. I'm gonna go with that one. This one. Yeah. Okay. 40 people, 500 dollars Quick 20 grand potentially wow. out of this building. On your shoulders, in your hands, underneath your sweaty pits. AQ Shipley, make 40 people's days there we go. better today. Here we go. Oh baby. Oh, it's pretty good. Shit. Pretty good with that. That was ball. unbelievable. Shit. Yeah. It was. Yeah. I thought that was it. I As I was too. watching, I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, I did too. It. Ty, great, great fucking job. Great, calibration. Great, yeah, good calibration. Yeah. Great yeah. calibration. Good job, Ty. Hey, good job. Way to go, AQ. Way to go, DP. Ah. Good work, boys. Big thanks to Amanda Serrano. Uh, <laughs> big thanks to Bobby Carpenter, JJ Watt, Austin Matthews. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hockey's awesome. Let's remember that. Yep. That's right. Football's sweet, too. Yep. We're very lucky to do this. AJ, take care. Can't wait to be in Utah with you on Friday, pal. It's going to be sweet, man. And what's the weather looking like? Are we going to be all right? Uh, not too bad. Yeah, I think it's not too too terrible. Yeah, sweet. It got better yesterday. Beautiful. Beautiful. Out. I think it'll be in the 40s, I think. Yeah, 40, high, high, high of 54, but, you know, we'll probably be there in the morning. Uh, but it's sun. Yeah, it'll be sunny. Okay. Boom. Okay. Still tank top weather for you? you? Guys want to head south? Come on over. I mean, over in Ohio, it was rainy, 48 degrees. I had a tank top on out there. Yeah. People thought I got soft because I had that one long sleeve shirt that my wife bought me. 
Well, no, you just brought that, though, so you could put it, drape it over Herbie's shoulders when he got cold. Mm -hmm. Bingo. I did bring a flannel for Herbie, who was... Yeah, yeah hands, hands in pockets. pockets. <clears throat> that was tough. That was <laughs> did tough. you guys see that at home, how cold he... I don't know. Crazy. It Was not. Was yeah. it talked about on the internet how cold Herbie looked? I don't think so. I don't Could think so either. I, I've been trying to stay away from checking the internet these days, mm -hmm. but I don't know if enough was talked about how cold Herbie was. And then Chivalry's not dead. No. no. <laughs> I put my flannel yeah. right around him. Yep. Right around him. I noticed mm -hmm. AQ didn't give Herbie his hand warmers that he had. At yeah. all. Hand warmers were great, though. That was yeah. a game changer. Smart. Smart. I'm gonna bring Hall those. of Famer. I'm gonna bring those this Friday. I'm not getting into it. Rose Bowl Hall of Famer. Who's that? Kirk Congrats, Herbie. Herbie. Congrats, Herbie. 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 Not getting into it. Just like the red light thing, the weight loss, the train in the basement yeah. thing, yeah. the wow. hand warmers yeah. thing in they 48 say, degree weather. They say tough. Arizona thins your blood. You know, it's a lot tougher out there. All right. Oh. Let's get the fuck out of here. I'm about done with it. We learned a lot today about the Giants. We learned a lot today about sports. <laughs> he did. Let's continue to do that every single day. You learn something new, you always get better. And that's what we're aiming to do. We appreciate you all so much. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. It might change your life. Goodbye.